Welcome to my channel, if you have already seen this manga, then I specially made a continuation at your request, so I advise you to watch to the end, enjoy watching. This story began with an elderly man staring intently at a huge number of monitors. He moved the computer mouse, and at the same time the surveillance cameras that were connected to the monitors moved. This camera was pointed at the ring, around which a huge crowd of people had gathered. When the elderly man heard that the crowd wanted spectacle, he turned his gaze to one of the monitors. Having looked closely, he wanted to get a better look at the object that was located in the place where the camera was looking. After all, this camera was pointed at a room in which a half-naked man was sitting tied to a chair. Then the elderly man decided that the time had come, and after a short time he entered this room. The half-naked man was conscious, and immediately noticed that someone was entering his room. When the grandfather came in, at first he didn't say anything, but silently looked at the man. After this, the elderly man noticed that the man woke up tied up, but still looked calmer than he expected. But still, that man had a lot of questions, he immediately asked his grandfather where he was. Without delay, the elderly man answered him that he was in the arena. At that very second, the man who was tied to a chair heard the cheering of the crowd. The sound came from the ceiling, and because of this, the man raised his head, looking directly at him. The sound was not particularly loud, but enough to be heard through the thick concrete floor. It seemed that the arena was directly above the room where the man was sitting tied to a chair. And in this arena right now there was a battle between two opponents. These were two men who fought together mainly using their fists. In general, their strengths were the same, and it seemed that one or the other was winning. The battle took place quite quickly, since it seemed that those who were fighting did not know fatigue. Just a few seconds later, one of the fighters was able to hit his opponent on the arena floor with all his might. The man who was tied to the chair also heard this, as well as the fact that the elderly grandfather said that he was next. But then the blanket said that he no longer participates in such battles and will not do so. Then the elderly man leaned closer to him and said that this would soon change, and he would turn into a monster who was hungry for a fight. The man who was tied to the chair wanted to object, but noticed that he could not finish the word. He slowly began to lose consciousness, and his eyes closed very slowly. After a short time, they closed completely, and the elderly man saw that the guy was not moving at all. From that moment on, the grandfather began a monologue, and he said that the guy would have a new life very soon. He also said that he was stuck in this place and would gradually lose his sanity and live without any memories. And this will happen until the fighter dies. Carrying him along the dark corridor, he also said that there would be no pain, and when the guy woke up, he would immediately see the result. But the guy was still unconscious, and could not answer the elderly man at all. Then he took the man's body in one hand, and, swinging it, said that if Tom was lucky, he would survive. With a lot of effort, the elderly man managed to throw the guy's body onto some kind of platform. Even physical interaction did not wake him up, and he was still lying on the cold iron. The grandfather pulled the lever that was nearby and the iron platform began to rise. The lever was a little rusty, so the old man put a little more effort into pressing it. He also told the guy who was leaving in the elevator that if he was lucky, he would never open his eyes again. I rose higher and higher, the guy slowly began to come to his senses and feel strange feelings in his body. They didn't look like pain at all, more like a cramp that covered the whole body. Also, after a short time, he noticed that muscles began to appear on his body, which very quickly became noticeable. When the elevator approached closer to the arena, the guy gained the strength to stand up. Although it was difficult at this stage, he still made an effort and was practically on one knee. Another moment, and the bright light from the arena blinded his eyes for a few seconds. When the blindness passed, he saw in front of him a man with a similar body structure. And when he looked around, he realized that he was in the arena that the elderly man had told him about. Despite the general noise, he also heard the CCTV camera turn in his direction. Some person could see the broadcast from this surveillance camera on his phone. This was the story of this man, and he did not understand how he even got to this point. Well, what he understood was that he needed to survive to get out of this hell. This is a story of survival, a story about what sometimes you need to do in order to stay alive. The action moved to a Korean school, where a junior school lesson was currently taking place. The teacher told the children that after answering the questions they would need to give the questionnaire to the teacher. 
On the sheet of paper one of the children wrote a task that involved a description of his family, and the child who read this thought for a while, because he did not know how to answer this. Well, after thinking for a few seconds, he picked up a pencil and began to write something. He quickly wrote about the fact that his father is an alcoholic, and sometimes gets drunk and beats him badly. The child finished this sentence because he did not want to write any more about such a terrible experience. After that, he turned his gaze to look at the second question. There was a question about what is most difficult for children. Immediately this guy wrote that the hardest thing for him in this life is family. Then this guy was approached by a child who was sitting next to him. He asked if he had any problems in the family, since he accidentally read what the child wrote on his paper. And the child did not know what to answer, because at such a young age it is difficult to get used to lies so quickly. He thought again, and at that moment he felt many eyes on him. This child remembered this from the second grade of elementary school. He remembered that everyone who was in his class should not know about what he wrote on his piece of paper. The only hope was the teacher, and that he was the only one who would know about this and help him. But nevertheless, the kid chose to throw this piece of paper in the trash, despite the fact that he really hated it all. The child immediately laughed and said that he simply wrote a few words incorrectly on that sheet. He rewrote it to create a new version and read it to the class. The child said that he loves his family very much. And he also added that despite the fact that he got sick or had some problems, the family is always there to console and support. Then he remembered the moment when he was sitting in the park, and his mother was helping her son, who was injured on the slide. At the same time, his father was very angry when he even simply didn't want to eat. And when the child got sick, the father paid absolutely no attention to it. This life was like survival, and the child suffered a lot with such a family. I'll continue my story. The child said that for his birthday they went to an amusement park. Well, in fact, he just remembered a dialogue between someone else's family about how they would go to an amusement park for their birthday. His father constantly drank, and while intoxicated, he spoke with his mother, who left the family. At this time, the child took full responsibility, and even at such an early age washed the dishes. The guy said that he was truly happy, and reiterated that he loved his family. But the whole class noticed that the smile on his face gradually disappeared, and became less and less obvious. The guy stopped talking about anything and just looked at the reaction of the class to his report. And he didn't really like the way everyone looked at him and remained silent. All the children were surprised to hear this, and the guy felt lonely. This was not the first time, because such a difficult life very often presented such tests to this child. Then he concluded that he could withstand all this only after turning off all emotions. He was growing up, and he realized that right now he couldn't do anything and just had to endure it and become an adult. The guy constantly endured and thought only that one day he would grow up and be able to achieve success and live his own life. You just had to wait and endure countless times. Tens of years later, this guy found himself at an interview and introduced himself to his interlocutors. He said that his name is Ian, and he really wants to get into this university and fulfill his dreams. Then one of the commission representatives said that Yang was constantly improving his grades and winning a huge number of awards. But then he opened the file and saw slightly disappointing numbers. It's all because of average grades. He raised his head and looked straight into Yang's eyes. He said that the average grades were much lower than the passing grades, and after that he asked the guy what his opinion was on this issue. Then I immediately replied that I started studying later than others, and at first I felt inferior. At that time, he began to lack a higher level of development than others. We were now confident that in the future he would be able to overcome all this just as before. He raised his voice slightly and said that he was simply confident in this, and he had more than enough motivation. A few days later, he received a letter in the mail saying that he had passed the interview and could now enter the university. His joy knew no bounds, although it was not noticeable from the outside. First, he felt a slight pain in his head that spread to his eyes. Then they became more and more closed, until after a few seconds, Ian began to cry. Everything he had been keeping inside himself all this time came out at that second. He felt as if someone had rewarded him for all the hard things he had experienced before. Now I have entered the university and if I find a good job, I can finally live happily. Ian constantly thought that the moment had finally come when he could truly live and smile. It was an incredibly pleasant feeling. He wanted this moment to last a lifetime. All his head was filled with these days were plans for the future and thoughts about success. But at that time he forgot something. 
the harsh reality was not as fabulous as in his head. One difficult day is always replaced by another, but it was nice that there was at least a grain of positive emotions. When he entered home, he saw that two unfamiliar men were holding a knife at his father's throat. Seeing his son enter, one of the men said that by the next time he came, he needed to make sure that he had saved up money to pay the debt. After that, they stood up, and the second collector said that parents should do this with their children. One of them hit Yang on the back of the head lightly and told him not to live like his father. They quickly left and closed the door behind them, and they could be heard talking to each other in the corridor. At that second I felt completely empty and devoid of any joy. Despite the fact that he was in the room with his own father, he again felt loneliness. The moment came again when everything he had built for so long fell apart. He stood a short distance away from his father and obviously didn't say anything. Ian just looked in his direction and saw that he was simply looking at the floor. The father was depressed and was very ashamed to raise his eyes and look into the eyes of his son. In a not loud and hoarse voice, he said that Ian needed to go and find a job. After some time, I looked at the paper on which quite large numbers were written. But overall, 300 million won for one semester at university is not that much. But still, this is not a penny, so I looked at this amount for a long time and thought about different things. He believed that this happiness would serve as a starting point for him, after which everything should be fine. But it turned out to be a rock from which it was impossible to even take a step. But Ian was a fighter, and he realized that if he had already overcome this, he could do it now. It was necessary to jump off this cliff and work tirelessly for your place in the sun. Despite the fact that Yana almost never rested, he constantly explained this by saying that he was not allowed to rest. He had trouble sleeping due to anxiety and restlessness, and his body and mind were only functioning at half capacity. But despite all the work and lack of sleep, it seemed to him that his body was in perfect order and functioning well. It looked like a curse, Jan thought that perhaps God had cursed his body. It was impossible to constantly lack sleep and live in this hell. One day the guy received a notification on his phone that the distribution of first-year students had been completed and a meeting would be held for first-year students from the Faculty of Chemistry. While he was reading this, one of his colleagues invited him to go out this week, and he agreed. Three months later, he looked at the paper on which all his enrollments were written. This both made him happy and made him even more depressed. The foreman who gave them their salaries thanked everyone for their hard work and said that they would meet tomorrow. But Ian understood that this money was still not enough, and he needed to continue working. The next day was his first class at the university, and he still had to go there after the morning delivery service. Time flew by very quickly, and I didn't even notice how the days passed, because all he did was work endlessly. After tomorrow's task is over, he will need to quickly run to work, and after it also deliver packages. He asked himself if he could pass such difficult tests again. But then I realized what he would do, as always, for his cloudless future. This time, like all other times, you just need to turn everything off. He was sure that if he waited a little longer, it would soon all be over. Ian walked down the street, but didn't even notice how he passed one block after another. Everything around seemed unfamiliar and as if it was covered in darkness. Suddenly he realized that he had walked a lot and seemed to be lost. The whole world around him looked so dark, was it because he started hallucinating due to lack of sleep? But then everything became brighter than a few minutes ago. I realized that he had returned to the real world, and tried to understand where he was now. He noticed how the guy who was standing in front of him received a blow, and quickly began to fall to the floor. Yang looked towards this guy and witnessed him rapidly approaching the ground. Another moment, and this guy's body was already lying on the floor, and did not show any signs of life. He turned his head to the other side in order to understand what caused this fall. In front of him was a crowd of people who were cheering, and there was also a man standing there who was encouraging the audience to bet more. One of these people looked at Yang and asked if he was new. Ian said that he just went to the wrong place, and in fact he's not new at all. Then suddenly someone from the crowd threw a small wad of money directly onto the floor. The money caught the wind, and in a slow stream began to land closer and closer to Yang's feet. One of the guys said that if Ian wins, then all the money on earth will be his. The guy looked down and saw how many bills were lying there. It was difficult to earn this amount of money even in a few days from several jobs. At first he doubted, but then he told the man that he could not fight, and simply went into the wrong place. But at that very second the realization came to him that these people were organizing fights for money. 
An unfamiliar guy handed him a wad of money and said that he would give it to him as a bonus if he fought. The crowd liked the fact that maybe now a new guy, who had also never fought, would join the fight. Young thought for a while, he just silently looked at the thick wad of money in the hands of the stranger. When the stranger noticed that Ian was thinking for a long time, he said that the guy would receive money only for participation. Because of this, the guy's doubts became even greater, and he thought more deeply. He looked more and more closely at this wad of money, and he had many questions. So Ian asked the stranger why he wanted to just give him money. Then he replied that he had a lot of money, and again asked if he was in business. Young thought for a while longer, because he remembered what happened not so long ago. Then he came to his boss, who told him that he had cut his salary a little. This was all due to the fact that Young was a student, so according to the boss, he had to implement such a commission because of this. He explained this by saying that at Yang's age it is very difficult to find a job, and he should have been happy even with this money. Remembering this, Ian took the wad of money from the stranger's hands without any doubt. This guy really liked this gesture from Yang. The fighter who at this moment approached the newly minted warrior said that the money lay pleasantly in his hand. Ian was very happy. It was so easy to get such a huge amount of money, his attitude towards battles immediately changed. The stranger began to leave and said that the round lasts five minutes, there are no rules, you just need to fight. Ian put the wheelbarrow of money in the inner pocket of his jacket and thought that five minutes is not so much. But suddenly, in front of his face, he saw the fist of the same fighter who came closer to him a few seconds ago. He was very surprised when he saw this, because he thought that the battle would start a little later. At the very last moment, he managed to quickly dodge this blow by moving to the side. Yang told the enemy to wait, as he did not expect that everything would start now. But the enemy did not do exactly that, and the guy saw his leg before his eyes. He became very angry and was surprised that his opponent would launch a kick so unexpectedly. It was no longer possible to dodge this blow, but Ian managed to put out his hand to block it. After that, he jumped some distance away from the fighter. The hand hurt, but the most important thing is that the kick did not land on Yang's head. The stranger said that the bastard was most likely very surprised, and shouted to Yang that there were no rules. The man who was sitting next to the stranger said that perhaps an ordinary person should not participate in such battles. Well then he said that Ian himself wanted to participate, and in general you just need to enjoy the entertainment. He turned towards the man in the blue jacket and said that he also came here only for the money. And this, at first, is just that Ian is not very different from this very man in a blue jacket. Meanwhile, the guy's opponent got ready and began to run towards him. Young noticed this in advance and immediately made a defensive decision. He raised his hands to take a defensive stance and block all blows. The enemy began to deliver multiple blows directly to Yang's head. But very quickly he realized that this did not cause him any harm, and he was still standing in the block. Then he stopped and stopped attacking in order to understand what it was all about. He landed another left hook straight to his opponent's head. But even after a direct blow, nothing happened anyway, and the enemy did not understand anything. The crowd started talking about how maybe the new guy didn't want to fight, which was strange considering he had already been given money. Well, then the stranger said that this funny guy wouldn't last even five minutes, and offered to place bets. Yan's opponent asked him if he was going to fight at all, or if he would just stand in the block. The guy didn't answer anything, because by that moment he himself still didn't understand how best to end this battle. But he heard the public talking about whether Yang could hold out for more than five minutes. They began passing money to each other and betting that the newcomer would not last long. Why did he hear his opponent say that the audience was here for fun, and he didn't mind hitting Yang a little longer? He delivered a direct blow that should have landed on Yang's forehead, but the guy dodged to the side. But this was an unusual blow with a fist, because the enemy straightened his hand when it was already near the back of the guy's head. Then he grabbed him by the hair and began to pull his head closer to his. The enemy said that he wanted to earn more money and for this he needed to knock out Yang, and offered a deal. But at that moment, Yang looked at his leg, and felt that it had become detached from the ground. And so it turned out, his knee rose and flew at great speed into Yang's face. Another moment, and the enemy had already dealt a very strong blow, which the guy could no longer block. At the same time, the enemy said that the stranger only needs to fall after a few blows. And this will mean that under such a system they will both receive their money. The blow landed right on the bridge of his nose, 
and at that moment the guy thought and began to remember the past. Since his father often beat him, when he was a child he often had to defend himself from attacks. He simply said that you need to endure it, and it is not very difficult to endure all this. But in order to do this, all you need to do is just turn off all the fear and pain. And then he will not feel anything except the usual pain, to which Yang is already accustomed. After one of these days, the father took his son to the hospital, as he was already losing consciousness. The doctor performed a brain analysis and brought the father and son into the office to explain everything. She asked whether the child really had no appetite, and whether he constantly felt pain in his head. Father said that usually everything is fine with Jan, but today he also began to lose consciousness. Then the doctor replied that Ian's brain was a little different, because he had lost most of his nerve cells. And therefore his body may not respond to such things as pain and hunger, and she recommended that he come for examination more often. Then the father asked how much the treatment costs, and whether insurance covers all these expenses. The doctor thought for a bit, but before announcing the amount, she said that the treatment was very important for his son. Loud screams and even more curses were heard throughout the hospital. The father kicked his son out of the office and said that his child only lost consciousness once, and he was a father and knew better. He urged Yang on, constantly calling him offensive nicknames, and they headed home. Yang didn't know what to think about this situation at the time, but the information he received from the doctor was quite valuable. The boy gradually grew up and endured everything that life poured out on him during all this time. He was becoming more and more mature, and this could cause him to endure even more problems than he ever had before. One day he was getting ready to go to school, and heard his father shouting something after him. Then he told his son to come closer and not ignore him. He also said that it was time for Ian to bring out his emotions, which he had been suppressing for many years. Everyone around Yen said that he was behaving like a robot, and no one even had an idea of what his head was doing. One day he came to see a doctor who was also a psychologist. Then that psychologist asked the guy if he had anything that was bothering him. Having not received an answer to this question, she immediately asked if the guy wanted to keep everything to himself all this time. Despite the fact that he made friends and played a lot of computer games, this still did not help him much. When he came to his senses, he felt the enemy's blow, which hit him right in the stomach. In addition to the fact that this blow was incredibly strong, Yang's eyes also darkened after he missed it. The man who was sitting next to the stranger with the money at that moment thought that the fight needed to be stopped. But still there was indecision in him, despite the fact that the outcome of the fight was already too obvious to everyone. At that moment, Ian remembered how he spoke with a psychologist, and he asked him if he could breathe. And the guy replied that he doesn't have such an opportunity in stressful situations, and it's very uncomfortable. The psychologist did not understand anything, and even got scared when she heard this, asking for more information. Then I replied that he was short of breath and had difficulty breathing, so in stressful situations he simply does not breathe. The guy had already run out of all the strength to defend himself, and he missed another blow from the left side. Then the rich stranger said that it looked like the fight would end even faster than he expected. The opponent said that Ian did an excellent job and completed the task well. Then the psychologist asked what Ian means when he says that he does not breathe at all in stressful situations. The guy was silent for some time and tried to remember the state he was in at that moment. This was a state where Yang's body drowns and becomes empty, at this moment he does not feel anything and cannot breathe. But despite all this, this guy's body was still completely fine. And today, after he missed several powerful blows from his opponent, he realized this. No matter how much Yana breathes, how many days he spends without sleep. And even if he works like hell, and even if he goes crazy and doesn't know what to do with himself. In any case, his body cannot be broken, and he will still stand on his feet and look forward. The opponent could not understand how Yang was able to get up after he struck him with all his strength right in the jaw. Then they don't get acquainted with the money and told Yan's opponent that he needs to be knocked out within five minutes otherwise he will not receive the money. Then this man turned his head very angrily towards his opponent and got ready. He started throwing punches, but the guy was very good at blocking them. The man started screaming, asking Ian why he was resisting if he didn't want to fight. Apparently, you just had to fall to the ground, and then the two of them would get the money. But then Yana thought about it and dodged one of his opponent's blows. This surprised him very much, and moreover, it threw him into a stupor, so he could not move. 
Literally a moment later, Ian had already moved closer to his opponent and said that he had changed his mind and wanted to take all the money. The opponent had another moment of surprise, he could not understand why such a weak Yang had such ambitions. But the very next moment he saw that the guy swung with all his might and was about to hit his opponent in the face. And this was not the only blow, Yang from time to time delivered many blows to the opponent's face. Even though he tried to block them, the amount of power of these blows was too high. The man couldn't understand that this suddenly happened to Yang, because it looked like he didn't want to fight. Then the rich stranger's friend also realized that it looked like this guy had been pretending all along that he didn't know how to fight. Opponent Yang did not understand how long he could stand in the block, because his opponent was accelerating and had no intention of stopping. It seemed like the guy was literally everywhere and moving very quickly. There was still one minute left, and the audience who was watching all this had the idea that perhaps Yang would succeed. Opponent Yang understood that he needed to find a moment for a counterattack. And literally a second later such a moment was found, and the man realized that this was his last chance. She looked with incredible hope as Yang swung, and thanks to this, she opened herself up for attack. At that very moment, the man also raised his hand to strike him in the jaw from the left side. But my hand was faster, and because of this the opponent did not have time to carry out a successful attack. Instead, he misses a powerful direct blow to the lower jaw from Yang in a second. Absolutely everyone who watched this fight was surprised, as it became obvious that the man would not get up after such a blow. The body of the defeated enemy fell firmly to the floor and stopped moving. Yang, in turn, simply continued to stand in the stance, seeming to expect that the opponent might still get up. Everyone who watched was very scared and surprised at first when they saw that the newcomer dealt with the fighter like that. But after a moment they began to rejoice and rejoice, since this fight really looked very enchanting. Ian was very pleased to watch how everyone around him rejoiced at his victory. The guy turned his gaze to the floor, and he felt even more pleased with what he saw there. It was a huge number of bills, and he realized that they were all intended for him. One of the men who made a bet took money from others because he thought that the new guy would last five minutes. He also came up and took money from a rich stranger, and it was unpleasant for him to give a round sum for such a thing. But then this stranger thought about it, and after some time he decided to approach Yang. He saw that the guy was collecting money from the floor, and realized that now was the best time for this. When he came closer, he asked the guy his name, since he had not even asked his name before. Ian introduced himself, but did not tell this stranger anything else about himself. Then this stranger said that, to be honest, he did not expect that he would be able to win this fight at all. It seems that the guy was not in the mood for a friendly dialogue, since his answers were rather cold. This slightly alerted the stranger, but he still had a few questions for Ian. He said that he was just curious and wanted to know how I found this place, because it's impossible to come here by accident. Then the guy said that he just got lost while walking, and this often happens to him. Despite the fact that it sounded like a lie, it was visually clear that Yang was speaking completely sincerely. This answer made no sense, because this warehouse was located deep in the forest on the outskirts of the city. The stranger doubted that Ian was lying, but still this answer was strange, like the guy himself. By this time, Ian's opponent had already woken up, and to put it mildly, he was dissatisfied with the fact that he lost. Most of all, he didn't like realizing that all this time Ian was just playing with him. He wanted to take revenge on him, because he was not ready to accept defeat after so much training. He picked up the iron pipe, and when he leveled out, he began to come closer and closer to the guy. When he was already less than one meter away, the guy suddenly felt something. When he turned his head, he saw in front of his eyes an iron pipe rushing towards his face with great speed. But suddenly someone's hand stopped this pipe a few centimeters away, right from Ian's eyes. This was the man who had been sitting next to the rich stranger all this time. He first grabbed this pipe, then pulled it towards himself, and then prepared to strike. He slammed his fist into the man's face with great force, sending him flying into the ground at speed. Everyone watched this in silence, and the stranger threw the iron pipe away from the guy. He then said that the man should stop freaking out, since he had already received two warnings. Then he turned to the rich stranger and said that they shouldn't have fought in the street, because there might be problems. But the stranger replied that in the end they were able to find a wonderful player. At that moment, the rich stranger turned towards Ian and said that he should join the next match. He handed him his mobile phone and said that as soon as the date of the next match was set, 
he would be contacted. After each match they will give you a new phone, and the old one must be returned. And also if Yang wants to participate in battles, then he must participate in all of them, without missing a single one. After that, he gave a command to everyone around and said that they needed to leave. But this stranger's comrade remained and looked at Ian in silence for some time. He then asked the guy if he was a schoolboy. And he replied that he is now a student. Then that man said that given these skills, it is obvious that this is not the first time Yang has fought. But the guy replied that he had not taken part in battles before, and came across this point quite by accident. Then the man said that Ian held up well, and even when they beat him, he did not retreat and was not afraid. The guy replied that he always reacts this way to physical pressure in your direction, and to stress in general. Then that man asked the guy if he was a player, and Ian replied that they didn't even know what he meant by the word player. The man said that he meant fighters who work for betters. And if Ian doesn't want to die, then he shouldn't come to the next match and use that phone. The guy was slightly surprised to hear this, but then the man repeated it again. Moreover, he added that at first everyone joins them for the money, but then they realized that it was not worth it. After all, if he joins, it will be difficult to leave, and in general this place is a breeding ground for all sorts of freaks. And if the guy does go there, he will find even more frostbitten bastards there than his opponent that night. He also added that if I am an ordinary student, then he should simply perceive this situation as a bad dream. The guys replied that he himself would prefer not to interfere in all this. Then the man picked up the body of Ian's opponent and said that he was glad that the guy understood everything right away. They started to leave, and the man said it was fun. Ian was left completely alone in this place with a lot of money in his pocket and with many thoughts in his head. He thought about different things, and thanked fate for giving him a chance to make money so easily. After standing a little longer, he began to leave, since it was already late, and there was nothing more to do here. He felt as if he had just woken up from a dream. He had a fight with a man who was superior to him initially, and whom Yang had generally seen for the first time. And thanks to this battle, he earned more than he had ever earned by working hard every day. But now, after the battle, he felt pain, and it proved to Ian that it was not a dream. But nevertheless, all good things come to an end quickly, and the white streak also often gives way to the black one. Yana began to feel that this dream was quickly disappearing, and he no longer felt the same as originally. Now it was as if nothing had happened and he began to feel empty again. And he decided that now the best tactic would be to simply turn off everything around him as always. Coming out of the forest, he came to the nearest convenience store so that he could be near the road. When he entered, the bell rang, which was the limit to the door. The saleswoman who stood behind the cash register reflexively greeted the guest in the store. But she was very horrified when she saw what this guest looked like. He was covered in bruises and generally looked like he had just been beaten. He didn't even say hello to the saleswoman, but only went up to the stand with water and took a large pack. After that, Ian went to the cash register and put in exactly as much money as this amount of water cost. After that, he quickly left the store without saying anything. The saleswoman was left alone and did not understand what had just happened. She wanted to say something to this guy, but still remained silent. It was already late at night, and Ian was just walking towards the house. After some time, he came, opened the doors and placed a pack of water near the entrance. He informed his father that he had arrived home, and immediately heard him scream. But before he screamed, the father became very angry from several factors at once. He didn't like that his son came very late and was also all beaten up. But instead of answering anything, Ian just gave his father a card and some cash. He said that as his father remembers, he promised to help him with everything he could. There was $1,200 on the bank card and together with cash it would be about $1,400. He didn't even wait for his father's reaction, but just retreated to his room to be alone. For the first time in forever, the house was so quiet, and for the first time in a long time, the guy felt very comfortable. He liked it, and it drove away his words, if you also remember how tired the guy felt then. Everything was very quiet and peaceful, and after a few minutes the guy fell asleep. But it seemed to him that the alarm clock rang just a few minutes after he closed his eyes. He woke up very abruptly and looked at the name of the alarm clock to understand where he needed to go now. It said that today he had a part-time job at the sorting center. A minute later he was no longer in that room and he went to work. At the sorting center, he again felt like before, just doing his job, ignoring everything around him. He worked like this for quite a long time, 
but this time passed very quickly as his head was not thinking about anything. After work, he moved to a completely different place where everything looked more interesting. It was university, and Ian was a little late getting there for obvious reasons. During the break, several students said that most likely the class they were in would end quickly. But then their classmate turned to them and asked if they saw that person who did not come to the distribution of freshmen. When one of the girls said that she didn't know such a thing, the classmate's second acquaintance said that he saw an empty space on the lists. It was interesting what kind of person this was, despite the fact that no one even knew whether it was a guy or a girl. But suddenly one of the girls who was sitting nearby said that this stranger's name was Yang. She turned her head towards the others and said that she also knew that this person was a guy. Then all the classmates began to ask this girl what she knew about the new boy, Ian. But she only answered that they were not particularly close, so she knew almost nothing. One of the girls said that Si Yoon, that was the name of that saleswoman and the girl, would be able to invite Yang to today's meeting. But Shi Ying said that she believed that the guy would not come because he was not interested. The girls were very surprised when they heard this excuse and asked Si Yoon why this was so. Well, she replied that that guy is not a person like everyone else, and he only does what he planned. She also added that she believes that he is not interested in anything around him at all. At this very time, Ian received a very important call on his phone. It was a call from the boss, and he quickly realized that this call should not be missed. The boss greeted him and asked if Yang could talk now. The guy replied that he could, but not for very long since he was on the road now. Then the boss said that he just wanted to warn the guy that today's work was postponed until tomorrow. Then I asked the boss if something had happened, or if it was just a transfer for unknown reasons. But the boss said that his car broke down and therefore he could not bring inventory so work would be resumed tomorrow. Young sighed heavily and then said that it was good that the boss warned him in advance. Then the boss said that what time he heard the guy was studying at the university, and when Ian confirmed this, the boss wished him good luck. The boss then passed out and a scream was immediately heard in the room afterwards. And some man told the boss that their foreman simply stole all the money and left, and therefore they cannot pay anyone a salary. The boss said that he had already cut Yang's salary, but the man did not agree that this was enough. The boss also argued that Yang was just a young guy who had just started his life, and he shouldn't ruin it. Next, that man asked why then it was necessary to transfer money to this brat every day, but the boss did not want to listen to him. Meanwhile, Ian opened his phone and decided to delete the scheduled event from it. He realized that now he had a small amount of free time that he could spend on something. Since this was the first reaction, he understood that it would most likely end after everything was presented. Well, since there are no offers, you'll just have to go home and do something there. And when the girls noticed that Yang appeared in the audience, they began to tell Si Un to bring him. But the girl said that she was sure that Ian would never go with them, and besides, her shift at the convenience store was starting soon. But Si Yoon's friends said that they had already told the high school students that they would bring a very good person. Si Yoon was not particularly enthusiastic and said that she was sure that Yang would not go anywhere and there was no need to promise anything. Si left, and her friends were upset that they would have to have fun without her. Then one of these girls' acquaintances said that he would go while he asked Ian directly whether he would go with them. Ian, who at that moment was just packing his things to go home, saw that someone began to approach him. When he turned his head, he saw a guy who asked him why he never came to their meetings. His name was Hansa Park, and he asked Yang to go to a party with them today. But the guy said that he didn't really want to go to this party with high school students. Then Gansu asked Yang why he didn't want to. Is there really so much work or is he just busy? Then I thought, after all, he has a little free time, but there is no particular desire to get close to people. There was also a reason why the guy could not agree to such a proposal. When he looked into his eyes, he saw that he didn't have a single one in his wallet. At this moment, Hansa Park also noticed this, and already knew what he would answer. He said that if it was a matter of money, he could help Yang and give him a small discount. Then he leaned closer to the guy and said that he was quite close to the student council president, so he could make a discount. Yang thought about it, and for a while he just silently looked at Han's pack. Meanwhile, Si Yoon was already at work and received a strange message on her phone. It contained a photo of her friend Hana along with the others, including Yang. Inna was very surprised that the guy went for a walk with them, and tried to understand what made him do this. Meanwhile, the group had already reached the bar and took their places at the table. 
It was strange that Yana ordered himself a large portion of rice and that's it. Hansu Park told his friend that he brought Yang here against his will because he had never been to these parties. So he talked about this with his acquaintance, Khan approached the guy with a bottle of alcohol. She invited him to drink a glass of this drink with them. And at first Yana did not answer anything, but only focused his vision on the bottle in Hannah's hand. And it was at this moment that he had memories in his head in the chair, or rather the scene of his father lying on the floor. After all, he was often drunk and constantly drank this alcohol. He told the girl that he did not like to drink alcohol, after which he stood up and said that it was time for him to go. Hannah was very scared because perhaps because of her, Ian wanted to leave, but Han Su Park said that there was no need to drink. Then Yang sat down at the table again and continued eating, and Han Su Park moved to the next table to talk with a friend. Hannah said that she likes people who eat as much as Ian. At this time, the senior student who was sitting opposite the guy noticed him. He asked about Ian. Why did he even come here if he wasn't going to drink? At the same time, pouring strong alcohol into his glass, he asked why he didn't want to drink, was it because he didn't know how? All the people sitting at the table were not very happy with this high school student's prank. Ian said that he won't drink today because he just doesn't like drinking alcohol. But then the senior student said that this does not mean that Ian cannot drink. Then the guy picked up a glass and thought that, to be honest with himself, he was a little interested. He had never tried alcohol before, and it was obvious that he would have to do it at some point. But he knew well that after a person drinks, he turns into a cruel and stupid animal. And when his father drank, he was often not even able to remember his own actions. Ian drank the first glass while thinking that if he tried it, he might be able to understand why people drink it. The taste was absolutely disgusting, and at first Ian almost spat out everything that was in the glass. The smell of alcohol that came from his father when he beat Yang was now starting to come from the guy. But he was still curious about why people voluntarily drink it, so the high school student poured him another. Ian brought the glass to his lips and prepared to take a sip. At that moment, the high school student poured some alcohol from his glass into the guy's glass. And just a few minutes later, Ian already had half a bottle of strong alcohol inside. Hansu Park, who was sitting at the next table, only saw what was happening to Yang a few minutes later. The high school student was already drunk, but still understood that Ian had drunk twice as much as him. But nothing happened, the guy only felt that all the bad memories were awakening in his head. Then he got up from his chair and said that it was time for him to leave, since he had business to do. Well, then the high school student grabbed him by the hand and ordered him to stop. He also stood up and told Yana to sit down and stop ignoring him. At this moment, the guy tried to ignore what the high school student was doing. But suddenly he saw in this high school student not the same age, but a completely different person. It seemed to him that it was his father, who was constantly drunk, shouting at him and threatening him. And at that moment I didn't know what to think, the thoughts in my head became more fuzzy. Consciousness became dulled, and it was difficult to think for more than a few seconds. Within a moment I felt anger, and at the same time I saw my father in this unfamiliar high school student. He grabbed this guy by the collar and, without much effort, lifted him by his jacket a few centimeters from the floor. After that, with considerable effort, he threw him onto the table on which there was food. Hansu Park, and everyone present in the bar watched in horror what was happening. The high school student was angry about this, but still looked at Yang angrily. He constantly called him names and tried to escape from the young guy's hands. But it was to no avail, so he threw several punches at Ian's face. And when he calmed down, the guy just looked at this high school student in silence. And after a few seconds he asked if he liked hitting people when he was drunk. That high school student didn't understand anything, and even loosened his grip when he heard this remark from Ian. Within a moment, the guy delivered a very strong blow to the high school student's face with his fist. He prepared to strike again, and then Hansu Park realized that he needed to intervene. Suddenly, Ian felt that he had found peace, which was even more suddenly destroyed by his father's phrase about getting up quickly. He stood up sharply and realized that now he was completely not at home and his father was not around. Hansu Park sat next to him instead and said that Yang scared him very much. After that, he asked the guy if everything was okay, but he was simply silent for a while. Gan Supak looked very friendly and patiently waited for any response from Yang. The guy asked what Gansu's name was and asked where he was now. Puck laughed and said that it looked like I was so drunk that I had already forgotten my acquaintances. He also said that Ian is in the place where Pak lives, 
and where he needs to sleep off before going home. At that moment, Yana remembered how he hit himself with all the strength of a high school student who was lying on the table. After that blow, he felt relaxed, because he saw that from just one blow the high school student had already passed out. Then Hansu Pak approached Yang from behind and began to lead him away. He told everyone around that he and Jan were leaving, since it was already late and full of things to do. Yang received a mug of hot tea from Park, and at the same time Han said that the senior student was the first to start a fight. All the people who were at that party agreed that that senior student was a complete freak. I thought for a moment, he was still very ill after drinking so much alcohol. He raised his eyes and saw that there was a mirror in front of him, and the reflection did not suit him slightly. It seemed to reflect everything as it should, but something still confused Yang. In the reflection he saw his father, who was constantly drinking, and this guy made him feel uncomfortable. Suddenly he felt a very strong and disgusting twist in his stomach. He covered his mouth with his hand and realized that he was very sick from alcohol. Hansu Park was very scared when he saw the state of Yang and was confused. Well, literally after a few seconds he got his bearings and showed Jan where the toilet was. While the guy was vomiting, Puck said that he should have stopped Yang when the high school student forced him to drink. But Ian said that this was absolutely not true, and Puck was absolutely not to blame, after which he asked what time it was. Hansu looked at his watch and said that it was one in the morning and I needed to go to sleep since he had slept for less than an hour. But instead the guy took his jacket and said that he had to go. When Pak asked where he needed it at 1 a.m., Yang replied that he had a part-time job in the delivery service. Puck said that Ian hardly slept, and it would be a mistake if he was going to go to work in this state. But Ian said that he was completely fine, and Hans was very impressed that the guy didn't have any hangover. Before leaving, the guy looked around the apartments in which Puck lived, they seemed quite nice to him. Despite the fact that the apartment was very small, everything here looked quite cozy and compact. Tying the laces on his sneakers, Ian asked his new friend if he lived here alone. When Hansu replied that this was so, the guy said that it must be good to live alone. Well then Puck said that not really, because you have to do all the housework yourself, plus sometimes it gets boring. In response, Ian said that living away from family must be quite expensive. Housing, notebooks for studying and much more are likely to be very expensive. But Pak said that his parents pay for all this, since he doesn't have much money. Ian said that he understood everything, because he did not understand how to behave in such situations. After that, he opened the doors, thanked Pak again for everything he had done to him and said that he was off. Hansu wished him a safe journey, and Ian closed the door behind him parallel to going down the staircase. Meanwhile, the action moved to one of the buildings that was connected to the university. It was a chemical laboratory, and quite interesting experiments in chemistry took place here. Si Eun was very surprised that there was a fight at the party. Her friend said that a strange senior student wanted to fight with Yang, but Hansu took him away and so the fight ended. They also added that the atmosphere there was tense, and it's good that Si Eun didn't go to that party. In response, the girl was only silent, since this description did not fit Yang at all. Then the girl said that today an assistant teacher should teach, who would most likely be one of the senior students. One of the girls wanted to make a guess, but by that time the teacher's assistant had already entered the office. It was that same high school student from the bar, and he said that now he would call everyone by name for the attendance list. The girls were very scared when they realized that this was the same high school student from the bar. One of them was very scared because this was a compulsory lesson, which meant that Ian had to come too. And as soon as she thought about it, literally a few seconds later Ian came into the office. He stopped at the entrance and exchanged glances with the senior student for several seconds without saying anything. Everyone who was in this class was at the party, and therefore watched this in fear. The situation was quite tense, but nevertheless, Ian sat down at his desk, and the senior student said that today they would conduct a titration. Ian was indifferent to the senior student, but he watched him quite closely at first. He didn't take his eyes off him, practically didn't even look at all the other students who were in the laboratory. He literally walked up to him point blank when Ian was conducting an experiment, and this created an unpleasant atmosphere. This senior student watched very closely as Ian did each of the steps of the experiment. And even when Yang was simply writing something down in his notebook, the senior student still didn't take his eyes off him. This went on for a long time, and for long hours, until everyone left the offices. The senior student was left completely alone, and he still needed to figure out something. 
He took out his tablet to which the paper was attached, and looked at what was written there. He really didn't like that this Yang ignored him even after performing the titration. He found this guy in the column, and realized that the student's name was Yang. Meanwhile, the girls had already left the classroom and headed to the cafeteria for lunch. They said that due to the tension in the class, they could not even conduct research properly. But suddenly I noticed that I was walking in a different direction from everyone else. Then the girl said that today she was alone on the train with someone else, and Kenna and her friend went separately. A huge crowd of students stood in line at the cafeteria, waiting for food to be given to them. Ian was on his own and ate the same food as usual. But suddenly he noticed that someone was sitting down at his table, and it was a girl. This girl was Si Yoon, and as soon as she sat down, she immediately greeted Yang. At first the guy didn't understand anything, and I could even understand why Si Yoon greeted him. He turned his head to see who she had just greeted. But then the girl said that she and the guy had not seen each other for a long time. And this completely confused the guy, and he couldn't believe that Si Yoon was talking to him. He turned around again even more strongly to see who was standing behind him. The girl leaned closer and said that they both lived in the same house. We went to junior high and high school together, and are now studying at the same university. She also added that last year they actually sat next to each other in the same class, and this surprised Yang very much. Si Yoon didn't understand why the guy reacted as if he just understood it. But then she remembered that Ian had been the same since childhood as she remembers him. It seemed to her that he was always busy with something different, not like the other children. They studied together in all schools, and one day during one of the lessons she even said that they lived in the same house. But the guy didn't react in any way, even if they were sitting next to each other, he was always thinking about something else. Then he said that he was seeing Si Yoon for the first time, and it seemed that he didn't even want to remember the people around him. Then the girl concluded that this guy is a complete outsider. But nevertheless, she was always curious. It seems he has fenced himself off with an impenetrable wall because of which no one can make friends with him. However, for some reason, fate always made it so that this guy was next to Si Yoon. And for some reason, he constantly caught her attention, and she couldn't get him out of her head. In addition, all this time she thought that they were at least friends, and that Ian at least remembered her. It was unpleasant to realize that they were neighbors at school, lived in the same house, studied at the same university, and he didn't remember her. The girl realized that she was most likely just wishful thinking. But in fact, I don't even remember her at all, let alone consider her a friend. Then she took her tray of food and said that she should probably go and apologized. But suddenly Yang said that he remembered her, and said that her name was Lim Si Yoon, and that she was his friend. He returned to his bowl of rice and said that he usually does not react to the world around him. And even if he meets a person or something happens next to him, he simply thinks about it in his head. But despite this, he remembers everything and clearly analyzes the information around him. At first the girl was confused and didn't know where to go. Well, why did a smile appear on her face? Because it was nice to realize that at least after such a long time she was remembered. The girl asked why the guy looked around and continued to act as if he didn't know her. When Ian replied that he was simply confused, the girl immediately assumed that it was because she had become too beautiful since then. The next day, near the entrance to one of the offices, you could see a basket with a huge number of folders. Near this basket there was an inscription that asked to put your report from the chemical laboratory here. Hannah was very surprised that Hans received an excellent score, and he replied that it was all because he had a good full assessment score. After that, Hannah sat down with Yang to ask him what his score was on the laboratory report. And she saw that on the page where they usually write the rating there was a very low score. And this surprised Hannah very much, and even more surprised Si Yoon, who was standing behind Yang at that moment. She snatched the folder from Yang's hands and immediately began to leave somewhere. She walked along the corridor for a long time until she came to the office, which was also connected to the laboratory. She handed the folder with the grade to one of the teachers and said that she had checked everything and the grade should be higher. The teacher checked the work for some time and said that everything was really written here correctly. He asked who checked it, but when he didn't receive an answer, he said that he would immediately correct the rating to excellent. At that moment, I noticed who else was in this office besides the main teacher. It was that high school student, and he sat next to him and just looked at the computer. His face was very angry and he was extremely dissatisfied with what he had just heard. The group moved outside, 
and Hannah said that it was simply unacceptable for a high school student to do this on purpose because of an incident at a party. She approached Yang and said that next time he should turn to his friends if he needs help. The guy thanked her and said that he would do so. After that, Hannah blushed a little and said that since Ian was so grateful, then they should have lunch together. The whole group was very surprised when they heard this from the girl, and for several seconds everyone was silent. Hansu asked the girl why she was suddenly offering this. Did she really like Ian? But Hannah didn't answer, and the extra one noticeably pinched Puck's side. One of Hannah's friends said that if Ian has time, he should definitely take a walk in Hanoi. But the guys replied that he has a part-time job in addition to his main job and doesn't have time. Then Hannah turned around and realized that she still had a small chance. She asked the guy what about tomorrow, did he have any plans? But the guy just said that he had work. Then she asked if he had any plans for the day after tomorrow, but I replied that he had a part-time job in a warehouse. Then Hannah asked if he had time this week, but the guy replied that he was working. Then she asked if he had breaks between this work, and Ian replied that he worked during breaks. Then Hannah screamed and said that they should have lunch at the university tomorrow. Ian was silent for some time, and Hannah looked at him hopefully. The guy said he agreed and it was a good idea to have lunch at the university tomorrow. Hannah calmed down a little and said that then they would meet tomorrow for lunch at the university. Yang and Si Eun were on their way, so they boarded the same bus and said goodbye to everyone. C said that Hannah seemed to really like Ian, but the guy didn't understand why this was so, because he didn't do anything for her. Then the girl replied that perhaps it was because she liked the way Ian looked. But the guy didn't understand anything, so he asked Si Eun what she meant when she said that. But the girl was surprised at first, and then said that the guy had better look in the mirror and find out for himself. Ian continued to remain silent, but in fact it was clear that he was lost in his thoughts. When he looked in the mirror, he could never clearly see his reflection there, could not understand what he really looked like. He told the girl that when they look in the mirror, sometimes they see something completely different. When the girl asked what he meant, the guy decided to change the topic because he didn't know how to explain it. Si Eun realized that he wanted to change the subject, so she asked Yang what he thought of Han and if he thought she was cute. The guy asked if she looked cute according to Si, in fact, in this way he gave the answer to this question to the girl. And she didn't really like it, because it was clear that Ian didn't really want to answer this question. She asked if the guy behaved this way because he didn't want to answer the question honestly. The guy simply remained silent, but still everything became clear to the girl even without his answer. She asked Yang if he communicates so coldly because he is simply not interested. But the guy said that he had simply never thought about it before, so he was uncomfortable talking about it. Then he said that it was time to get off because he needed to get up at this stop and go to work. He said goodbye to Si Eun and got off the bus, after which he moved further and further. At that moment, the girl concluded that even though the guy entered the university, he still hasn't changed much since then. Jan was very productive and efficient that day, and often took the initiative. Even the boss noticed this, but he also noticed something that was quite rare to see in people in this job. There was a small smile on the guy's face even when he was simply sawing an iron pipe with the help of a special device. The boss concluded that the boy really liked it at the university, because this was the first time he saw his smile. After all the work, the guy headed home, and a small smile was still on his face. But he still needed to go to the sorting center overnight, so he decided to go home for a snack. Even though the day went as usual, Ian was somehow in a good mood. At that moment, he felt that he was living a normal life like everyone else. He smiled even when he walked through the maternity hospital area and came closer and closer to the house. Entering the building, he went down the steps to go through the doors that led into his apartment. But when he opened the doors and entered home, he felt that at that second everything changed. The smile on his face disappeared, and everything around suddenly became dark and not joyful. He remembered that his father was waiting for him at home, who would most likely scream. He turned on the light and saw a not very pleasant picture in front of him. In front of him there were two proofreaders who beat his father, and one of them said that they were lucky to meet their son for the second time. At first the guy was silent, the smile on his face disappeared by itself, or everything became indifferent. He didn't even look at strangers in their apartment, his entire gaze was focused on his father. He was beaten and didn't even bother to look his son in the eyes. Then Jan said that the father had to give all the money, so they almost forgot here. Well then one of the collectors said that he didn't understand what the guy meant. 
He went down to his father and asked if they received any money, because he didn't remember. Young said that he personally gave 16 million won to his father. The collector was very surprised when he heard this information, and even thought that he might actually have received this money. But the father did not answer, either from a lack of strength, or from the fact that he still knew where the money went. The collector opened the statement to see all the transactions that the father made. After looking at all the information there, I withdrew all the money and lost again in the casino. He looked at the father of the family and saw that he lowered his eyes even lower. He leaned against him once again asking if he really thought that he could repay his debt by gambling. The man started punching him with all his might, asking if he was going to live like this for the rest of his life. I didn't see anything new in this picture, everything was constantly repeated. Before she could experience hope or happiness, Yang needed something else. He had to prepare for real despair, for the fact that everything bad would repeat itself all at once. And this gave rise to depression and very negative thoughts that prevented the guy from living. The worst thing was that I didn't even understand when it was all going to end. He was able to withstand everything and move forward, using his last strength to climb the rock of success. He continued to climb upstairs when his strength was almost gone and it was hard to breathe. But I didn't understand that the worst was yet to come, and the realization of this was even worse. After all, having gone all this way, there was nothing worthwhile at the end. Suddenly he felt a message arrive on his phone. The sound that the phone made was getting louder and louder, and then the guy realized that this was not his main phone. He received a notification about the location of the fight club, and he became very thoughtful when he saw this message. It appeared at a very necessary moment in his life, and it seemed that the universe had orchestrated it. He remembered how the stranger was ready to bet money on him, and how he surprised everyone watching then. Suddenly, the doors to the place where the duel took place opened, and Ian entered the room. He said in a calm and cool voice, without a smile on his face, that he came here to participate. Not long before this moment, a battle took place in the building between two fairly equal opponents. The organizer of these fights spoke with his comrade and asked why Yang was late. But this thug said that even I need to hope for it, because he is sure that the brat will not come. The organizer said that you can never be sure of this, because he could suddenly appear at any second. And it was at that moment that the doors to the building opened, and a half-naked man walked inside with a suitcase in his hand. He said that he was very glad that he found this place, because a little more and he would have died without fighting. The organizer was very surprised and frightened when he saw what kind of warrior entered the building. A fellow organizer asked why the hell this fighter was here, and ordered him to get lost. Well then this warrior said that he came to fight, because this place is just intended for that. Then the thug said that he ordered me to come here because in the last battle he killed a man during the battle. But Vanya said that there is no need to cling to the past, because in general he thought about this last year. The bull stopped him, said that he needed to be invited to talk nonsense, and once again ordered him to leave here. Well, at that moment the warrior picked up his suitcase and told the audience what was inside that if he left, they would miss the fight. Arguing this by saying that if he leaves, the fights will turn into showdowns on the playground. The warrior who had once fought with Yang and his opponent were very surprised when they heard this. Then the newly arrived warrior said that he also brought a gift for everyone who was present here. At that second, he opened his case and the contents in it began to protrude upward. The entire suitcase was filled with large denomination bills, and at the same time the warrior shouted that the battle needed to begin. He presented this as a down payment, and the audience was very happy with this gesture. They all immediately began to collect money from the floor, and at the same time saying that this warrior should be allowed into the battle. The thug was very dissatisfied with what was happening, but nevertheless did not interfere in these matters. The warrior said that anyone can attack him, because he is already tired of waiting. At the same time, he called all two warriors who were sparring little scared puppies. At that moment, the thug approached one of the fighters and said that this warrior had come here just to beat someone up. From the very beginning, he didn't care about winning or money, he was only here to hurt others. He is a real psycho, and he doesn't need any monetary or any other reward for these battles. He really looked very scary, and when the fighter with green hair looked at him, he was even a little scared. His image looked really very crazy and he looked like a psycho. A moment, and this warrior with red hair is already running towards the fighter who just fought. He brought his hand closer to his face and said that they could already start fighting. A second after that, he delivered a very strong blow with his elbow directly to the fighter's unprotected face. 
This nonsense could not resist at all, but only accepted blows from the warrior. It looked more like a beating than the usual fight that could be seen within these walls. The thug began to shout that the fight needed to be stopped, and ordered the warrior to stop immediately. Well then the organizer asked him if he could see what was happening here. After all, he eats and the thug stops this fight, then only the thug will be seen to blame for all this. He didn't like this very much, because his status should at least somehow influence the order of affairs. The warrior struck one blow after another, and now this fight has turned into a game. Wallpaper burned his enemy to the floor, and it was clear that the fighter could no longer move. But the warrior was not interested at all, he looked at the fighter who was already turned off, and prepared to deliver multiple punches to his face. At that moment, the doors opened again and Yang entered the building. Everyone inside, of course, paid attention to this, and even the warrior was distracted from beating that guy on earth. Then the guy said that he came here to participate. The audience was very surprised to hear this, but some of them were still outside at the last match and remembered it. The organizer was very pleased that I came after all, since last time he showed a good result. Now the audience realized that the player they found outside at the last match was named Ian. The organizer said that this guy is a new player and he is impressive. But most of all the thug was dissatisfied, because he did not understand why this guy came here despite his advice. The warrior was also impressed, because he did not understand why this newly minted enemy looked so weak. So he picked up his opponent from the floor and threw him towards the ceiling. The fighter's body fell to the floor and showed no signs of life. Yang looked at him, but no emotion was visible on his face. He only glanced at the military man with red hair. After a second, he got ready just in case. Then the warrior said that the second round was beginning, and at the same time he began to come closer and closer to Yang. The people who were nearby formed a circle, and the whole thing now looked like a ring. At that second, the warrior felt exactly why he had come to this building. This was exactly the feeling for which he was ready to sacrifice and go to great lengths. It was the pleasure he felt from beating people to a pulp. After all, only in these moments did it feel like a real thrill for him. But he wanted to feel more, even more, he was ready to kill just to get pleasure from it. He pushed away from the place where he was standing and moved towards Yang in order to carry out an attack. He had already gotten very close, but at that moment it seemed to the warrior that time had slowed down. His fist was already close to the guy's body, and was ready to smash his internal organs. The warrior was in anticipation of how painful it would feel for Yang himself. He struck where the lung should be, and this blow should break several bones. Moreover, due to the fact that this blow falls on the ribs, they could easily pierce them. Voin was in anticipation of what reaction the guy would have to this blow. His eyes were simply glowing with anticipation, he wanted to see everything. All he needed was to see Yang writhing in pain. But instead, he saw the same indifferent face of the guy looking at this warrior. It was not clear why the enemy did not react in any way, and the warrior was even a little scared. But things got even worse for him when Ian swung his fist and slammed his fist into his jaw with all his might. The warrior could not have expected this, and even this made him take a few steps back. Moreover, from this blow, blood began to flow from his mouth, which fell to the floor. At this moment, everyone became quiet, because they did not expect that this could happen. But in response, the warrior only laughed, and it was clear that he was ready to launch a second attack. He began to run towards Yang, and it was obvious that the subsequent attack should be even stronger. He ran close enough and swung his arm to deliver another similar blow. This blow was almost at the same point, since the warrior thought that if she was already hurting even a little, then now she must hurt like hell. He expected that this time everything would change and his opponent would cry in pain. Well, in response, Yang only looked into the warrior's eyes so that he understood what awaited him now. The patient could not understand what was happening here at all, and how a person could withstand this. I delivered another blow straight to the warrior's nose, and this time he was able to keep his balance. He fell at a distance of up to how many meters from the guy, and for some time he could not get up. At this moment, the thug could not understand how Yang did not receive any harm at all from such powerful blows. The warrior spat blood, but still tried to get up in order to continue the fight. The warrior asked the guy who Yang was, what was going on here, and why he wasn't in pain at all. But the guy didn't answer, his gaze was still cold-blooded and indifferent. But even Yang himself noticed that this time everything was completely different from what happens in a normal situation in battles. Previously, the pain was weak, 
but at least he felt it somehow. And now he feels absolutely nothing. Yang's feelings had never disappeared like this before, especially in battle. When he came to his senses, he saw that the warrior was already a few centimeters away from him and had already swung his fist. The warrior said that he was just wondering how long Ian could endure this pain. After that, he began to throw multiple blows, but the guy tried to block it. He stood like a stone, withstanding absolutely all the blows that the enemy dealt to him. And when he found the right moment to attack, he immediately used it. But one day the warrior managed to dodge, and he even managed to say that he knew that the guy would strike such a simple blow a third time. Therefore, he dodged this blow with ease and delivered an uppercut right to Yang's chin. This blow was quite strong, but the worst thing was completely different, after that he delivered another direct blow to the nose. After this, another series of crushing blows followed, but I stood firm and tried to hold them back. The crowd rejoiced, and it was not at all easy for the guy to withstand all these blows from the warrior. The warrior suffered blows more and more often, and in general they became stronger. Suddenly I noticed that there was some kind of pause between the blows. It looked like the warrior was preparing something. Then the guy looked up and raised his head just above his block. At that very second, the warrior used a kick, and the blow came straight to Yang's right temple. The blow was so strong that the guy immediately began to lose his sight. Consciousness left his head, until a few seconds later, his eyes closed completely. He no longer saw anything in front of him, and felt very little. He lost his stance and his body slowly began to fall backwards. But suddenly a hand appeared right in front of Yang, and grabbed him by the throat. It was a warrior. He grabbed the guy by the throat and ordered him to stand still. The warrior asked what happened to Yang, and assumed that he had already stolen away. But the guy didn't answer him anything. The warrior concluded that despite the fact that many said that this enemy was quite strong, it all turned out to be a lie. In fact, this opponent simply can withstand blows, but cannot carry out successful attacks. The warrior was tired and bored, so he let go of Yang and let him fall to the floor tightly. But suddenly he heard the movement of Yang's leg, and it was along such a trajectory, as if he was trying to prevent his fall. And when he looked at him with one eye, he saw that the guy's body was not falling. Even though his gaze was still blank, he didn't even intend to fall to the floor. This surprised the warrior very much, and for several seconds he was absolutely confused. And I was even more confused because Ian very quickly came out of this position and prepared to deliver a side kick. At this moment, the war realized that it seems that this guy is not done yet, and he is ready to fight. A series of rather strong blows began on the face of the warrior with red hair. Yang struck again and again, and they became stronger every second. He pushed off the ground and even landed one of his knees right on the warrior's chin. And the enemy's case flew several meters away from the battle site. Even while in the air, the warrior laughed, this laughter sounded very crazy. He did not understand what was wrong with this fighter, and also realized that soon he would not be able to hold back. When he saw that I was getting ready to grab him and strike him with my fists, he took action. He quickly jumped away from the place where he was and went behind the enemy. It was quite easy for him to take the guy in the key and very quickly begin to choke him. Being in this position, the warrior said that now Yang would not be able to lose consciousness. He clenched his hands as tightly as he could, and at the same time a smile began to appear on his face. The warrior told the guy in a quiet voice that all this was because he was going to kill him. In a louder voice, he began to ask Yang what he was going to do now. Pressing even harder, he said that it was time for Yang to die. At this moment, it was noticeable that the guy's body was hardly moving anymore, and he stopped resisting. This meant that oxygen had stopped flowing to the brain, and in a few seconds he would die. At that moment, the thug flew with his foot into the side of the warrior and he flew to the side. This blow was so strong that the warrior almost reached the wall of this building. The thug started shouting at him, asking if he was crazy if he was trying to kill someone again. But getting up, the warrior said that if the thug had not stopped him, he would have really killed him. But when the warrior brought his gaze to the guy, she saw that he was still standing and conscious. He asked Yang out loud how he was still standing, because he should have been suffocating before death. The thug began to take Ian away, and at the same time he said that the match was over and everyone could take the money and go home. The audience was not particularly happy with this, but the words of this thug were worth their weight in gold. The warrior did not know what to think being in such a position, at the same time he was wondering what they were talking about. But in fact, 
he was remembering the moment when Yang hurt him. It gave him unearthly pleasure, but what was even more important, this is that in my fresh memory there was a feeling of how the warrior dealt with the guy himself. And this feeling put him into ecstasy, and for a long time he could not get out of it. By that time, the thug had already taken the guy out into the corridor because he had a conversation with him. He asked Yang why he came there despite the warning that it was better not to get involved here. But the guy looked away and said that he just needed money. The brute sighed, because it was obvious that this was not the first time he had heard this excuse. He handed a wad of money to the guy and told him to take it and never come back. But I asked her the next match would take place and also handed over the phone that was given to him. By this point, the thug was already angry, and realized that he needed to act more radically. He didn't hit Yang too hard, pressing him against the concrete wall, and lowered his tone, speaking almost in a whisper. He asked the guy if he understood that he almost died a few seconds ago. But Ian said that it didn't matter. All because he had never felt alive in his entire life anyway. The thug didn't really like this phrase, and for a while he was simply silent. Then the organizer approached the guys and he said that the opponent, Yang, was very bad today. He handed the guy a new phone and money and said that he must come to the next match. Without hesitation, the guy said that he would definitely come to see him. The thug screamed loudly and turned his back to the guy, walking further and further. He said that from the very beginning I was a stupid bastard, and now, like dozens of the same, I will only leave here dead. Why did he lower his voice and tell the guy not to regret it later? But the organizer told Yang not to listen to this thug, children, considering that he has been here the longest, he simply has no right to say this. Then Ian asked how much this thug earns, since he has been here the longest. But the organizer didn't even know what he would answer to this. Then the guy asked another question, he was wondering how much he could ultimately earn. The organizer thought about it and said that if Ian took part in a large number of matches, he would never think about money again. After that, Ian asked when he could take part in a big match in the near future. The organizer thought about it, since he did not have exact dates, and plus he was not sure of the guy's motivation. So he told him that for now he needs to make sure that he comes to the next match, and he will try to find out something about the big match. After that, he turned around and followed the thug, at the same time saying goodbye to the guy. Now I was left alone in the middle of a dark corridor, and there were absolutely no thoughts in my head. He simply stared into space for a while, and then lowered his gaze to the object in his hand. It was a thick wad of money. Everything he had done lately was just for the sake of this paper. One day, when Ian was driving in a car with his boss, he asked him why he worked so hard. He said that he heard that in addition to his main job, the guy also works in the delivery service until the morning. And so the boss began to wonder what the reason was if the guy was pushing himself like this. Then the guy became very thoughtful, and for a long time did not know what to answer to this. But when he walked after the fight with money in his hands, he felt simply terrible. It was already dark, there wasn't a single person on the street, and my head wasn't even filled with thoughts. Young felt as if he had already died, as if during that battle the warrior had strangled him. Approaching closer and closer to the house, he felt something was wrong. It was similar to nausea, but it appeared very suddenly and was not very strong at first. But after a few seconds it became very noticeable and uncomfortable. Literally after twenty seconds, a very strong urge to vomit began, and pain appeared in the mouth. Ian twisted and spat something into his hand. Looking at his palm, he saw a clear red stain of blood, and realized that the battle was not without consequences. Moreover, this was very surprising, considering that he did not feel any pain during the battle. The boss then, while in the car, said that it's good when a guy works hard and endures all the difficulties of life. But the boss was afraid that if Ian kept everything to himself, he would eventually break down. After all, even if you don't feel physical and mental pain, everything tends to accumulate. Yana entered his apartment holding the money tightly in his hand, and felt, to put it mildly, not very well. There was sweat on his face, and blood was flowing from his nose and mouth. Blood dripped in a stream straight onto the floor, and Ian began to feel that he was gradually losing strength. He had to go to work soon, so it was not clear why his body wanted to sleep. Within a second the guy began to fall and dropped all his money from his hands. A moment later he was already lying exhausted on the floor and did not know at all what to do. There was no one at home then, and Yang's exhausted body began to flood the floor with blood. At the work where Ian worked, 
the manager was dissatisfied with the fact that there was always no one at the place where he was. Then one of the workers said that Ian did not come. The manager ordered to contact him and tell him that if he doesn't come right away, he won't receive even a one at the end of the month. After that, he ordered the employee to do the work for him too, but he refused, saying that he just couldn't handle it. Children Yen had to do much more work than everyone else. And it wasn't a lie, this guy did a lot more work compared to the others. This employee asked the manager not to punish him next time, but just to keep an eye on him, because he is also the youngest. Meanwhile, the action moved to the university, where in one of the classrooms near one of the desks it was very tense. All because Hannah was really waiting for Ian, and he didn't show up at the university all day. Hannah tried to ask Park if he had Yang's number, but he didn't have it, all he knew was that he might be at work right now. Then Hannah already concluded that something happened to him at work, and that's why he didn't come to the university. School ended, and Si Eun began to go home, but she was very restless. She was wondering what happened to Yang, because he didn't show up to any classes today. The girl was walking to her home, and at the same time a very annoying thought popped into her head. In it, Hannah complained that she didn't know why I didn't come, and she was sure that something happened to him. She remembered that Yang lives next to her, so perhaps it's worth visiting him for a minute. But then she thought that it would be quite strange if she suddenly looked for him, she decided to go home. But suddenly she noticed something very suspicious near Yang's door. The door to his apartment was open, although the light inside was not turned on. Moreover, when she lowered her head, she noticed that there was a small pool of blood right under the door. At first, this seriously scared her, because it was dangerous to enter an apartment near which there were pools of blood. This blood was not only near the doors, but also on 105 as they were brought into this apartment. She thought for some time, but literally after a few seconds she made a decision. She began to run from her place on the stairs as fast as she could, straight to the apartment where Ian lived. She opened the doors even wider to see what was there. And when she saw this picture, to put it mildly, she was surprised. In front of her, Ian was lying on the floor, and everything around was money. When she bent down, she saw that the guy had lost consciousness, there were pools of blood around him, and his skin had turned pretty white. The girl tried to bring the guy to consciousness for some time, but eventually called an ambulance. When the ambulance crew handed him over to the guys, they began talking to each other while they were driving him along the corridor. They didn't understand how Yang could still breathe in this state. They suggested that he experienced excruciating pain before losing consciousness. He was connected to a special device and left in the ward, allowing only one person to see him. It was Si Yun, and she had been waiting for him to return for a very long time, and was always nearby. One morning everything changed, this morning was quite sunny and overall instilled only positivity. Suddenly the guy heard a sound, and this sound made him open his eyes and wake up. He opened his storm and, looking around, realized that he was not in bed at home. Then he realized that it looked like a hospital ward, and this left him in shock for a few seconds. He tried to get up in bed, but suddenly felt pain in his side. He also felt that he was connected to some kind of wire, which greatly interfered with his movement. In addition, he noticed that he was not in the room himself, so he shifted his gaze. He saw that Si Yun was lying on a small bed next to his bed. She immediately stood up when she saw that the guy had woken up and asked how the guy was feeling, because the doctor said that he wouldn't be able to move. After that, the girl began to ask various questions about what happened to him, but I simply remained silent for some time. And then, after a few seconds he asked who is this girl. There was another awkward pause, but this time the girl was unable to react as calmly. She stood up and started shouting that now was the time for me to joke, and then Ian said that he remembered that her name was C. The girl continued by saying that the guy was literally on the verge of death, and the doctor said that it was a miracle that he was still alive. She asked if the guy really didn't know how shocked she was to find him in such a state at home. When asked what happened, the guy said that he seemed to have simply lost consciousness. The girl replied that she was raising that Ian had fainted. She was only asking what caused it. The guy replied that the fact was that he overdid it while working, and because of this, he fell asleep as soon as he entered the apartment. The girl asked why there was no one at Yan's house then, and asked where his family was. The guy replied that he lives with his father, but he doesn't come home often. After that, he raised his eyes to find his watch, and told the girl that he should already go to school. Si Eun said that this is just funny, because he was released from classes due to hospitalization. 
The guy said that he couldn't do that, because he had a lot of responsibilities and he had to work. This simply infuriated the girl, and she said that she was now going to go to school, and ordered the guy to rest. She also said that she would bring friends next time so that they could visit him. But then Ian asked not to tell anyone that he was in the hospital. He explained this by saying that he wanted only C to know that he was in the hospital. The girl agreed with this, and understood that this desire was quite normal. She said that she had to go, and the guy said that he would then rest for now. C turned around and said that if something happened at school, she would let the guy know. Suddenly, the guy thanked the girl for being with him all this time. He looked down and said that he really appreciated this act. Then Si Yoon said that it's good that the guy knows how to express it, or at least learns. And the second time she said goodbye, and this time she really began to leave Yang's room. The guy still felt pain in his side, and decided to rest a little. Meanwhile, at work, everything was not quite as usual. The manager was unhappy that the employee still could not contact the student who was not working. Then the employee said that he really had not been at work for two weeks, and it seemed like we should stop calling him. The boss was also very worried, and when he received a call from the guy, he was a little scared. He said that he had not seen me at work for a long time, and was very scared because of this. The guy replied that he would not go to work for a while because something had happened in his life. The boss said that everything was fine, and he suspected that something was wrong, and asked if he could return to work. But the guy immediately replied that he would not be able to return for quite some time due to the current situation. Then the boss said that the guy should do what is important to him now, and not worry about his boss. Ian said that he would pay next time, but the boss replied that there was no need for that. He only asked the guy to make sure that he didn't get hurt, and Yang once again thanked his boss. After that, the guy hung up, and a new message arrived on the second phone. All the guy's attention was focused on this phone, and he looked only at it. There was a notification on the phone about the location of the fight club. The guy decided that this time he couldn't give in, but before that he just looked at the notifications for some time. Literally a minute later there was no one in the room, and the guy disappeared somewhere. When the girl came to the hospital to check on the guy, she was seriously surprised when she saw that no one was there. She asked a passing nurse where the patient was lying in this place. And she replied that a lot of time had passed since the patient left the hospital on his own. It was not clear to see why the guy left without saying a word. But by that time, Ian was already at the site of the next fights. The organizer asked Yang if he was ready for his first official match. He also added that he would never again meet the person he fought with last time. After all, he is recognized as abnormal. And the guy said that was good, and from that moment on he was a regular player. He started with himself, and Yang, as always, started him with a block, in order to counter-attack later. A delivery arrived with the student, and they were resting peacefully after classes. No one knew where Yang was, and Hannah was the most worried of all of them, because they never had lunch at the university. But no one thought about the guy for a long time, since there was a lot of delicious food in front of him. Meanwhile, the guy was in a fierce battle, and it's not to say that the enemy was very weak. Meanwhile, the students played various games inside the university, and overall they had a good time. Ian received one victory after another on different days, it was almost impossible to knock him down. The meeting of students has since become paid thanks to Pak, and this is how he was able to earn his first money. Yang, meanwhile, earned much more, because each round of a new fight began with applause. People bet a lot of money, and the guy really liked that he could earn it so quickly. All his eyes were focused on was money, he was not interested in anything else. Countless streams of money flashed in his eyes between fights, and only at these moments could he think. The flow of telephones and money became the only thing that changed in his life. After all, the rest remained with something more stable, for example, these were the injuries that opponents inflicted on his face. Once, when I was cleaning up traces after one of the fights, the organizer came into his toilet with a thug. He said that he remembers the last time the guy told him that he would like to take part in a bigger match. The organizer also added that Ian is too skilled to be in these fights. He pointed to the thug. He said that I was probably wondering why he had never participated in fights before. The reason is that the thug is too strong for them. And so Ian must go with the organizer to take part in a larger match. The guy thought for just a few seconds, and then, without even looking around, he walked towards the organizer. The brute no longer felt empathy for the guy, and simply looked at him silently. When the guy came out of the toilet, 
the thug stood there for some time and thought about everything, and after that, he also left the toilet, slowly catching up with the organizer. When he left, there was no one left in this toilet. The light also went out, and at that moment even Yang did not know what awaited him ahead. Meanwhile, in the ring, which looked more professional, the cleaners were wiping away the blood. They were constantly being urged on, since it was necessary to remove two rather large pools of blood very quickly. At that moment, the organizer, the big man and Ian began to enter this hall, and the orderlies simultaneously carried away the body. The organizer said that this place was very different from previous battle sites, but the guy's attention was on the body. He watched as a completely immobilized and paralyzed man was carried away. The organizer told the big guy that he and Yang would sit in the hall, and he should go and take part in the match. The organizer and Yang took their seats, and he told him to sit quietly and not attract attention. There was another man sitting next to the guy, but besides throwing a glance at the guy, he didn't do anything else. The man who was already in the ring addressed the big man, calling him Pak Wan Chul. He constantly teased him and asked if he was well prepared for the match. He constantly called him to the ring, and said that he couldn't wait to crush his face. But Cole did not react to this in any way, but only slowly went into the changing room. When the red-haired opponent noticed that his enemy's speed was quite low, he continued to mock. He began to ask about whether Chul was able to pay back all his debts, and about what he said that his friend would die. The enemy also said that it was not worth borrowing a huge amount of money to try to save him. After all, because he did this, his friend committed suicide right in the hospital. In his opinion, it would be better if Cole himself fell ill and died at that moment. For a moment the big man stopped, and the enemy at that moment thought that he had managed to catch him. But constantly for a few seconds, Cole continued his movement, and also continued to ignore the enemy. The red-haired warrior spat under himself and ordered the big man to change clothes and hurry to the ring. Yana asked why that man constantly fights, because it doesn't seem like he likes it. The organizer replied that no one here likes fighting, everyone is just making money. Chul had a friend for 30 years who constantly participated in battles. However, his drug addiction caused a very terrible heart attack. And after that, his friend went to intensive care in a rather difficult condition and the organizer noticed the new guest during the next battle in a secret place. Then he first met Park Wanchul, who was in a hurry to get to these fights. Then he came with the phone number of a fight club that his friend owned. He asked for money to pay hospital bills, saying that he would get the money back from the competition. Despite the fact that the organizer gave money, his friend suffered three unsuccessful heart surgeries. The hospital bills were becoming too high and kept rising every day. Then the friend seemed to understand all this, and made a very tough and fateful decision. He committed suicide right in the room in which he had been lying all this time. After that, the organizer thought that Park Won Chul would run away, but he said that he would pay no matter what. After all, thanks to the organizer, he was able to talk to his friend a little more. At that moment, I remembered how Cole told him not to enter into the next battle if he didn't want to die. How he dissuaded him while in the corridor, and constantly called him crazy. The moment was special when the big guy was ready to give money just for the guy to just leave. Now Ian understood why he sent him away then, he saw his friend in him. The red-haired warrior constantly taunted his opponent, saying that he would fight for his friend. Coming closer to him, he asked what his friend would think of him if he looked right now. But Cole didn't listen to him at all, it looked like he was waiting for some moment. He asked for forgiveness for pretending to talk about a good life and he told me to be a loser like him. Cole remembered what his friend looked like a few days before his death, and this added even more strength to him. A moment later the bell rang, and this only meant that the battle could begin. At that very moment, the red-haired warrior began to run towards the Cole to attack. But suddenly some kind of barrier stopped him, and he instantly felt pain near his forehead. All because this warrior kicked him right in the face with all his might. This caused the red-haired warrior to fly several meters away and fall to the floor. His head was already spinning, but despite this he was still able to stand on his feet. Then he tried to get up in order to launch a counterattack against the enemy. But Cole was more agile, he came closer to the red-haired warrior and hit him with a left hook. After this blow, the opponent's body flew away again, and it was already more difficult to get up. But despite this, he tried to get up and at the same time crawl away from the enemy. Well, all this was in vain, as Cole jumped up and hit the enemy in the back of the head with both hands. At this moment, 
the warrior thought that he would already die, as the pain was frantic. He couldn't even believe that it was a punch, it was more like a blow with a huge sledgehammer. Then Cole began to strike him on the back of his head and back, and the red-haired warrior felt as if they were throwing cobblestones at him. He started shouting that he was surrendering, but for some reason the battle did not stop. The organizer told the guy that it was impossible to give up in this match, since the managers only stop everything when someone is in a dying state. Ian said that it looks very risky and dangerous. Well, then the organizer added that the creators of the game planned everything in advance to create more excitement. At that moment, Cole looked absolutely cold-blooded, and beat the enemy to death. He dealt a very strong blow to the back of the enemy's head, and after that everyone fell silent. The organizer at this point said that he would not get tired of repeating that Cole was a real idiot. All because when he could finish off his enemy, he hit his fist near his head. After that, he stood up, because he realized that his opponent could not fight. Then the red-haired warrior took him on his leg and thanked him for his mercy. But it was a trick, because he made a grab and tried to knock his opponent to the floor. And it worked out quite well for him, because Cole fell on his back on the floor and could not move. And the red-haired warrior, in turn, began to deliver multiple blows, which Cole blocked. At the same time, he began to shout that his opponent was very naive and weak. But during one of the blows, Cole's body moved a little to the left relative to the red-haired warrior. And then the organizer said that his stupidity does not make him weak. At that very second, Cole was able to free himself and hit his opponent's jaw with all his strength. After such a blow, the enemy's lifeless body fell straight to the floor. It was an enchanting knockout, but at the same time it was even clear to me whether the red-haired warrior had survived. At that moment, Yang realized that Cole is a rather strong warrior, he doesn't even know how to deliver such a blow in this position. A delivery man came to the organizer and brought him a box. When Ian moved his gaze to it, he saw that what was lying in it interested him very much. Although the box was small, it was filled to the top with wads of money. There was simply a huge amount there, this amount would have been enough for him to live for six months without thinking about anything. All Yang needs to do is find a way to win multiple times. The organizer looked at the guy who was sitting next to him and saw with what eyes he looked at this money. Some time passed and Jan came to return part of his father's debt to the collector. A man once said at their home that if this continues and then the son will eventually pay off the entire debt. He also wondered where the student got so much money from, because last time his father threw away 16 million just like that. At first the guy was silent for a bit and then said that he just works very hard. The collector, to put it mildly, did not believe these words and looked at the guy with contempt. For some time he looked into his eyes in order to understand whether they were lying to him or not. But he saw that even this guy's gaze was lowered somewhere in the wrong place, and he was most likely looking at the money that was lying on the table. Moreover, it was noticeable that he had an abrasion on his face that had appeared there not so long ago. He also had a cut on his lip, but overall it could easily be attributed to boxing. Janu suddenly stood up and said that in any case, he would soon pay off all his debts and come back again. Then the collector asked does he really think that he will receive much more money and will return the money soon? The guy agreed with this wording and said that he would soon come with the money. He quickly walked to the exit, opened the door and went out into the street. When he closed the door behind him, there were very interesting thoughts in the minds of the guard and the collector himself. The collector was especially interested, he had a lot of questions, and Ian could not answer them. So he ordered his guard to check this guy and find a lot of information on him. All because the collector had a suspicion that this money was not clean. And if this is so, then he too can earn money in this way, because even if the student knows about it, then they should too. The guy met with the organizer, who asked him if he remembered the guy with whom Cole fought that time. I remember that match very clearly, and I remembered how the organizer's security guard easily dealt with him. The organizer said that the guy who lost in that fight could become Yang's first opponent. It looks like he's just looking for a weak opponent after losing, so he chose a newcomer. Since he is a popular athlete, this is not a very suitable match for a newcomer like Yang, but the organizer could bring them together. Then he looked closely into the guy's eyes and said that the amount would be very large since the match was very important. At this point, Yana thought very hard, as the proposal looked really interesting. Then the organizers directly asked whether the guy wanted this fight to take place. Yang replied that he would do it, and he was ready for this fight. The organizer said that there is no point in lying, 
because this opponent is ten times stronger than anyone Ian has faced up to this point. Even though he lost to Chiyo, he is a professional fighter and an excellent athlete. Therefore, it is worth seeing Cole and asking for advice if someone wants to win, because he fought with almost everyone. I remembered the last conversation they had, and realized that this attempt might be futile. But nevertheless, when he left that place, he already knew where Cole was. When he walked, he was quite tense because of the dialogue that lay ahead of him. I can tell you that he was scared, rather just very uncomfortable. When he got close enough, Chiyo noticed him. But at first he didn't understand who it was, and for some time he just silently looked at the guy. Then Yang said that he needed advice from Chiyo. The man didn't understand anything at first and said that it looked like the guy was talking about some kind of crap. He asked for advice on how to defeat the guy Cho fought not so long ago. The man said that this would not help him win, because Yana is a real amateur, and he is a professional fighter. He stood up and said that from the very beginning Ian had warned about the danger that would await him in battle. And because he already ignored this warning once, he will no longer help him. Cole hit Yang with his shoulder and began to walk away, at the same time remaining very angry. The day of the match arrived and something very interesting was happening in one of the elite residential complexes. The warrior with red hair was very angry because he couldn't find Yang. He walked through a very expensive apartment, and at the same time wiped the blood from his hands, throwing rags in different directions. He couldn't believe that the organizer could deceive him so easily. After the fight, he gave him the phone, took the old one and said that with its help he could meet Yang again. A few days after those events, a warrior with red hair came to the agreed place. But there was no one here, and the advertisement said that this was exactly the place. Then he realized that he had been deceived, and no battles would be held here. He got very angry and that day he broke the phone that the organizer gave him. Remembering this, he began to hit one of the walls that stood next to him, smashing his fists into blood. This guy was the type who finishes what he starts, and he was uncomfortable with the fact that he couldn't find Yang. He couldn't understand that he would have to stop halfway and swore that he would find this guy. Suddenly another young man came out and asked the warrior with red hair not to stain the wall with blood. After all, now it is dirty, and the cleaning lady will have to scrub it with various products that stink terribly. The warrior with red hair was wondering how he was so quiet here, because he thought that he was in the office. But this was not true, since the man was going to go to the match, and the warrior understood this. Then Joe said that that guy is not so easy to deceive, and he really goes to the match. Then the warrior with red hair said that that fight was quite childish, and it probably wasn't interesting to watch. But Joe replied that there was one guy there that he really wanted to find out about. This united them, they both needed to find someone and find out more information about him. Joe said that the last time he watched the guy who was sitting next to him. After all, usually when there is a fight or bloodshed, the entire audience becomes tense. This can be understood by their body and facial expression, they are either worried or in a state of excitement. Also, when they are observed by something terrible, they begin to feel something very similar to that feeling. Well, that guy didn't react to it at all, and looked more like a dead machine. But what was most interesting was that he continued to react to money, it seemed that this was the only thing that interested him. And Joe thought it was very nice, at the same time he walked up to the stand with the keys. And because of this, he was quite curious, and it was obvious that he had already contacted someone. He has already become someone's toy, and someone controls him very well. At the same time, he began to choose which car he would drive to the match today. Taking the keys to one of the cars in his fleet, he began to untwist them on his fingers. After that, he said that if he wanted, he could calmly take it, given his passion for money. Well, then the warrior with red hair said that the child he found much more interesting. He added that he would first rest and then go searching for him. Joe wished him luck. He went downstairs and got behind the wheel of his red Lamborghini, and began to drive through the city at night. While he was driving, he thought that now he was wondering which side the guy would show when he fought. By that time, the collectors were already near the entrance to the place where the match took place, and planned to take money from Yang there. The organizer and Cole stood near Yang and asked if he was ready for battle. The guy gathered his strength, took off his outerwear and said that he was ready to fight. That very day, the organizer and Chul went to the cashier to place a bet. The organizer slipped a wad of money to one of the managers, and he accepted it. He said that since the organizer brought Yen, it is obvious that the bet will be on him. 
Then the organizer corrected the manager and said that he would bet on this same Yang on the opponent. Then Cole asked him why he didn't want to bet on Yang, because he had never lost. The organizer said that all his victories were barely achieved, and now he faces a significant difference in strength. Turning to Chiyo, he asked if he thought that Yang could win this fight. Then he replied that in his opinion he lacks skills, but he also has a feeling that this will not hinder him. The day he told him that since Ian had ignored all his warnings, he would not help him. Now the guard didn't care whether he was alive or dead. And he said he wasn't going to help anymore. He began to walk away, and the guy just silently looked at the floor for a long time. But suddenly the guy said that he continues to come to fights because he wants to live, and there is no way he can escape. Then Cole stopped, he wanted to listen to what Yang had to say to him. Ian said that this is the only way out for him, because he grew up to endure difficulties and not run away from them. And so he will continue to endure, because this is all that remains for him. Yang was already in the ring and his opponent was warming up and cheering the crowd on. He asked them if they were ready to see how he would now destroy this student. The organizer was very excited as the fight was about to start any minute. Joe was almost late for this match because he couldn't find a place to park his Lamborghini. Opponent Yang has already started humming a song about how he will finally make good money today. The guy remembered the conversation of Cole, who asked about how long Yang could hold out in the same state as in the first battle. The guy at first he didn't understand what the man meant, but gradually he began to remember. Cole was talking about the one-minute furious attack he made during his first fight. He logically counted on this particular state, even though it sounded like a hopeless plan. But on the day he saw this attack, he realized that Yang was no longer acting using common sense. Therefore, he asked the guy if he could support him in this state for the entire match. The red-haired warrior approached the guy and said that no one wanted to fight with him out of fear, but he was lucky to stumble upon an idiot like Yang. Despite the fact that the attack during the first battle was not very strong, she had another strong point, it was great speed. The enormous speed and unpredictable timing did not allow for a second to answer. Therefore, Cole said that everything will be under control until Yang gives the opportunity to retaliate. And to do this you need to use all your energy, focus on the battle, and attack very quickly. You need to constantly remain alert, and at the same time analyze all the enemy's actions. Ian clearly understood the task and was not, as usual, subject to any emotions. He took a stance and thought only that he needed to let the enemy think that he could attack. You need to move as fast as physically possible for the young body. Cole looked at Yang with hope and waited for the start of the fight to understand how it would begin. The organizer was also interested, but he still expected Yang to lose completely. Joe also watched all this, he was most interested because he wanted to see the potential of the fighter. The bell struck, and at that very second the guy felt strength in himself and understood that he needed to attack. He made a very bold dash towards his opponent in order to deliver the first strike. It is obvious that the enemy will block this blow, given that it was not particularly strong. The red-haired warrior said that it was just a child's blow, and anyone could block such a blow. But then Ian carried out some combination, and already on the third blow he managed to strike once on the unprotected cheek. The blow was not particularly strong, but it was effective, since the enemy opened himself up to the blow. Another moment and Yang had already struck with all his strength his fist right at the warrior's nose. For a second the fighter lost his balance and was very surprised that everything turned out this way. But he couldn't lose focus on the battle, because what he saw next looked frightening. I struck as quickly as possible, and the red-haired fighter tried to block. At the same time, he shouted that he didn't feel anything and any brat would endure such blows. Yang understood that he needed to gather all his strength and gradually increase the force of the blow. He swung his leg to strike his opponent's open right side. At that moment, the red-haired warrior realized that this was his chance to counterattack. He swung his arms and tried to catch this leg in order to trap Yang. But at that moment the guy remembered that Cole told him not to allow the enemy to attack him. So he quickly removed his foot and kicked with the same foot, but in a slightly different place. After that, I began to move very quickly, and move my body very quickly in space. When he saw that the enemy was confused, he delivered a simple direct blow directly to the nose. He understood that he couldn't stop there, he had to beat until the moment when the enemy was on the verge of death. After that, he threw a very strong uppercut, and the red-haired warrior could not block it either. Then the enemy took a stance and tried to block everything, I understand that for now he will not be able to attack. 
But Yang still had some strength and overall looked pretty focused. All the people who watched the event could not understand where this fighter came from and who he was. The organizer noticed that Yana had grown very much to an extraordinary level. This was true, but Cole thought that all his victories were barely achieved. Therefore, he realized that most likely the guy did it on purpose. He stretched out the fights to learn his opponent's abilities, and to generally understand how fights worked. He just continued to endure, it was a very strange tactic, but thanks to it he grew. When the red-haired warrior tried to counterattack with his foot, I immediately hit his with my foot. Now he stood on one knee, since lifting the other one requires a huge amount of strength. I tried to strike with my hand, but at that moment the enemy decided to make a pass at the legs. In this situation, the main thing was not to panic, Ian realized that he still had time. He began to turn his body to the left as quickly as possible. When he turned around, the enemy was already almost at his feet, but by that time Yang was already standing with his back. It turned out that the guy was right on the back of his opponent. And from the weight of his body, the red-haired warrior fell face first into the ring. After that, he quickly stood up and tried to pick up where the enemy was. It turned out that the enemy was much closer than he thought. Yang began to deliver 1000 blows to his body at various points. Even when the warrior tried to attack, Yang still dodged and delivered his blows after a few seconds. After some time, he took the enemy's leg in his hand and in this way dropped him. At this moment, the enemy realized that he was in a very deplorable situation. Moreover, he noticed that Yang rather slowly raised his leg in order to hit with all his might with his heel. Such a blow could easily kill the red-haired warrior in a second, and he was aware of this. Literally at the last moment he rolled to the side so as not to die. He realized that he had taken too much damage, and now he could not get up at all. It seemed simply impossible to him, he was really exhausted, and realized that he had never hit Yang. The red-haired warrior really couldn't understand how this guy still had the strength to continue the attacks. The enemy was very scared, put his hand forward and asked the guy to wait. But despite this, Yang hit him in the face with his fist with all his might. The enemy began to fall, but for some time he still tried to stay on his feet. The organizer asked his friend if the guy had always been so good in battle. But then Cole said that not always, he has grown a lot because time passes, the guy does not get tired, and the movement becomes faster. It seemed to him that every second he was stepping onto a new level and becoming stronger. The fight reached its final point, the enemy was lying on the floor, and Ian was sitting on top of him. The red-haired warrior asked him to stop, because he understood that now he would begin to beat him with his fists. But Yang remembered the words Cole very clearly, and realized that this was not necessary. After all, then he told him not to stop until the very end, to go until victory. The organizer said that it looks like something is wrong with him, and he is not going to stop. Joe noticed that if this continues, the enemy may die. I began to beat the already immobilized body of the red-haired warrior with my fists, driving him into the ring. Cole stood up from his seat and ordered to stop the fight immediately. He realized that I had never gone this far before. It's strange what came over him. The managers began to run away and were given orders to stop Yang immediately. They ran into the ring and began to run closer and closer to the guy. But even at this moment he did not stop, and began to strike multiple blows at the enemy. He saw that the face of the red-haired warrior was already faintly human. And suddenly everything began to feel like a dream. It seemed to Yang that the body of the red-haired warrior seemed to be seeping into the water. It began to go deeper and deeper into her, and the guy himself felt that it was starting to float. He didn't understand what was happening, and why do all this in a regular ring. Within a moment, he was almost completely immersed in the water, along with the red-haired warrior. All the workers who offended him also found themselves underwater and quickly began to drown. A few moments later they were completely underwater, as was Ian himself. The guy didn't understand what was happening, but when he looked at the red-haired warrior he was even more surprised. In his place was a smaller copy of him, this is how he looked when he was a child. And when Yana turned his gaze and looked straight, he was even more frightened. After all, his father was in front of him, and it looks like he threw his hand and also beat someone. This was also a smaller copy of Yang, Yang and his father beat the children. Suddenly one of these clones asked if he would one day become the same monster as his father. I didn't understand how to answer this question, but I already relaxed my fist. This very thought came to him almost every day as a child. This was the thought that always came when Ian was trembling at home in the dark. He was afraid of turning into his father, 
and swore that he would do everything to prevent this from happening. Boss one day asked him why I worked so hard. It bothered him that the guy worked until dawn, and assumed that this was a personal matter. Then he wondered why I was pushing myself like this, because obviously I couldn't last that long. That day, Ian thought and looked out the window, but after a few seconds he already had the answer. The guy said that it was all because he was simply scared. He didn't share why exactly he was scared, so it didn't answer the boss's question. Ian could have just run away, then everything seemed quite simpler than it seems now. After all, he could simply leave this place, but there was still one problem. It was that both now and then in his youth he is the same person. And he entered the apartment again as if it was natural and as if he was not afraid. But obviously this was not the case, and Ian did it, despite the fact that he really didn't want to. And when the door closed, real chaos began to occur in the apartment. If you repeat the same action over and over again in the hope of a change, then you will go crazy, and before that, addiction will arise. It's the same for the people who do it and the people who get it. Accustomed to violence since childhood, Yang's thoughts about escape gradually disappeared. Well, during particularly difficult times, he didn't even have the opportunity to escape. His father often tied him to the sink and radiators in their apartment. However, Yang was raised this way and was forced to adapt. Little Yana told his father that everything was in order, and he could hit, because the die had been cast. Then his father grabbed him by the hair and began to take him somewhere. Doors appeared right under the water, and the father brought his little son straight to them. Having come close enough, he opened these doors and threw his son inside like a sack of potatoes. Ian couldn't just look at it, he felt that it shouldn't be like this. At the same time, he felt that dozens of hands appeared behind him and wanted to stop him. These hands held him very tightly and did not let him go, not letting him closer to the doors. They did not touch only little Ian, who looked at these doors with interest. As an adult, I thought that he didn't want to do this anymore, he didn't want to continue like this anymore. He looked at his small version and noticed that it gradually began to disappear. Just a few seconds later, the image of him as a child completely disappeared. The reason why Janu has held back until now is that he wanted to learn how to live. And it looks like the perfect time has come to get your life back. He escaped from the hands that I held him, despite the fact that they tore his flesh with sharp claws. But he gathered all his strength and realized that now he needed to make a breakthrough. He gathered all his strength into a fist and prepared to make a very important decision. Now Yang has caught up, and his strength is greater than ever. He instantly rushed through all the people who had been holding him all this time and ran towards the doors. He had only one goal, and he saw it very clearly. These doors were washed by the ocean and became closer and closer for the guy. When he knocked down these doors, I saw that the father leaned over his son and prepared to beat him. He came even closer, and then the father noticed that something was wrong. He turned around to see who was behind him, but it was too late for him. Yana immediately hit him with his hand, and grabbed him with the other and threw him to the floor. He held him near the floor and started hitting him. Then there was a thought in his head that came to his mind when he was little. Will he ever become the same monster as his father? He thought about this while driving his head into the tile. Blood began to flow from his hands, but it was not Yang's own blood. The question was still open, would he become free if he simply killed the monster? He looked at a version of himself at a very young age, and many things became clear to him. He extended his hand to this boy, as if inviting him to walk with him. At first the boy was very scared, but after a few moments he pulled out his hand. Another moment and the little boy's hand was already in Yang's. Feeling at peace, Ian began to lead him out of this terrible room. When he opened the doors, a very bright light emitted from there, and this made Ian squint. But little Yang's eyes were even more unadapted, and he looked with interest at a bright future. At the same time, adult Yang left the ring and purposefully walked somewhere. Everyone who watched this fight looked in horror at how the guy moved. His legs were bleeding, and he very slowly began to approach the organizer. When he got close enough, he suddenly stopped and stopped moving. He first looked at Cole for a while, and then turned his gaze to the organizer as he wanted to say something. Ian told him that he wanted to quit the game because he no longer had a reason to make money. Now he wanted to live his life. The spectators began to scatter in different directions, since Yang had just brutally killed all the workers, and his rival. After some time, people came to that very place who very often watched the fights. One of them was not sure that I was a newcomer, because he, like a monster, appeared in the ring and inflicted injuries on everyone who approached him. Even the organizers were not prepared for this, 
and at this moment it was not clear whether anyone survived. After all, everyone was in intensive care. One of the men said that he was worried here, so he suggested leaving. Joe, meanwhile, was sitting on one of the benches, and seemed to be quite pleased. He was thinking about something of his own and just staring at a point on the ceiling. He noticed that for a very long time nothing inspired him as much as now. There was not a drop of fear or doubt in this man, and he realized that he would like to look at this again. At that moment, Joe realized that he had found a toy that he really wanted, and this toy's name was Ian. Meanwhile, the organizer talked to Young in the corridor and said that the guy needs to take responsibility for all this. But then the guy said that he just had to return this bag, and that's where his responsibilities ended. Then the organizer said that this issue cannot be solved with money, because Ian doesn't even imagine how terrible people the organizers of this match are. He started screaming and saying that he was now much more scared than Ian, after all, it was he who brought him here. Well then the guy replied that it was absolutely none of his business, and he shouldn't worry about it. The organizer was very surprised when he heard this, he thought that after all this time Ian had already become very accustomed to him. So he asked Young if he had always been so insensitive and inhumane. The guy replied that the organizer shouldn't have seen the guy as a child, and even a child who brings in money. People thought that Ian was crazy when he followed the lead of the organizer. Apparently he began to feel like he would do anything. Their agreement concerned only the financial issue, so now Young and the organizer had nothing to discuss. After he said this, the guy began to walk away with his bag. Cole smiled, and the organizers could not believe that this freak was leaving to do all this. It was already very late, but despite this the guy was in a positive mood and was heading home. Everything was very poorly lit and it felt very safe to me, but I had to go anyway. Suddenly, one of those collectors said that their target had already left, and ordered his partner to get ready. The collector also noticed that Yang had a bag in her hands, which he had previously carried for money. This means that it is obvious that the money he earned today is in this very bag. They quickly got on their mopeds and started starting them in order to go towards Yen. Meanwhile, the guy was walking along the road and suddenly saw something shining on him from behind with bright headlights. When he turned around, he saw that someone had approached him, but his eyes were blinded and it was not clear who it was. It turns out it was a man who was sitting in a red expensive car, and Joe greeted Jan. Ian asked who this man was, and he quickly came up with an answer to this question. Then Joe replied that he was just one of the spectators of Yang's match, and he would like to talk to him a little. Well then the guy continued walking and said that he would never participate in fights again. Joe was very upset and asked why this happened, because it is obvious that Ian needs money. The guy replied that he no longer needed them, because the bag he was carrying with him would be plenty. For some time, Joe was still sitting in the car and did not know what to do with himself. Why did he turn off the headlights, and because of this it became completely dark outside. Joe was very annoyed with the way things were turning out for him, and he didn't like it. Do you really have to follow Yang, because you can't just let him go like that? But suddenly Joe noticed that someone began to drive up behind his car. It was several mopeds, and they rushed past his car at high speed along a dark street. Then they came at a very close distance to Yang, and at the same time they snatched the bag that he was carrying in his hands. The guy didn't even have time to understand what had just happened, but the motorcyclists were already driving away. He just looked after them and watched silently for a while. Joe was trying to understand what all this was about now, and how to react to it. Well, what he understood for sure was that he had a second chance. He moved a little closer to the guy, because he realized that this was his chance to seem like a hero. Joe asked Jan if he wanted him to catch them right now. He also asked to hurry up with the decision, because then it would be too late. Then the guy asked Joe to catch up with them, and even used the word please. Then Joe buckled up, smiled and said that in that case the conversation would be moved to a little later. After that, the sports car quickly took off, and Ian remained standing in his place. He didn't know what to think in such a situation, because all he could do was stand here and think. Meanwhile, two mopeds have already gone quite far. The collector said that it was even easier than he initially expected. But suddenly he heard that behind him some object was very quickly approaching closer and closer. And when he turned his head he saw a Lamborghini that was moving at almost full speed a centimeter away from him. At that time, it was not clear to the collector why this car was pressing so close to him. Well, they continued moving further until the car window began to open. It opened rather slowly, 
but at that moment the collector was already looking in that direction. A moment later, from this window, the collector saw a pistol with a silencer screwed onto it. He was seriously surprised when he saw this, and immediately decided to start slowing down in order to increase the distance. Several not particularly loud shots were fired that hit the motorcycle and did not hit the driver. Because of this, the motorcycle skidded and the driver lost control. A few more seconds and the driver is already flying away from the motorcycle and flying several meters along the asphalt. The man who was riding a motorcycle with his friend quickly began to leave the scene of the accident. Meanwhile, Joe stopped her Lamborghini right next to the body of one of the collectors with a bag. He realized that in this case he had a clear plan, first he needed to turn on the emergency lights. After that, just be sure to take out your phone so that the truck driver behind you can see it. And after that you need to pretend that he is talking to someone on the phone. This means that the truck driver will think that this is a standard accident and he can take care of the situation himself. And so it happened, the truck driver drove past and began to move away in a long tunnel. Joe told the collector that everyone is busy with their own lives and there is no reason why they should think about others. He went up to the collector and took it by the helmet in order to stretch it some distance from the road. After he pulled it a few meters, he threw it against a stone, and now the sewer was not visible from the road. The man immediately began to take off his helmet because he wanted to talk to the one who created all this commotion. First he asked who it was and opened one class to try to identify it. But all he saw was just the barrel of a pistol, which a moment later was enveloped in flames. The bullet missed his head a centimeter and miraculously missed him. After the shot, Joe asked the man if he was still interested in knowing about it. By this time, the collector's comrade had already gotten closer and drew his knife. Then Joe asked the collector to throw this bag at his feet. He reassured the collector and said that all this was only because he needed a bag, after which he asked why they stole the money. The collector said that it was his money, because the owner of this bag owed him a lot. Then Joe said that this was a lie because Ian looked too young and was unlikely to be able to borrow so much. Then the collector said that his father did this, and his son is paying for it even without his father knowing it. This really surprised Joe, he was generally interested in learning new things about the guy. He said that in this case, things are a little different, and now he must find a way to attract Yang to him. Because he's still not sure about that guy, that's why he wants to observe a little more. But now everything has become obvious and his father's debts are not something the guy has to deal with. Ian also said that he is no longer going to take part in matches because this money is enough for him. But Joe wants something completely different, he would like to see him in battle at least once more. Joe poured all the money out of the bag and said that Ian said that this much money would be enough for him. But he can give him much more than is now in this bag. At the same time as he said this, Joe took out a lighter and for a while just looked at the huge mountain of money. The collector who was carrying this bag just a few minutes ago was surprised and did not understand what Joe wanted to do. After another moment, the lighter began to emit flames, and Joe brought one of the bills to him. He said that he needed a little time to influence Yang just a little. And so he will try to get this guy to fight again. Burning all the rest of the money, Joe said that he could do it, since Ian did not have enough money. When Joe returned to the guy, he immediately said that he was very sorry that the thieves were able to escape. Ian was devastated, and said that it was good that Joe was not injured, and he would write a statement to the police soon. Then Joe said that it looks like this money started a lot of things for Jan, and this situation seems very unfair. The guy said that he was not surprised, since this is not the first time that money has simply left him. After this, Ian asked what Joe wanted to talk to him about when they first met along the road. The man said that he heard that Yang was banned from entering the ring, but he could help with something. This interested the guy, despite the fact that the whole situation looked rather suspicious. Joe began to pull something out of the inside pocket of his jacket and said that he would help Yang get back into the ring. After all, you never know for sure what might happen, and apparently Jan needs money. So if the guy changes his mind, Joe asked him to call the number on the card. At that moment, deja vu arose in Yana's head, because the organizer with whom he had communicated before behaved the same way. He took the card and said that he would call if he changed his mind about the fights. Joe said that he was glad to hear this, and smiling also added that then he would be the first to leave. Ian noticed this satisfied smile, and Joe said that he was really looking forward to the next meeting. Within seconds, he got into his sports car and began to drive away to his home. Now Ian was left alone in the middle of the night, sitting on a bench and looking at that map. For some time he simply looked at her silently, 
but then he finally made a decision. He first tore this card into two parts, and felt that after that he felt better. Another moment and he tore the remaining parts into even more pieces. After that, he threw them on the floor and realized that it was time to return home. When he came home the next morning, his father was already there, and he had a severe headache. He asked his son if he had given the money to those collectors. Because I did not answer for some time, my father stood up to repeat this question over and over again. After that, he asked his son how much money he had now, and if he could lend some to his dad. But Ian replied that at the moment he did not have a penny, and the thieves stole absolutely all his money. Then the father said that it couldn't be, because his son really gave absolutely all the money. Now everything became clear for the guy, now he saw his father through and saw his intention. Then this man said that these are difficult times, so he needs to borrow some money. He began to put pressure on pity, saying that the family was going through hard times, and that he was tired of paying for insurance for food and apartment maintenance. Yang wanted to trust his father at least a little, even though it was quite problematic. He remembered the dialogue with C, and the moment when she asked why there was no one at his home. Then the guy replied that he lives with his father who doesn't come home very often. Dad didn't contact him for several days. He didn't even know that his son was in the hospital. Before going to the fights, Ian went to the registry office to find out some information about his father. He said on the phone that he was discharged today, so he is calling to see if the bill can be covered by insurance. The voice on the phone said that it seemed like I didn't know that his father gave up his family insurance two years ago. Although he told Ian that he was paying for insurance, and the guy could not find any reason to do this. Then the guy remembered his dialogue with the collector, when the man said that his father lost 16 million won that time. And when asked where Yang got the money, the guy then replied that he just works very hard. And after this phrase, he got ready to leave, and promised the man that he would return the money soon. Of course, the collector was also surprised how a schoolboy could bring in so much money in such a period. Well, the guy just told him not to come to their house anymore, and promised that he would soon give the entire amount. And in fact, when Ian was leaving, the man also told him that, as he heard, his father again borrowed money from someone. Moreover, he knew the amount, this time the father lent 10 million won. And this only meant that now Yang had even more problems, and it seems they are not going to end. When the guy had almost closed the door, the collector told the guy to behave well, because he was being watched. Most of all, Ian was offended by the fact that my father told him about my problems. He didn't know that he was receiving money, if he borrowed from someone else again, it couldn't be that he didn't have enough money to live on. Then suddenly a message arrived on his father's phone, and Yang immediately drew attention to it. When he lowered his head, he saw a message that did not reassure him at all. It was written there that the service was waiting for a review for a vacation that was paid for not so long ago. The father immediately took his phone and hastily began to hide it. It was clear from him that he was very panicky, and did not want Ian to see what was written there. The guy became embittered, all this time he trusted his father and thought that he had begun to change. I realized that all this time I had been weak, and succumbed to the most ordinary emotions. Then the father's voice became even more rude, and he once again asked his son if he had money so that he could borrow it. But the guy looked calm and said that he didn't have a penny. Then the father hit the table, and from this blow almost all the bowls and plates that were standing on it spilled over. The father said that now he no longer knows what to do with his son. All the food that was in these bowls also crumbled. But the guy again began to ignore it, and eat food even that had already spilled on the table. He simply picked it up with his chopsticks and continued eating. In general, everything looked as if nothing had happened and nothing needed to be fixed. And this infuriated my father even more, it's good that he didn't see the guy eating from the table. Ian realized that he just needed to wait a little longer, because this was not the first time for him to do this. He decided to leave this place, and then from that moment on his father would not have to behave like this. But the next day when he left the house everything started as usual. When he left home, his father was already drunk and lying on the floor from alcohol intoxication. Going outside, he took out a statement to see if he had any savings. When he looked at her, he was slightly glad that he had at least some savings. Perhaps this is enough to live alone, but obviously you first need to find a part-time job. When he typed into his phone looking for one-room apartments, he was unpleasantly surprised at the prices that seemed to him. At that moment, Ian realized that there were still a huge number of things that he did not know. He had never been interested in something like this, and moreover, 
he had no one to tell about all this. Also on some forums, people often wrote that they recommend renting an apartment with someone. Ian thought about this, because living not alone would be cheaper in any situation. But no one came to mind, because in his entire life he had never built close people around him. But suddenly he heard someone's voice, which was obviously already addressed to him. It was Si Yoon, and she approached the guy from behind and asked if it was him. After that, she asked if the guy was going to uni, and then asked again why he didn't want to all this time. The guy was silent for some time, but not because he didn't know what to answer, he was just thinking about the plan further. The girl didn't know this, and said that if Yang didn't tell her her name now, she would be furious. The guy said that the girl's name was Si Yoon, but after that he said absolutely nothing. He was silent for a while. He asked the girl what she was doing after uni, because he had one proposal. He asked the girl if she wanted to rent an apartment together. Si Yoon, to put it mildly, was surprised to hear this from a guy with whom she had hardly communicated lately. The action moved to one of the audiences, which was located inside the university. The teacher said that today's lecture was coming to an end and everyone could leave. Hannah asked her friend if she was busy today, because she really wanted to go to the cinema together. Si Eun was very nervous at first, and then said that unfortunately she had plans. Hannah was upset, but after a few seconds she asked who she had plans with. It was noticeable that she was completely unable to answer this question for some time. Then Hannah concluded that the girl was trying to hide something, perhaps that she had a boyfriend. At this moment, she recalled her conversation with Yang before they entered the university. Then the guy said that there was no need to tell anyone about this, because it was unnecessary. Then she asked him why the guy hides so many things so often. And he replied that there was no point in getting more people involved in this topic. At first, Si Yoon simply looked at the guy suspiciously, but on the whole she agreed with these words. They continued walking and the girl said that if she went with someone, then she would not be able to go with the guy to look for an apartment. Standing in front of Hannah, the girl sighed, as she had to quickly come up with an excuse. She said that everything was completely wrong and she needed to meet her friend. Hannah was ready to believe it, but suddenly Ian appeared in front of them. He looked at the girl and said that it was time for them to go. Si Eun couldn't believe that he would invite her just like that, and Hannah, in turn, was very surprised. Yana asked if everything was okay, and said that the girl herself said that they would go together. Everyone started screaming, reminding her that she said that if they meet, it won't be here when everyone is nearby. Then I tilted my head and realized what the girl had meant all this time. All her friends were here, as well as Hansu Park, and they wanted to say hello to the guy. The guy said that he didn't even know that they were all here, this phrase made the girl very angry. Hansu said that he and Yang had not seen each other for a long time, and the girl asked if he had any plans. At that moment, Hannah thought that she and she were having a secret date, and was offended that the girl didn't say anything about it. Si Eun said that everything is completely wrong, and the whole problem is in the guy's apartment. But then she turned her gaze to Yang and expected that he would somehow protect her. But instead, the guy just looked at her silently and didn't know what to answer. The girl also didn't know how to continue this legend, so she decided to take action. She grabbed the guy's hand with all her strength and began to drag him somewhere. C said that it was time for them to go, and the guy obediently followed her. Hannah couldn't believe that she and Yang had already come this far, and Hansu also assumed that there was something between them. The girl was still angry on the street and said that Ian had to explain everything to her friends later. The guy couldn't understand what they could possibly get wrong, because everything was obvious. Then Si Eun got even angrier and said that they would all think that they were dating. Yang and the girl were silent for a while and just looked at each other like that for a few seconds. Then the girl quickened her pace and said that this should be discussed later. They went straight to the real estate agency, and a pretty woman received them. She smiled constantly, and also made the assumption that Yang and she were newlyweds. The girl was slightly unpleasant to hear this, and she was waiting for me to answer something. She asked the guy to explain everything, and turned her head in his direction. Yang, in turn, asked if there was a discount for newlyweds. Si Eun said what kind of questions are these, and that's not what she meant at all when she told Yang to say something. The agency worker said that as Ian, a student, they have many places to offer. The girl asked if she could visit them right now, and the worker answered positively. When the girl looked around the apartment, she was generally pleased with its location. She also noticed that it was a little cramped, but quite clean and cheap to maintain. But still, 
It was not ideal, so she asked to look at other apartments as well. The worker asked if they wanted to move in immediately. In this case, you need to discuss the date of drawing up the contract and depositing the money. After that, she notified that whoever signs the contract first will be the owner of the apartment. Ian was about to say something about payment, but the girl said that they should bring the money directly to the owner. Then the agency worker began to panic a little and said that the owner was working now and could not be contacted. Everyone knew how to behave in these situations and said that they would wait a little, since they were renting an apartment for the first time. The day passed very quickly, and Ian and the girl examined quite a large number of apartments. When they left the agency, the girl asked him to remember the day the contract was concluded and to invite her with him. Moreover, she reminded me to check whether it is possible to get insurance for the deposit if suddenly it is not returned. And at the end she added that health insurance would not be included there, so I would need to quickly find a job. After that, the guy asked how he knew everything about how to rent an apartment. The girl replied that she had to learn this after graduating from school, although she decided to stay with her parents for now. Why did she say that they were worth wasting time, because now you can continue walking? For some time, Yang still stood in place, but then he still followed the girl. While they were walking, the guy always felt that she wanted to tell him something. That was until she stopped, then Yang had to stop and look at her too. Si Eun said that she helped the guy with a lot and asked him to take her to dinner. The guy said that he agreed and was ready to buy them both dinner. Just as he wanted to ask if she knew some place, the girl already ran in some direction. She ran into one of the restaurants and said that they needed a table for two right now. Yang was surprised by this, but did not visually show this feeling in any way. Instead, the guy just walked inside. By that time, the girl was already sitting at the table. The waitress said that she would recommend set B for couples, since there is a discount on it. The girl said that she was very hungry, and when the food was brought, she immediately began to eat. A few minutes later, she asked the guy how he liked it here, since she had long wanted to visit this place. Yana said that the food was very tasty, but overall his review was terse. Coming out of here it was already dark, and Si Yoon said that it was excellent and she felt good. After that, she asked if the guy drinks coffee, because she also wants to go to a coffee shop where she will pay. The guy agreed and within a few minutes they were near a fairly large coffee shop. There was a lot of outdoor space, and the weather allowed us to relax there. Overall there were quite a lot of people enjoying the atmosphere and mountain view from this coffee shop. While drinking coffee, Si Eun said that it's funny that everyone thinks they are a couple. She especially liked how surprised she was when Auntie from the agency suggested that they were newlyweds. Well, the guy didn't answer, the girl turned her head in his direction and Ian just looked at the floor. She asked him why he constantly withdraws into himself like this. But the guy couldn't answer anything intelligibly, and said that this just happens often. He also added that he was simply pleased to use the money he earned. The girl remained silent after hearing this, and also added that Yang's joy was rather strange. And then she decided that she needed to somehow correct such a tense situation, for example with a joke. She said that then she would go for the coffee, and the guy would pay for it with his own money. I didn't quite understand what she meant, and I still looked at the floor with a stony face. Si Eun laughed and said that she was joking, and the payment would remain on her. The guy turned his head towards her, and was even more confused when he heard this joke. Then he turned his head back and felt a little awkward because he didn't understand at first. The girl said that now it's clear why Ian is always busy, he's been saving a lot of money all this time. She also added that you need to rest sometimes, because after some time the guy will not be able to withstand this every day. There was an awkward pause, and Ian realized that he needed to somehow continue the dialogue. He said that they would also spend the evening together and when they sign a contract together. Si Eun said that maybe it would be like that and asked why he was saying that. Ian said he liked it. The girl was a little confused and looked at the emotion on the guy's face. And when she saw her it brought a small smile to her own face. She also said that if you think about it, she also really likes spending time with Yang. For the first time in a long time, Ian smiled again. At this moment, he felt good next to Si Eun. Song Jo spent the time sitting at home and constantly updating his phone. Even though he gave his business card a few days ago, Yang still didn't call him. And instead of putting pressure on him, the collectors became completely silent and stopped approaching him. Hyung Nim, that was the name of one of the collectors, said that he was very surprised when that guy had a gun. A real pistol, 
he didn't understand who he was and what his position was since he always traveled with a weapon. Moreover, he had such a look as if he didn't care who he killed. The two men could not understand who the boy was if he was protected by such an important person. The two of them decided not to approach him even a meter, but simply watch from the side. Meanwhile, workers who worked for the organization that organized the battles stood near the entrance to one of the apartments. One rather pumped up man beat up the organizer and said that he doesn't like stupid brats. He also added that last year there was already a similar bastard, and because of him he suffered a lot of losses. He took a photo of the broken organizer to set an example for others. After that, he ordered his servants to send this photo to all the players and tell them what would happen to them. Then he got up from his chair and said that now he has another goal. His next target was the guy himself, and it looked like he wasn't ready to wait. They, together with the employees of that same organization, began to leave the apartment, leaving the organizer alone. Having gathered all his strength, the organizer took out the phone from his pocket to call someone. It was very difficult to move his fingers, but nevertheless he reached one of the contacts. The beeps began and he heard a painfully familiar voice on his phone. In a hoarse voice, he greeted us and said that he had news. He addressed the man, calling him Pak Wan Cho. And then he asked to find Yang and tell him to run away, since he was in very great danger. Meanwhile, a group of friends left the university, and everyone suspected that they were dating. Hannah was the most upset because it looked like Si Eun was on a secret date. But the girl said that everything was wrong, and waited for Yang to answer something to this. The guy said that he was looking for housing, but since he understands little about this, he decided to look at the apartment together. It sounded very plausible, and Si Eun said that it still exists. Well, why did she turn and quietly say that he wanted to keep all this a secret? Then the guy said that he just wanted to help because the girl was very tense because of her friend's suspicions. Hannah just perked up when she heard this, and overall looked quite happy. After that, she suggested going to lunch since her stomach was already growling from hunger. But suddenly everyone around heard the very good sound of an expensive car. Hans Puck was the first to turn around, because he knew that only a Lamborghini could make such a sound. Joe's head came out of the Lamborghini, and he said that he was worried because Yana still hadn't called him. For some time everyone was simply silent, because they could not believe that a person from such an expensive car would talk to a guy. Moreover, all the students who studied at this university could not believe that someone was talking to one of the students. Hans was pleasantly surprised after Joe offered him a ride in his car. But Joe said they could ride around since they were all Jan's friends. Hans's voice began to shake and he said that he was very afraid, so he would just look at the car. He and his girlfriend began to run to her and talk about how he had always dreamed of sitting in a sports car. Then Joe said that if he had known that my friends loved cars, he would have bought some newer one. Hannah immediately noticed that Joe seemed famous, since he was so rich and looked so good. But she tried to remove these thoughts, since she was still in love with Yang. But just one look at this guy was enough to start doubting. And indeed today he looked simply amazing, if you also take into account his clothes. Hannah constantly thought that perhaps her childhood dream, namely the creation of a fan club, would soon come true. But she understood that she needed to come to her senses, since she had long ago promised herself no more fan clubs. But still, looking at this guy, she couldn't get this thought out of her head. Especially when Joe said that Ian's friends look pretty nice. Hannah almost fainted when she heard this handsome guy say she was cute. This was visible visually, and she could no longer stand in this place any longer. She took Si Yoon's hand and said that they need to quickly move to the car. Now I was left alone with Joe, who for some reason was constantly smiling. The guy immediately asked how Joe found him, because they only met once. Then Joe said that although he could find any information, he would like to meet his father. I immediately asked you why he would do this, because my father has nothing to do with fights. Joe said that he contacted his father to give him an interest-free loan. And he immediately agreed. So we need to meet. Ian asked where Joe got his father's contacts, and he only replied that he had his own informants. The guy was a little scared, because he didn't understand what kind of person he was and what he was trying to achieve. Joe asked not to look at him. So, he just wants to make friends with Jan. He smiled even more and said that he wanted to do this at any cost. Hansu, who was driving the car, was very impressed that Yang had such acquaintances. His friend noticed that this guy spoke as if he knew everyone Ian knew. Joe looked very rich, and Hans also concluded that he was much older than them. 
but most of all he was interested in who he worked to earn that kind of money. Hannah, who also came up to the car, said that perhaps he was the son of a chabel, and was immediately born a prince. Well, the second friend of Hans said that it seems that this guy is not worried about money at all. Meanwhile, Si Yun watched Yang's conversation with Zhou and felt slightly uneasy. For some reason she felt uneasy when she looked at it, despite the fact that visually the dialogue looked quite friendly. Evening came, and the father of the family, drunk as always, went home. He felt just fine, and up to this point he had already drunk a huge amount of alcohol. When he approached the apartment, he began to enter the code slowly in order to get inside. But when he entered the code once, it gave an error. The father understood that he was drunk now, so he began to enter the code again. This time the panel was already glowing red, and he no longer understood why the cat was not coming. He got very angry and started shouting at the entire entrance. The father asked if Ian was at home and ordered him to open the door immediately. After 20 seconds of these screams, the light on the castle's dashboard turned green. After that, the doors opened on their own, and the father stopped being so angry. Going inside, he asked why Ian took so long to open those damn doors. But when he opened his eyes, he did not see his son there, but someone more terrible. There was that member of the organization, he had brass knuckles on his fist, and he told father that he seemed tired of living. At first, the father didn't even understand who was standing in front of him, but this man looked very menacing. He tried to identify who it was for some time, but he still couldn't figure it out. The assumption came into his head that these were the same moneylenders, and he didn't even think that they could come home like that. At first he stepped back a little from the man with brass knuckles, but at the same time he still looked into his eyes. After that, he turned sharply and began to run away, in his head there was the thought that this was the only way to survive. But suddenly that man grabbed him by the hair and began to pull him towards him. The father began to make excuses and shout that he should wait a little. He also said that if he is given a little more time, he will definitely pay off all his debts. That man asked him to shut up several times, but when his father didn't, he hit him on the cheek with all his might. When the father fell to the floor, the man asked his subordinates if this was what Yang looked like. But they told him that Yana is much younger, and judging by the information, two people live here. Then the man understood everything and said that the man who destroyed the stadium cannot be such a weakling. And if you look at this man, you can see that his appearance alone shows how pathetic he is. Ian, meanwhile, was walking to his home and with Joe. He told him that he was confident that he gave him his business card, and asked why Yana never called. Joe also said that it is obvious that I need help, and that if my father does not return the money, the loan sharks will persecute him. After this phrase I stopped, because I realized that I needed to clarify something. He said that apart from everything else, he never said that he borrowed the money. Well then, Joe just said that there could no longer be any reason to work multiple jobs at that age. The guy said that since Joe knows so much, he should also know the reason why he left fighting. Then Ian asked why Joe, knowing the reason, still wants him to continue fighting and making money. After all, now that the guy has realized everything, namely that the duty is not his at all, he no longer wants to continue doing this. After that, he turned around and began to walk away at an even faster pace. Joe stood still for some time to think about his next phrase. He said that the reason is that the same fight Yang is very suitable. And moreover, Joe said that he was simply sure that the guy was eager for such fights. Ian stopped again because he wanted to ask Joe something. He asked what kind of fights this man thought he wanted. What he said was that, in his opinion, Ian wants a fight in which he can legally kill. At this moment, Yang simply remained silent, he looked into the eyes of his interlocutor and did not know what to answer. He decided to ask again and asked Joe if he really thought that Ian wanted to kill. At that moment, Ian decided that this was a real crazy person. And at that second he was sure of it, especially after he saw his reaction to his phrase. Joe laughed constantly and generally acted crazy. The man then said that during that fight, Yang laughed quite sincerely. He also added that during that fight the guy knocked out all the employees who tried to stop him. And after that he began to beat the enemy until he lost his breath. Joe said that while he was doing this, he laughed a crazy laugh the whole time. And so he was wondering if I could fight like a zombie, because he was sure that the guy was hiding it. But as soon as he witnessed this fight, Joe realized that there were more suitable battles for the guy. That day, he really wanted to see how the guy fought to the end, and what he would do after the death of his opponent. 
But suddenly the unforeseen happened, which made Joe very angry. Suddenly the guy came to his senses and stopped smiling and slamming his opponent into the floor. Ian told Joe to be an idiot because he couldn't laugh in that state. The man replied that this is how people are made, but I don't know what they really are like until someone shows them. After all, he had already seen something like this before. It seemed that Joe was talking about a warrior with red hair at that moment. He also added that he had already achieved what he wanted in his life, and now he has other goals. He said that if he wants something, he will do absolutely everything to get to the end. At the same time, he extended his hand to Yang's face and said that I need to let this talent go to waste. At that same second, the guy threw back Joe's hand and silently looked into his eyes. After that, he said that he would stop talking nonsense, and added that he was not going to continue to participate in battles and asked to stop following him. Joe didn't answer, and at that moment Ian turned around and began to walk away in the opposite direction. His step was quite fast, and Joe at that moment decided that it was not worth following him after there. A few tens of minutes later the guy had already reached his home, and thought that Joe was very strange and suspicious. Moreover, he wondered what he should do if he showed up in his life again. Well, you can calmly think about this before going to bed, because first you just need to go home. When he raised his hand to press the code, he felt someone's presence. Suddenly, a very pumped up hand grabbed his arm, and Yang's attention got used to it. The guy turned his head and saw a familiar face in front of him. It was Cole, and he said that the guy was in danger and he needed to run away now. Ian didn't understand anything, but suddenly he heard someone start running inside his apartment. A moment later that pumped up man knocked down the doors near which Ian was standing. He looked the guy in the eyes and said that he thought that Ian would look something like this. But he also saw that the guy was not himself, so he turned his gaze to the man next to him. Looking at Cole, he asked who he was and what he forgot. For a while he just looked at him and thought about how best to introduce himself. But after a moment, he hit this big guy with his fist with all his strength, so that he almost fell. This blow was very strong, and it seemed that the opponent lost consciousness for a while. Then Cole grabbed Yang by the straps of his backpack and began to pull him along. He said that we need to run away now because the guy is in real danger. When they hit the street, Yang asked what that just happened, and Cole replied that first he needed to break away. He began to explain that these were the owners of the stadium and they came to take revenge on Yang for that fight. Cole didn't even notice how the black car began to approach him at high speed. Literally a second later, this car hit the guy at full speed, and he flew several meters forward. She immediately stopped right in front of Yang, who I focused my attention on the coal lying on the floor. He also turned his head because he felt that someone was running towards him from a different direction. At the last second before closing his eyes, he saw that pumped up member of the organization running towards him. He kicked Yang with his shoulder, and because of this, he flew into the car at high speed. Within a second, Cho began to get up, and almost all the members of the organization were already inside the car. A few more seconds and the black tinted car began to drive away, and Cole was just trying to get to his feet. The car had long since left the city, and no one was following them. So the task was completed. The driver of this car was also one of the organization's employees, and he kept a close eye on the road. Two other workers held my hand so that he could not move. The pumped up man asked the guy what he was thinking when he destroyed the arena with his own hands. Well, after an awkward pause, he asked if it was really him, because he looked like just a brat. But the guy didn't answer anything, because he was trying to think about what this man was talking about. He tried to remember the last words he heard from Chiol. While running, he said that these were the owners of the arena, and they went to take revenge on Yang. This means that he is the one who organizes the fights, and it seems that he was kidnapped in order to take revenge. He also remembered the words of Chiol quite a long time ago, when he said that at first everyone joins for the money, but then they realize that it's not worth it. Then he said that there are a lot of bastards here, and even more so if I'm an ordinary student, then I need to run as far as possible. Ian did not understand that now it would not happen, because he was in full possession of this owner of the organization. This man was very angry that the guy did not answer anything. Therefore, as a precaution, he hit him with his hand on his left cheek. Why did he say whether he listens to him at all, and said that I don't even understand how many matches had to be cancelled because of that prank. But now they contacted him and wanted to buy Yang after seeing how he circled the entire arena. This means that the guy will be stuck there and will fight until he loses his pulse until he dies. But before that, 
he said that Yana should receive punishment for everything he did. He put the brass knuckles on his hand and began to strike the guy multiple times. Ian realized that he needed to come up with ways to get out of this car. After all, he understood that it was very dangerous for him to go to an unknown place. The man began to strike one blow after another on the guy's body, and after some time he felt that I had completely stopped moving and showing signs of life. He asked his charges why Yang didn't even bat an eyelid. The man had the feeling that he was simply punching someone's abs. But nevertheless, something was wrong, and this action felt very strange. He asked one of his wards to check the condition of this guy, because he had a suspicion. When this ward touched his hand, he felt that Yang's pulse completely disappeared. The man screamed and ordered his ward to stop lying, because he definitely would not allow this. Suddenly a pulse appeared, and then the ward notified the boss about it. But he also said that the pulse was very weak and slow, adding that it seemed dangerous. And judging by his condition, he will no longer survive the next blow and will die in the car. The man started shouting that it was impossible for him to die, and ordered to visit him and bring him to his senses. In fact, Yang decided to pretend to be dead and stop breathing to turn off all body functions. And thanks to this, he may be able to free himself, since all his charges will be weaker in their hold on him. To do this, he will need to wake up his body at the right moment in order to escape. But I had to think, because the plan is still imperfect and could crumble. Ian was very tense, thinking about how to immobilize everyone and escape from this car. He looked at the driver and realized that he was the most important member of the organization who was now in this car. At the moment of awakening, Ian decided to concentrate as much as possible. It was necessary to tense up and do it as hard as the guy could. Suddenly, one of the wards noticed that the guy's hand was very tense and veins could be seen. Another moment and the guy pushed away from the seat he was sitting on and moved to the front of the car. He immediately grabbed the steering wheel, and everyone who was inside didn't even understand what happened. After he grabbed it, he turned it to the right with all his might, holding the driver parallel. Because of this, the car began to drive, and she turned sharply in one direction. At the same time, Ian moved closer to the driver's side to reach the handle. Yang focused his vision on the door to quickly identify it. He stuck one of his fingers into the handle and tried to pull it with all his might. This action was quite difficult due to the fact that in parallel with this the machine was moving very chaotically. But still, the guy managed to open the doors, and he flew out of the car at high speed. The car, in turn, crashed into a bump stop that was on the edge of the road and, by inertia, began to fly up. She flew up at a distance of a couple of meters, turned over in the air and flew to the side of the road. When she landed on the ground, it created a rather loud sound, and Yang tried to get up at the same time. He understood that he needed to get up and find help. But the problem was that he didn't remember the road and didn't understand where he was now. There was nothing in the area except the warehouse, and it was not clear where to go. Meanwhile, that man from the organization got out of the car, and it looked like he was full of strength. He very slowly said that he would use all his strength to achieve his goal. The man shouted towards Yang that he would use all his strength to tear him apart. Meanwhile, a warrior with red hair came to the building where the battles were usually held. He asked to register him for the fight, but the employee said that this fighter was kicked out and he could not do it. Moreover, he said that the guests were lucky, since the boss is busy with a guy who will outshine even a warrior with red hair. He was very interested in this, and he asked what this guy's name was. The employee began to move the warrior's body away and at the same time tried to remember the name of that warrior. He said that the fighter's name is Ian, and he is definitely much stronger than many in the ring. He also told the red-haired war to be careful, as he knocked out all the guards and almost killed his opponent. Then the warrior realized that Yang had already switched from street fighting to the arena. This gave him the idea that I was much stronger than he initially thought. He admitted that that opponent was really amazing, and at that time the employee asked why the warrior is always without a t-shirt. After some time, he asked the employee where the boss of this organization was now. But the man replied that he had no idea, and if there were no more questions, then the warrior should leave here. At this moment, the red-haired warrior extended his hands to the back of this guy's head. Within a moment, he hit him with great force on the table that stood here. After that, he said that you need to speak quickly, otherwise he will tear off this guy's head and kick it like a ball. Hearing this, the employee said that the boss is in a warehouse complex where the organization rents one room. After that, a smile appeared on the face of the red-haired warrior, now he had at least some kind of plan. 
He grabbed the employee of the organization by the hand and said that he would need it to show him the way. The boss of the organization was very angry and said that he would tear Yang apart. At that moment the guy began to run away because he realized that he just needed to keep moving. But when he first started running, he felt that perhaps this was not such a good idea. A moment later, he saw that this man was a short distance from him. He quickly stopped a short distance from Yang and swung his fist. The guy, at the very last second, saw his opponent's fist flying at him with great speed. He would not have been able to dodge this blow, so Yang decided to block. Despite the fact that the blow was quite strong, the guy managed to block it quite successfully. And after that he again began to run away in the opposite direction. The man, to put it mildly, did not like this, and he realized that he needed to catch up with Yang again. His speed did not turn out to be great for him, so he realized that this was a completely doable task. Pushing off from the place where he stood, he quickly began to approach the guy. And when he ran up close enough to him, he told him not to even dare try to escape. When the enemy's fist flew into the guy's face, Ian realized that he was quite fast. A moment later, the blow passed right next to the guy's head, but he quickly managed to dodge the attack. Then he retreated a few meters so that this thug could not strike again. He stopped and realized that it seemed like he couldn't escape now. Yang looked at his opponent and realized that there was only one way out. Namely, all that remains is to accept the battle and fight to the last. Meanwhile, the red-haired warrior was riding along with an organization employee in the car. The employee said that boss would be there with Yang, and said that in that case he would simply kill him. Then the warrior remembered that he had already had a meeting with the boss when he almost killed his opponent. He also attacked him, but this attack that day was unsuccessful. The warrior will never forget the reaction that was on his face at the moment when he struck the boss. That guy was as strong as a stone, and the warrior didn't even know any way to harm him. They gathered in a duel and he realized that he was not using any skills but was suppressing his opponents with physical force. He had a feeling that the boss did not feel his blows at all, and was immortal. His strikes are too ordinary, he conventionally swings a steel bat and not his hands. The warrior was not interested in this, so that day he simply walked away. When leaving the ring, he didn't hit him hard in the shoulder, and the boss remained standing there. The warrior understood that even knocking out this guy would not give him pleasure, so this is a waste of time. It looks like the situation happened in the boss fight with Yang. The guy couldn't understand how his opponent didn't even stagger from a rather strong attack. He dealt many blows to his body and head, but the result was the same. Well, when the boss prepared to strike, the guy felt that this was not very good. Even though this blow was quite easy to predict, Yang was busy attacking. At one point, the boss swung his hand and tried to reach Yang's head. The guy did not have time to dodge, so this powerful blow came straight to his head. Yang realized that the boss ignored his attacks and was even able to hit back. This is very undesirable. After a moment, the guy also noticed that it looked like the enemy was not going to stop there. He saw this boss's fist flying towards him at great speed. Yang didn't even have time to block, when a second later the fist struck his face. This stage was so strong that the guy's body flew away a great distance. And they flew literally 1m in this way, he fell to the floor and could not move for some time. At this moment, the boss said that Yang fights just like a high school student, and there is no smell of professionalism there. But then he noticed that the guy began to rise, and even after such blows he still regained consciousness. At the same time as the guy was getting up, I also unbuttoned the jacket he was wearing. He finally took it off and said that he was not entirely satisfied with his tactics. A moment, and there was no one in the place where the guy was standing. Yang said that he needed to be a little faster, and at the same time his fist was already near the boss's nose. It was quite easy for him to bypass his block and land a punch straight to the face. After this, Yang retreated a little in order to develop the attack further. With his other hand he began to strike him several times to the body. Yang took hold with his legs and prepared to also strike with his right hand directly to the stomach. The boss only had time to lower his gaze down before Yang had already dealt several dozen blows to his body. And it seems that he was not ready to stop at what he had achieved. Then the boss smiled because he realized that now he had a very good option for a counterattack. He gathered his two hands up and in this way was able to easily strike straight at Yang's back. The guy bent over very much, but despite the boss's anticipation, he didn't fall completely. Moreover, he placed emphasis on his leg, and thanks to this he was able to stand. The boss was very surprised when he saw that the guy had not yet fallen and was immobilized. 
Suddenly, Yana was able to lift his opponent's arms and thanks to this he escaped. And immediately after that, he struck his enemy with his hand on the chin. But the boss immediately grabbed his hand, and now it was impossible to escape. Ian understood this, and was already thinking about how to get out of such a grip. The boss said that at first he didn't believe that a child would do something like that in the arena, but now he surprised him. The boss said that the guy has crazy attacks, as well as his endurance and resilience. The boss thought that Ian would get tired, but this did not happen. Then he swung and said that there was quite a big difference between them as fighters. He dealt a very strong blow to the guy's face, and this caused him to fall for some time. Meanwhile, an employee of the organization said that the boss could not win the war, and he replied that he had never lost. Moreover, he added that he has a favorite method for defeating strong enemies. After all, under normal circumstances, pebbles cannot break huge strong stones. However, there is another way through which this task can be completed with less effort. To do this, you just need to look around and use your mind. And thanks to it, you need to use a tool that will be sharper and harder. And in this case, you can easily split any stone and destroy any enemy. This opponent also resembled a stone for Yang. Does this mean that the way of fighting should be the same? Suddenly, Boss felt a cut appear above his left eyebrow. And just a few seconds later this abs began to bleed and of course the boss felt it. What was even more unpleasant was to see that the guy was not going to give up and was still carrying out attacks. He saw Yang in front of him who decided to use his elbow to hit him in the face. The boss did not have time to block, and it was at that moment that I struck the one above the eyebrow. This was the moment when the rock broke and became more unstable. After a short time, an employee of the organization, together with a soldier, arrived at the warehouses. Then the worker looked around because he couldn't find the boss's car. But suddenly the two of them heard a very scary sound, and decided that they needed to go to it. After walking just a couple of meters, they saw a fight between two men, and it was clear that the one who had the most was losing. This surprised both of them very much, but they remained standing in their places in order to understand what exactly was happening. They witnessed how Yana grabbed the hand of the organization's boss with his teeth. Despite the fact that this thug dealt many blows to his back, the guy still held his hand with his teeth. Moreover, from the blows, his teeth seeped deeper and deeper through the enemy's flesh. The boss would be truly furious, and within a few seconds he would understand how to counteract this. He completely lost his mind, I grabbed him by the body and lifted him above my head. After that, he threw the guy to the ground with all his strength, an ordinary person would never have survived such an attack. When the boss looked at his hand, he could not believe that such a deep wound could be caused by a person's teeth. But Yang still had something to surprise him with, considering that by that time the boss could no longer see in one eye. The guy began to get up, and very quickly it was clear that he was ready for battle. After Yang got up, he hit his boss with his elbow, and because of this, he lost his stance. An employee of the organization said that he did not believe that the boss could lose at all. Meanwhile, an unknown car drove up to this place, and this greatly interested the worker. As soon as this car stopped, someone got out, and an employee of the organization tried to figure out who it was. It took him only a few seconds to identify the intruder. It was Park Won Cho, and he looked, to put it mildly, a little rumpled. The worker asked a friend why an ordinary arena fighter came here. Then Cole said that he had already combed all the shelters and asked where the rest of the organization's guards were. But the worker himself did not tell where the others were, because he came here with the red-haired warrior. But then he began to look around because he realized that the boss could not come himself. What he saw behind Chiol surprised him very much, and at the same time scared him. This man turned his attention to the boss's car, which he usually used to go about his business. It was overturned and the bloody bodies of the organization's workers lay next to it. At that moment, the man realized that it was all Jan's hands. But what surprised him most was that he was in no way inferior to the boss in a fight, and even very often inflicted heavy damage. The employee said that this boy does not look like a person at all. Then the warrior with red hair said that he simply had no words when he looked at this fight. He said that the staff invited a cub to the game who was considered a fighting dog, but in fact he was a young tiger. After the next blow, the boss completely lost his sight and could no longer see anything. He simply waved his fists with all his might in different directions in the hope of hitting the enemy. The warrior with red hair concluded that this brat had grown a lot in terms of combat. In the beginning he was prey, but now everything has changed, 
and he can fight strong opponents. Meanwhile, the boss tried to open his eyes a little in order to see the enemy. He had long realized that in front of him was a real predator, and he was the prey in this situation. He was very scared when he half opened one eye and saw that Yang was about to attack. The guy managed to quickly step on the boss's right foot in order to immobilize him. After that, he transferred all his weight and effort to this particular leg. And then he began to turn his body, putting his left hand forward. Everything happened so quickly, and literally within a moment the stone elbow was right next to the boss's face. I hit Boss Bond's unprotected face with all my strength, and blood splashed in all directions. The guy looked at his opponent indifferently, and he had no emotions. The boss looked simply terrible, and gradually began to lose the ability to stand. It looks like he was knocked out, as he began to fall quite quickly after such a powerful blow. Within a second he was almost lying on the ground, and showed no signs of life. Ian looked at the boss as if he were a defeated enemy, but at the same time he understood that he was still breathing. The boss said that he would never let Yang go, that he would devote his whole life to catch the guy. At that moment I realized that if he didn't finish him here, then most likely he would come for him again. Therefore, if he does not want to die, then he will have to do now what he does not really want. The red-haired warrior began to encourage the guy and say that the matter must be finished. Cole, in turn, on the contrary, began to shout to Yang that this should under no circumstances be done. But at such moments the guy is in a trance, and cannot hear anyone around at all. The guy's words were covered with a veil, and at the same time as he was strangling the boss, he was lost in his thoughts. He didn't know what to do right, and heard Cole's voice telling him that he shouldn't turn into a monster. Also suddenly, I felt that someone began to sneak up on him from behind. He didn't even turn his head to see who was there, because he was busy. This image was covered in blood and told Yang that to kill you must first become a monster, so he will help him. He extended his hands to the guy's hands, and they also became covered in blood. After that, the two of them made much stronger efforts to strangle the boss. The red-haired warrior was euphoric that Yang did not hesitate at all with these actions. Meanwhile, Cole began to run because he realized that while Yang was strangling him, he was not listening to everyone around him at all. After just two seconds, he ran up to the guy and hit him in the stomach with his knee. The goal of this I was never to damage the guy, but only to throw him away from the boss. After that, Cole asked Yang if he remembered the moment when he told him that he would become like everyone else. At that moment the guy thought, lying on the cold ground. This is all that remained for him. And he clearly remembered that moment, it was not a particularly pleasant memory, but clear. After thinking a little more, the guy rummaged through his memories and decided to ask Cole something. He asked the man if it was too late for him to return to normal life. But Cole replied that the moment the guy made up his mind, there was no going back, he was now up to his neck in this shit. Then Ian began to get up, because he understood that he needed to find at least some way out of this situation. Cole took out a knife that was hidden on his belt and said that the guy still had a chance to return. The guy was very surprised when he saw this knife, but he didn't show it visually. After that, the man began his movement and went to the immobilized boss. His step was quite slow and at the same time he said that the guy who brought Yana for the first time was a real freak, which earned the topic and that involved people like Yang in illegal battles. And this boss is a devilish freak who makes the player fight by giving him drugs. That psychopath with red hair is a killer who has deprived several opponents of their lives. Cole also said that he is also a killer who came to kill a man to avenge his friend. After that, without an iota of regret, he plunged the knife straight into the boss's body. Ian finally stopped understanding this man's motives and why he was doing all this. The boss tried to move at first, but within two seconds he became a lifeless body. Cole said that all this time he was fighting not to pay off the debt, all the money was not very big. He constantly came to the arena to find those freaks who forced his friend to take drugs because of which he died. That day, the boss told his friend that he couldn't just leave, because he came here voluntarily and had to become a fighting dog. Cole said that all people become monsters or die in this damn arena. The reasons can be different, most often it is money. But there are also people who fight in order to suppress desire in themselves. There are mad men who fight for fun and who love to cause pain to others. But there is also a small percentage of people who are in this industry for revenge. Chul said that the truth is that a monster grows next to another monster, and they hear and learn from each other. Therefore, in order not to become monsters, you need to live like a person and not get involved in this.
Chul asked Yang to renounce the cruel life and continue an ordinary human life. Suddenly, the red-haired warrior heard the howling of sirens, and asked the employee if he had called them. That employee said that this was not true, but it seemed that I did not react to external factors at all. Cole asked Yang to stop moving away and leave now, because everything was already over. The red-haired warrior grabbed the guy by the hand and said that he needed to get out of here, since the guy shouldn't go to jail. That day I was on shift and noticed several police cars driving past her store. This surprised her very much, since in their city, and especially in this area, the police very rarely drove with flashing lights. She closed her shift and followed these cars as they all drove up to the house where she lived. And at the entrance of this house, the police interrogated the father, and a crowd gathered in the area to discuss something. One woman said that it had been so long since the killer had already committed one murder. The man did not understand what kind of killer he was talking about, and the woman said that this had already happened not so long ago. On the day of her graduation from school, the girl witnessed her father go crazy and kill his wife. He ran away and is considered missing, and now his daughter lives in this house. The man could not believe that she lived in this place, and the woman said that she would be scared to stay there. She also went on to say that because of this incident, housing prices have dropped significantly, but you can't tell anyone about this. But suddenly the woman lowered the tone of her conversation, as she saw something very scary. She said that this was the daughter of that killer, and at the same time Si Eun approached the police near the entrance. The father said that the moneylenders just came and beat him, while asking about the police why they didn't believe him. Well then they asked him to calm down and asked if there could be another reason for their visit. They also added that they were informed that one of those men was killed, and all their cars were passing here. After C heard the word murder, she immediately remembered that evil day. She remembered the man who held the lifeless and bloody body of her mother. At that same second, she began to run closer to her father, pushing the police around with her elbows. She asked her father if any of those moneylenders had a similar scar on their eye. She showed the photo and asked to look carefully and say whether this man was among them. Well, then the police asked the student to calm down and step back while they interrogated her. In general, the police did not understand why the moneylenders simply left, and the feeling that money was not their goal in the first place. The people who were with them said that they were simply following directions. And the killer, Chiyo, also said that he was just following them and saw an opportunity to kill the victim. The police had a feeling that both sides were hiding something. It was hard to understand given that there were no witnesses at the murder scene. Despite the fact that everything was quite loud, the neighbors did not dare to leave their apartments. Meanwhile, the girl approached her father, who was already taking a cigarette out of the pack. She asked what was wrong with Ian, and if he eventually returned home after studying. But the father said in an angry voice that he didn't care about his son, who was arrogant and didn't even bother to help. After that, he asked if she was Yang's friend, but the girl did not answer this. Yang, meanwhile, was riding in a car with a red-haired warrior and an employee of the organization, bleeding. The man tried to bring him to his senses and he was frightened by the fact that he was bleeding from his nose. The employee said that he was actually surprised that the guy was still alive after he got into a fight with his boss. He couldn't believe that the boss died like that, and didn't understand what would happen to the organization now. Well, then the warrior said that this was a group of garbage, and all the employees would find another such garbage can. Then the employee thought about why he had contacted this red-haired warrior in the first place. Moving Yang's body in different directions, the warriors suddenly noticed that a wallet had fallen out of his pocket. She began to look at what was inside it, and took out some documents. After that, he told the organization employee to go to the nearest hospital. The warrior held an identification card in his hands and said that he needed to be taken to the address and then let him do it himself. When they drove two blocks, suddenly the doors of this car opened. The warrior pushed Yang out and said that they would have fun in battle one day. The doors to the car closed, and the employee immediately stepped on the gas. For a long time, Yana lay on the road near the hospital, where no one saw him. The red-haired warrior came home and told Joe that he was finally home. He replied that the warrior had been on a great spree lately, and asked if he was looking for that interesting guy. The warrior said he found him, but he was in no condition to fight so he dropped him off at the hospital. Moreover, he added that he saw the address on his map, and it's good that he knows which hospital he will be in. Joe asked to see this guy's ID card, apparently also interested. At first the warrior did not understand why he needed this, 
but after a few seconds he handed the card to Joe. When Joe looked at her, he immediately realized that this guy was Yana with whom he spoke just yesterday. At first he didn't believe it, but then he looked better in the photo on the card. The warrior asked Joe if he was still chasing that toy. Joe looked away from the map and said that he was supposed to meet the seller tomorrow, but he died. The red-haired warrior laughed and said that he didn't even know that such a thing even happened. But then Joe said that there was another seller, and the toy would be in his hands very soon. After this, the man asked the warrior why it was necessary to take the guy to the hospital, and asked again whether he had brought him to such a state. The warrior replied that he would not have saved him, but all these things were caused by the arena boss, who wanted to take revenge on him. And in the end, the owner himself found himself in a half-dead state, and the warrior realized that this guy was stronger than he thought. Hearing all this, Joe asked the red-haired warrior whether Yan was laughing when he beat that boss to death. Then the warrior said that he was standing far away so he couldn't see, and also added that it was not he who killed that boss. Then the warriors became suspicious and said that he did not remember saying anything about the beating. He got very angry and asked Joe how he even knew about this from singing. But Joe, in turn, simply said that the warrior forgot about how he himself told it a minute ago. The warrior began to doubt and began to scratch his head, trying to remember what happened a minute ago. Then he said that of course he remembered, and asked Joe who he was taking him to. Then the man said that memories change or disappear, and it's good that the warrior has Joe next to him. Then Joe started pressing buttons on his computer again and said that he needed to do this quickly. The warrior became interested and asked what he was doing before his arrival, and he said that he was working on a toy. He added that in order for someone to become your toy, you must first make him disappear from the evil eye of this world. And for this purpose, a pitiful family and the mountains of debts that Yen has are ideal. We also need a child who had to grow up on his own and whose disappointment in society was constantly accumulating. He paid his father's debts, feeling pressure from people who demanded these payments. And in the end, his father died without coping with his debts, and we drove ourselves into an alcoholic pit. And then this guy lost contact with the world and finally fell through the earth, hiding his presence in the darkness. And Joe wanted everything to be exactly like this, because otherwise he wouldn't succeed. He also paid attention to that address, because something similar had already happened there. Two people went missing around the same time, and passers-by know that Joe will have to fork out the money. Night had already fallen and Si Yoon moved to her apartment. There she turned on her phone and looked at some photo alone. She spoke to her, saying that everyone claims that dad killed mom, so she asked the person in the photo to come back and say that it was not true. Looking at the photo again, she, speaking to herself, asked where dad was. Suddenly, Ian began to feel that he was slowly regaining consciousness. Already after a few seconds he felt that he did not understand where he was now. So he fully opened his eyes and stood up, trying to figure out what this place was. He asked himself where he was now, but so far he had not seen that the girl was sitting next to him. It was Si Eun and she said that Yang is now in the hospital, and added that yesterday she was not herself. All because when she called, a nurse answered the phone and said that Ian had fainted on the road. At that moment the guy remembered that he was knocked out yesterday. However, that attack was not entirely ordinary. But soon he suddenly lost consciousness and everything happened again. The guy's body continued to move even though he missed all the blows. I made the assumption that maybe he stopped feeling pain and the damage continued to accumulate. After that, the girl said that the second time she would not believe that Ian had overdone it at work. She also added that yesterday moneylenders came to his house and started a pogrom, and a murder case was opened. So she immediately dialed Yang, but was told that he was in the emergency room. She started asking Yang what he had gotten himself into, why his body was in such a state, and whether the people in his apartment had anything to do with this. But despite the large number of questions, Ian initially did not answer any. Then the girl said that perhaps she shouldn't have leaned on the guy so quickly and apologized. Some time passed, and the girl waited a little while the guy rested. When he stood up, he already had one question ready that interested him very much. He said that he heard from C's words that there was thunder in the house, so he asked what happened to his father. The girl said that he was there, but she had some suspicions. Looking at the floor, Si Yoon asked if that man was really Yang's father. After all, when she came to his apartment, she spoke through the window and asked a Jushi why he didn't react. She started screaming that Ian was in the emergency room. But the father told her not to make noise in the middle of the night, 
and the girl said that the father needed to check on his son. Then Ajushi said that he would not do this, since this freak was just trying to escape like his mother. The girl did not understand this phrase at all, but she noticed something that interested her more. It was an ordinary object, but nevertheless it answered many questions. There was money on the table, and she wondered how many times her father had debts, the moneylenders had already started breaking into the apartment. Then she understood why I needed money and why he worked so hard. Despite the fact that he voiced completely different reasons. That night he said that he liked to spend money that I earned myself, but in fact I didn't spend it. Si Eun asked her father why he couldn't at least visit his son who always helped him. Well, the father screamed and said that it was he who supported his son, and therefore all his money was his property. When the guy heard this story, he simply remained silent, he lowered his gaze and did not know what to say. The girl was in the same state, and did not know how to react at all. She said that at first she thought that Yang was just a peculiar child who was always silent and trying to hide. All because of those situations when the guy asked her not to tell others about anything. And then when he asked not to tell his friends that he was hospitalized. It was also strange when he asked not to tell anyone that he would be renting an apartment. But after yesterday's meeting with his father, the girl began to understand why I was hiding so much. The girl said that at first glance she already understood what kind of a jassy she was, and said that this was probably why Ian ran away. She also added that when Yuna was there, she didn't care about the noise that came from Yang's house from time to time. Then it seemed to her that these were just loud discussions, and now she feels bad about it. The images that the girl saw from the guy all this time began to turn into sad memories. After all, now she understood the motive and the reasons why the guy behaved this way. In fact, now the girl knew much more than the guy would like. Yang had the feeling that his dark side had changed a little. This is the side that he did not want to show to anyone, now it has been revealed. Ian also said that he was curious about something, namely why the girl lied when she said she wanted to move. After all, she said that she was also looking for housing, but now it's obvious that she's never going to move. Then she handed over her phone to the guy, obviously this was to explain her point of view. She said that this article indicated her family's villa, and it said that the killer that day was her father. Perhaps Jan had already seen it, but there are now a lot of policemen there and everyone is hearing about it. However, the girl didn't believe it then. The article wrote that the father hit the mother in the face several times. They also found evidence of self-defense on mom's part, but no evidence of robbery. However, when the girl came home, she saw her divided father hugging her mother's corpse. From his look, she realized that he could not be a murderer. And everyone also said that a person who did not touch a fly could not kill his beloved. But other people willingly believe in it, because they believe that news is the standard of justice. And from then on, she began to look for another place to live, and every glance at her back made her feel inferior. Moreover, the memories of that day kept spinning in Si Yoon's head. But on the other hand, having left her parents' house, the girl will never be able to meet her father again. This is precisely the reason why she remains living there, after the girl said this, Ian thanked her for the story. In fact, this number of people is not very large, and they are all very similar. They try their best to look happy and hide their pain. And when each of them knows each other's pain, something very interesting happens. Their opinions about each other also change, and this happens almost always. But more than that, they are comforted by each other's efforts, and find harmony in this. Give the phone back, the guy thanked the girl and said that now he owes her doubly. Si Eun said that everything was fine and suggested that we talk about the rest later, because now we need to get better. Ian agreed with this, and understood that he still needed a little time to rehabilitate himself. After that, he raised his eyes and looked straight into the girl's face. He saw that she was smiling, and caught himself thinking that he felt comfortable looking at Si. The sensation made him feel both awkward and red in the face. A few days later, it was quite bright in the guy's room due to the sun shining through the window. He went down to a special room to brush his teeth in the morning. The doctor came into the bathroom and asked how he was feeling, and the guy asked to discharge him tomorrow. The doctor said that he could be discharged even today because there shouldn't be a problem since Ian surprisingly recovered quite quickly. When the guy looked at his phone, he saw that all his friends were chatting very energetically. He read a small part of it but did not read further since group chats are usually very noisy. Until evening, her boyfriend was still in the university hospital. He had schedule reminders on his phone and overall felt good. For the first time in a long time, he looked forward to tomorrow. 
memories of the past began to quickly fade and now hope and expectations for tomorrow began to appear. After a very long time, I dreamed about tomorrow, and now I fell fast asleep. Well, Joe suddenly appeared and congratulated Mr. Yang on his discharge. From this, the guy instantly woke up, as he suddenly felt a surge of fear. Then he realized that he was no longer in the hospital, but in some other place. Hannah said that it looked like Ian had fallen asleep, and said that they needed to hurry up and not waste a minute. Then I remembered that the whole group was going on a picnic, and for some reason they were in a hurry. The doors to the train were closing, and the guy literally at the last moment began to run inside. He was the last one to jump into it, and he immediately felt that he was about to appear in another place. And so it happened that he felt a different environment around him and felt the movement of leaves. When he looked around, he realized that he was in some kind of park. He also immediately noticed that someone was talking near him. Si Eun asked Yang what happened, and said that she needed to sit down because the meat was almost ready. Then the guy turned his head and saw that his friend Hansu was standing near the grill and cooking meat. It was almost ready, and literally in a minute we could sit down to eat. But suddenly Ian began to feel something very strange, a feeling as if he was not present here. And suddenly the whole world around him began to be sucked into itself. Young felt the fall, and also felt that all the objects around him were also being sucked into this hole. A moment later, he felt that he was moving to another place, and saw Joe throwing the wooden figurine down. One more moment, and the guy was already lying on some kind of mattress in a dark ring. At first he lost consciousness, but he simply felt what was happening around him. Then I heard footsteps coming closer and closer to his body. He was ready to kill the one who now came close to him, but he could not even move. The elderly grandfather said that this young guy fell just in time. Lowering his head, he said that he saw the twenty-year-old street fighter Yang in front of him, and welcomed him to the zombie fight. In the cell that was located in this pentagon there was a man who whispered that he did not believe in God. But despite this, he prayed, because he felt that this was all he could do. He remembered a dialogue with his wife who said that she was grateful that he did everything for Si Yun's graduation. Today he said that perhaps God simply does not see or hear him. That day, the wife said that maybe they should start cooking since Si Yun would be meeting with friends before dinner. The man could no longer believe in anything, so he decided that he believed in God now. When his wife asked if he was okay that day, he felt something was wrong. And remembering this, he felt even more intense pain. He couldn't believe who he eventually became, but I remember well the moment he held his bloody wife in his arms. He asked the Lord to deliver him from this hell and somehow save him. He asked to save him from hell and help him find the monster that turned him into a monster. But most of all he wanted God to give him the strength to kill him. But suddenly Si Yun's father saw in front of him that a new fighter had been thrown into their cell. He was very surprised when he saw him, and was also surprised that their overseer began to approach him. When the overseer raised his head up, he said that the customer was just in time. He turned his head down and welcomed 20-year-old Yang into the zombie fight. After that, he lifted his body, picked up the mattress that was lying on the floor and began to carry him along the corridor. Now the man was left alone in his cell, and only watched as the warden carried away the newcomer. He didn't know what to think, but suddenly he just heard someone addressing him. It was his friend who asked if he was okay. He replied that he was still sane and did not feel any madness. Then his friend said that you can lose your mind in an instant, and as soon as this happens, there will be nothing left of the present. Then Father C said that he knows this, apparently he had to observe this more than once. He turned his head and looked at the newcomer who had been in the cell for less than a day. This plump man said that he had just been at work and did not understand how he ended up here. But suddenly a red light appeared in his cell, and he raised his head to understand why it lit up. All due to the fact that caustic gas began to flow into all the chambers, which covered everything with a thick fog. Father C's comrade said that everything was about to begin, and it would be over quickly. Father said that the path to survival begins again, and everything goes in circles. The newcomer first tried to breathe for me, then closed my airways with his hands so as not to inhale the gas. But still this did not help and he, like all the other prisoners, lost consciousness very quickly. Around the same time, Ian also felt that his sanity had come to him. He was tied to a chair, and tried to look around to understand where he was. It was something like a bathroom, but he didn't like the fact that he couldn't move. He didn't understand how he ended up here. If he had just been in the hospital, he clearly remembered that he slept the day before he was discharged, 
and that they planned to spend time with friends. But I also began to remember that someone woke him up a few hours before the alarm clock. The guy was very scared when he remembered that the one who woke him up was Song Jo. While he was trying to remember this, someone began to enter the room. Due to the fact that the door opened, the room was slightly illuminated by a small beam of light. An elderly overseer entered the room and silently looked at the newcomer for a while. He noticed that Ian was surprisingly calm for someone who was sitting tied up in an empty room. The guy asked where he was, since so far he had only seen a toilet around him. Grandfather said that the guy is in the arena, whether he wants it or not. He also said that one of their clients brought him here, and Yang will fight here as long as he pays. The man continued by also saying that there are many people like Yang here, and the grandfather himself is the overseer of everyone. All clients who pay to visit the arena want the fighters to fight to the death. And a supervisor is needed here to help clients get what they want. It doesn't seem like this grandfather loved his job, but he unquestioningly carried out all the instructions. He sent fighters to the ring using an elevator, after poisoning them with gas. Many inmates go crazy or are otherwise unable to continue fighting. One day one of the fighters began to talk to the wall, and then the overseer realized that he needed to take action. He picked up his bolt-action hunting rifle and loaded a single cartridge. Then he pointed it directly at the head of one of the fighters and fired in cold blood. The warden said that he gets rid of everyone who cannot fight and loses their pulse. Suddenly, the two of them heard some sounds, but only Ian paid attention to them. He raised his head because these sounds turned out to be coming from the ceiling. All because the arena was located right above the heads of Yang and the warden. And there now there was a rather fierce battle taking place, which seemed to take place between inveterate enemies. Wars fought as if they knew such a word as endurance. They constantly exchanged blows, and it was not clear who would win. At one point, it became clear to everyone that it looked like the father who was Xi's father would now simply kill his opponent. But suddenly the enemy was able to dodge one of the blows, his eyes glowed red and he counterattacked. He was quite successful in landing several blows, after which he grabbed the enemy by the head and slammed him to the floor. Then the warden said that Yang is the next participant, since the rumor judging by the sounds, the battle is over. Well then the guy said that he didn't fight anymore, because he decided for himself that he didn't want to anymore. But grandfather said that no one would particularly take his desire into account here, because Ian was already turning into a monster. At first the guy didn't understand what his grandfather was talking about, but then his gaze followed. And when he looked in the direction the warden was looking, he understood almost everything. Pointing to the table, grandfather said that all these drugs are now in Ian's body, and they are designed specifically to fight until he loses his pulse. Injection of this substance causes physical abilities to reach their limits. And at first the guy may be able to resist him, but as soon as he takes full effect, then the monster that all the spectators so want to see will suddenly wake up. Meanwhile, the battle that was taking place above looked truly bloody. The enemy who fought with his father dealt multiple blows and drove his head into the floor. But suddenly he began to feel that he was losing strength, and at the same time, reason came to him. Until after some time he began to feel the movement, and that he was already in a completely different place. In fact, quite a lot of time passed, but for that man it seemed like a couple of minutes. He moved back to his cell and was there himself. In front of him was only a huge iron cage that did not allow him to leave. He started shouting through the wall to find out if his comrade, whose name was Lim Sung Jun, was alive. Father answered in a hoarse voice that he was alive, but it was clear that he was on the verge of death. Then the comrade said that as far as he remembers, they had just fought. Jun said that he also remembers this, which means that today they fought together. His friend said that his hands were covered in blood, and then asked how Jun was feeling. This man's hands were indeed covered in blood, which had even already dried. But judging by Jun's voice, he felt much worse. He said that he felt something was wrong, but he was very glad that it was finally over. Meanwhile, the warden was carrying the body of Yang, who had fallen asleep briefly from one of the drugs. The grandfather said that it wouldn't hurt, because the guy would lose control of his mind for a while. And when he wakes up, the result of his work will already be in front of him. He also added that if the guy is lucky, he will survive. At the same time, he threw Yang's body directly onto the elevator on which people are lifted into the ring. Even after such a blow, Yang did not wake up, he was still unconscious. Then he took a few steps and approached the lever that activates the elevator. 
He pulled it, and the elevator immediately began to rise. After that, the warden said that I would be lucky if he never woke up again. It was at this moment that the guy began to wake up, when the elevator was already in the shaft and there was nowhere to run. He began to feel that his muscles were very tense, despite the fact that he felt normal. His muscles became larger and larger, in parallel with the fact that the elevator rose higher and higher. After some time, he already saw a light that came from above and illuminated part of the elevator. When the elevator rose another few meters, Ian was literally blinded by this light. He gained the strength to get up, and he decided to do it. Finally the guy finally got up and saw that he was in the ring. And in addition to the huge audience around this ring, there is also an enemy standing in front of him. He realized that everything had changed again, and at quite a fast pace. This did not make Yang very happy, because he had long wanted to get away from these matters. The hope that he managed to feel yesterday has already disappeared. It's as if God reminded the guy that he lives in hell and should not resist his will. Then he suddenly noticed that a distraught and overweight man was running towards him. At that moment, June asked that comrade if he would be able to escape from here. After all, it seemed to him that every time he opened his eyes, he saw only this camera and fights. Well then his friend said that as long as there is at least a little hope they can continue to fight, and they must not lose themselves. June said that you couldn't just disappear, and he believed that one day they would find a way out. He also said that perhaps some kind of rescuer would appear and come to them. The warden, meanwhile, was watching Yang's battle through the computers, and was dissatisfied, to put it mildly. The audience was not happy either, and many people thought that the organizers had not drugged this guy. The warden also didn't understand why Yang didn't show any symptoms, after all, no one can resist the effects of drugs. At the same time, the guy was dodging blows, thinking that when people are brought here, they are drugged and forced to fight. He tried to remember the name of the one who brought him here, but at the same time the enemy tried to attack. Little by little, having caught his fist, Yang remembered that the one who kidnapped him was Song Zhou An, and he planned to send him here from the very beginning. At this time, Zhou was just watching the fight through her phone. I remembered that John had planned this from the very beginning, and I just went according to my plan. It was then that he spoke about this place when he said that he knew where Ian could kill. The kindness and interest that he radiated was due to the fact that he wanted to force him to come here voluntarily. But since Joe wants to see Ian fight, then let him just watch. Well, the guy swore that he would never show him that story of his that Joe really craves. After all, unfortunately, Ian exhausted all his emotions when he was still a child, and now they are alien to him. He used a sweep to knock his opponent to the floor. But the enemy did not seem to feel pain, and stood up in search of his opponent. Well, he also noticed that Yang was nowhere nearby and he began to look around. Taking a good look, he saw that the guy walked up to one of the cameras and looked straight into it. Ian wanted Joe to know that the pain in his world was returning like a boomerang. The enemy at that time began to run towards Yang's back, expecting a light attack from behind. If God sends a guy suffering every time he feels at least a little hope for better, then Jan will proudly accept all this suffering, but in no case will he make one mistake. Yang told himself that he would never lose hope and would always fight for his future. At the same time, thinking about this, he made a tackle, and thanks to this he sent the enemy into the air. At that moment, it seemed to him that time seemed to have slowed down, and the enemy was quickly flying past. At that second, Yang became more active and delivered several light blows to the enemy's body so that he would be in flight. He promised that he would end this war without killing, because that's what he wants to do. After this, the guy delivered one blow with his fist to the center of the enemy's body to send him further. His body flew into the camera at not particularly high speed and destroyed it. Joe watched this whole fight and didn't know what to feel looking at all this. There was a smile on his face, although he himself could not figure out why it appeared. After this smile, he laughed and began to write some message. A minute later, an SMS came to the warden's phone and a sound notification sounded. Then the grandfather picked up his phone to read what was written there. The text said that Joe had not yet gotten what she wanted, so Yang would participate in the battle every day. Among the fighters was also Park sang Du, who had three victories and two defeats. That office worker called himself Han sang Chuk, and since he was new, he only had one defeat. Also among them was a military mercenary who had 124 victories to his name without a single defeat. Sung Jun had 20 wins and only one loss, which he received yesterday. In second place according to statistics was Yang himself, 
who qualified as a street fighter and had one victory to his name. When the warden came, he said that they were all prisoners of Block A. He also ordered everyone to be silent and not make any noise. Well, what if one of the prisoners, who was also a member of the Yakuza, said that he would not listen? He said that they intended to listen to the one who dragged him into this cage, so now he also closed his mouth. But the warden, in turn, only said that this fighter already had three defeats. At first, that man did not understand what he meant, and only looked at the old man in surprise. The warden was informed that after three consecutive defeats you receive an overdose of medicine and carry out the last battle. He also added that he was impressed that the man was still standing, but if he loses again, he will definitely die. The grandfather stood quite close to this cage, so the man spat at him and said that he would see who would die. The warden ignored this and then took several confident steps towards the cage with the fighter. After that, he took some kind of stick and hit it right between the bars of this cage. This shelf turned out to be a rather long stun gun, and the supervisor easily reached the prisoner's body. A huge discharge immediately spread throughout his body and he began to feel pain. Then the old man said that none of everyone would ever run away from here, and you just need to accept it. After that, he walked away from the cage with this prisoner in order to continue his speech. Meanwhile, the Yakuza man was wincing in pain, but still looked in the direction of the warden. Everyone around was silent, but the office worker had a couple of thoughts. He thought that this man was very similar to the warden, but it was strange that he was that age. He also noticed that this man was simply huge, and could easily deal with him. Then the warden approached the cage with Yang and suddenly stopped there. The guy didn't immediately understand what they wanted from him, so he just looked immobilized at the warden. Grandfather said that the client was disappointed with the first match, and he was ordered to put Yang in every fight today. He also added that he did not understand how he managed to remain conscious, but said that in the end the guy would succumb. The military mercenary looked at this guy with great interest. Just like Juna, because they both understood that this ability of Yang could be very useful. The warden also said that Yang's client said that he would pay him to fight continuously, and the guy's client is the biggest sponsor. Walking away, grandfather said that he himself was interested in how long Ian could hold out. It looks like the news ended and the grandfather began to leave, and Jun approached the cage with Yang. He asked if he was okay, since everyone knew that Ian had fought today and could have been injured. But the guy didn't answer, he just stood straight and looked straight. After that, Jun said that everyone is alone in the same boat, so Yang can calmly relax. It didn't look like Yang was tense, but he was definitely indifferent and silent. The mercenary asked if it was true what the overseer said that Yang was conscious during the battle. But the guy didn't answer this either, he just remained silent and just looked forward. Then the Yakuza member shouted and ordered Yang to answer as it was starting to irritate him. He said that they are all being held here against their will and they need to share all the information. Then Jun asked him to calm down because this guy was here recently and he needed time. A member of the Yakuza said that they could die at any minute and they couldn't be given that much time. Then the office worker answered him that, in his opinion, Ian was indeed conscious, since he remembers that fight. The mercenary asked if he was sure, because if he were a rival of an office worker, he would hardly remember anything. Then that man said that most likely he survived only because Ian was conscious during the battle. He came closer to the guy's cell and thanked him for it. He also added that he was beginning to understand what kind of place this was, and introduced himself and said that he was glad to meet you. This angered the Yakuza member and he said that now was not the time for dating. The office worker said that they are in a company, which means that everyone should take care of each other. After that, the military mercenary said that it seemed like the new guy didn't want to talk, so he suggested everyone to rest. The Yakuza member retreated to a dark corner of the cell and said that he did not expect that the company of the mute and the slobber would be here. Cameras constantly monitored the situation in this block, and the warden was always watching. An hour later, a small dialogue took place here between the members of the block. The office worker was sleeping, as after the battle he had lost a huge amount of strength. A member of the Yakuza asked the military mercenary how long he had been here. But despite the simplicity of the question, that man did not answer at all, because he did not want to reveal all his cards. John suddenly punched his fist towards where Yang's cell was located. He called him because he seemed to want to talk to the guy. Jun quietly said that if Yang couldn't speak, then he should just knock on the wall twice. The guy then replied that he could talk, he just needed time to think. 
John said that it was good that the guy still decided to speak, because silence will not help here. This is because one of the worst side effects of the drug they are given is gradual memory loss. That's why they tell each other their upbringings every time in order to keep them all together. Without this, they would go crazy, remembering nothing about their past life. June continued, saying that in addition, the people who hold them captive are extremely meticulous. The only way to get out of this place is to join forces. Here, every person is worth their weight in gold. That is why it is so important that I talk about myself while he remembers at least something, and they, in turn, will retain the memories. John said that his name is already known, he is a street fighter, and he asked if he had family and friends. Ian said that he would like to start with something else, first he wanted to talk about him. This man got close to his friends and family to dig up information on him. This was the person who secretly applauded sending me here from the very beginning. His name was Song Jo Won, and it was impossible to say that he had evil intentions from the beginning. When he came to the collector, he said that debtors should always pay back the money. After that, he began to take out a small gift from his pocket for a man who worked as a moneylender. It was a photo of Ian's father who was relaxing in a nightclub, Joe pointed out that he spends all the money he receives in a day. The moneylender could not actually measure this photograph, because he thought that he was giving this money to his family. After that, Joe said that he wrote down the bar that Ian often visits and the man needs to act right now and then he can get the money. After all, the guy considers them simpletons, and that's why he's in no hurry to repay the debt. The collector did not know how to feel after these words, but he basically felt deceived. Joe also added that if it were him, he would make sure that Father Ian would never be able to borrow again. Everything went according to Joe's plan, and the icing on the cake of his plan was some money. When my father came from the next festivities, he saw huge stacks of money on the table in his apartment. At that moment, genuine joy appeared on his face, and Joe's plan became more and more thoughtful. Meanwhile, Si Eun was texting Yang on her phone and didn't understand why he wasn't answering. She was a little puzzled, although she understood that a person like Yang answered very rarely. Then she decided to call him, but the receiver said that the subscriber's number was switched off. Then the girl got a little thoughtful and decided to go to a real estate office. When she asked the woman if Ian had come, she said that she had not seen him, and she would have to sign a contract with other clients. Si Eun put together the facts in her head that Yang was not at home, and he did not appear anywhere else in the city. At the same time, the warrior with red hair was furious at Joe's house, and could not understand where Ian had disappeared. He said that he was leaving and would look for the guy, so now he really wants to fight. Joe wished him good luck, but then in a quieter voice he said that he wouldn't succeed anyway. The guy's father didn't seem to be very worried about his son, and was now in the VIP room of the club. The girl who kept him company asked where he got so much money, while simultaneously flirting with him. Well then, Father Ian said that he couldn't say, but he would hint that the money came to him on its own. After all, in fact, there was truth in these words, despite the fact that the girl did not believe in them. Then the father thought about it, he had an assumption that Ian just gave him this money. He remembered the dialogue they had when the guy first brought big money home. Then Yang notified him that there was 14 million in the bank book, and with cash there were 16 million won. At that same second, the father remembered the moment when his girlfriend looked out the window and said that his father should be ashamed. The father began to remember the boy's childhood, and how he often had to perform the function of an adult. But even despite this, when my father came home drunk, he tied him in the bathtub, not allowing him to move. Lung went to the toilet because he felt bad after drinking too much. When he left the booth, he said out loud that he had nothing to apologize for. This was his sincere thought, and he really thought so, or at least convinced himself of it. After the toilet, he went to the wash basin and turned on the water to wash his hands and wash himself. But suddenly he felt that someone approached him from behind, but at first he did not pay attention to it. This stranger then said that Lung was living quite well for a man with debts. Then the father turned his head, because he realized that most likely a moneylender was standing next to him. But he didn't even have time to look at his face, as this man took his head and directed it towards the mirror. My father immediately began to bleed because he cut himself with a small fragment of this mirror. But it was not enough for the moneylender and he grabbed him by the head and began to beat him on the wash basin. After several blows, he threw him to the floor, and by that time the father was already having difficulty breathing. The moneylender said that they were not finished yet, 
and said that it was his mistake that he gave too many concessions. The father was silent, it was difficult for him to speak because of the wounds he received. Then the moneylender said that what goes around comes around, he also added that he needed to be gentler with his son. At that moment, the father began to lose consciousness, and the memory appeared before his eyes again. He remembered how Yang's bloody body was lying in the bathroom, and at the same time it was tied. As soon as he remembered this, a kick flew into his head. After this, the moneylender began to strike with his fists, and blood began to flow like a river on the tiles in the toilet. The father constantly asked not to kill him right here, and the moneylender repeated that the money needed to be returned. He raised his father's head and said that he had heard that his son had earned a lot not so long ago. But the father said that he doesn't know where his son is or what he's doing, and I suspect that he just ran away. Then the moneylender took all the money from his pocket and demanded the key to the house in order to take the rest of the money. After this, the father's eyes opened wide and he was silent for some time, because he did not understand how the moneylender knew this. But the man hit his father several more times and said that he had already found out about everything, and he shouldn't lie to him. The blows continued until the father lost consciousness and remained lying on the floor. The security guard who stood by the toilet did not let anyone in at that moment, and the girls who passed by discussed the wealth of Yang's father. A few hours later, in the evening, Lung was walking home, it was quite difficult for him to move. He headed to his apartment and slowly moved his feet. When he went inside, he noticed that everything turned out the way he didn't want. But nevertheless, it was stupid to suspect that all the money would be on that table. He looked forward and saw that there was not a single bill left on the table, but only glass bottles. But then the father came closer to the table to see what else was on it. There were some pills there, and my father was very interested in what they were and where the money had gone. He called Yang to find out if he was at home, but there was no answer. My father didn't understand what these pills were doing here, and for a while he just looked at them silently. Why did he suddenly hear that someone was walking near his window again? It was Si Yun, and she asked her father if Yang was at home now. Then he said that he had no idea where his son was, adding that most likely he ran away. After that, the girl asked what was wrong with her father's face and asked if she should call the police. But then she noticed that there was someone else in the room besides her father, and asked Lung about it. Well, the father didn't understand anything, but he was pretty scared when he heard this from the girl. He began to look around to see who else was here. And he was even more frightened when he saw a man in a bandana and a black hood standing in the corner of the room. He immediately jumped away from the table and asked who he was and what he was doing in the apartment. But this stranger did not react in any way to the father's words, his eyes were wide open and he simply looked straight. Si Eun, looking at all this, realized that she had already seen this guy before. But after a few seconds the girl realized that he was with her that day. Then the girl went out with friends, and realized that most likely her parents were already tired of waiting. But when she ran up to the house, she saw someone very strange nearby. It was the man in the hood, and she immediately took notice of him. But nevertheless, he did not react to her in any way, so the girl simply passed by. Walking inside, she wondered if she had seen him before, but she couldn't remember, which meant that he didn't live here. But since she was in a hurry to get home, the girl began to quickly run up the stairs to get there faster. I went inside and she apologized to her parents and said that she had lost track of time. In front of her she saw the father, his body was covered in blood, and in his hands he was holding the body of his mother. He screamed very loudly, and at that moment Si Eun was very scared. After the father screamed, he immediately started running and ran out into the stairwell. He ran so fast that he pushed his daughter away and she fell to the floor. The girl didn't even have the strength to cry, she just looked and that's it. In front of her was the bloody body of her mother, and a huge pool of blood on the floor. With trembling hands, she took out the phone and began to call an ambulance. But during the call, she felt someone's presence, and it made her turn her head. When she did this, she saw the man standing on the street, only now he was carefully looking into the apartment. After that, he quickly hid, and after that the girl did not see him. He disappeared, and I thought that dad must have run after him. But that day this man disappeared without a trace, just like his father. She never saw him again. Despite the fact that she gave a statement to the police, they also could not find him. Then C realized that this was the same man, and asked if he had seen everything then. But instead of answering, this man turned his head towards Father Yang. Then he took a few steps in his direction, which seriously alarmed him. 
A moment later, he grabbed Father Yang by the neck, and it became clear that Lung would not be able to resist. After that, he threw him to the floor, and with his strong hands did not allow him to leave. And then he took a handful of pills from the table, and at the same time still held his father by the throat. He then stuffed a handful of pills into the man's mouth and forced him to swallow them. After the father swallowed the pills, the man turned his head towards the girl. She was very scared when she saw this, these two actions of this man were very frightening. Out of fear, she pushed away from the window through which she had watched and thought about what to do. The fact that she did not understand what this man was doing added to the fear. Through the crack in the window, she saw that the man began to run out of Yang's apartment. At first she didn't understand why he was doing this, because no one would get him there. But then she turned her head towards the entrance and realized something. She heard that you could hear footsteps in the entrance, and it became obvious that this man was running away. Then the girl decided that she urgently needed to call the police, but before that she needed to run away to a safe distance. She began to get up and realized that she needed to run away as quickly as possible. Her eyes closed out of fear, but suddenly she heard someone's footsteps right next to her. When she opened her eyes, she realized that it was all over, and it seemed that her life would now end. All because when she opened her eyes she saw someone's leg right in front of her face. Tears appeared in her eyes, and Si Yun raised her head to look at the person in front of her. A warrior with red hair stood there and ate a burger, and at the same time said that it looks like this is Yang's house. But then he drew attention to the girl who was lying on the floor next to him. In a trembling voice, she asked her for help and said that she was in danger. The warrior with red hair looked at her with surprise and pity, and then made a decision. He shoved the burger into her mouth. The warrior said that he did not have money with him, but if she was hungry, she could eat his burger. After a few seconds, he asked the girl how she was doing and advised her not to rush. Si Yun couldn't say anything, but then she realized that she needed to act immediately. She knocked the burger out of the hands of the red-haired warrior and loudly shouted for him to be careful. When Gong, that was the name of the warrior with red hair, turned his head to the left, he saw that someone was approaching. It was a man in a black suit, and he was very quickly trying to get closer and strike. For the warrior, it all looked like something out of a movie, and the enemy was moving very slowly towards him. His hand was getting closer and closer, and the gong understood this. At the very last moment he dodged this blow, and also realized that he needed to counterattack. He raised his leg to strike his opponent, and he succeeded. The man in black rushed forward even faster, but now changed his trajectory. He flew several meters forward and then crashed into a concrete wall and fell. Gong began to shout that this man scared him and advised him not to run through the streets so strangely. Well then the black man stood up, and it was clear that he didn't care about these attacks. His eyes opened very wide and at that moment everyone realized that he was not going to give up. The girl was still on the ground and very scared, watching everything that was happening. Suddenly she saw this man in black begin to run towards her in order to attack. Gong didn't really like this, and he began to think about what needed to be done in this situation. A moment, and a smile appeared on his face, because for him this opponent acted very slowly. He kicked the man in black at the head at the most opportune moment. This caused the enemy to fly away, but this time he did not fall to the ground because he slowed down with his feet. Overall, he looked rather strange, and it seemed that the damage was not going through him. His eyes looked even more fierce and he was ready to counterattack. But then Gong jumped up and kicked him again right in the face. The man in black flew away and fell to the floor, but did not intend to lie there for long. He started to get up very strangely. And the warrior with red hair said that he reminds him of the guy he is looking for. For the topic, Gong asked how he could get up so calmly after so many blows. But the man did not answer, but only fell a little to the floor. Then Gong laughed and said that after all, this was an ordinary person. The man's gaze was still quite crazy, and he looked frightening to say the least. After he sat for a while, he jumped away from the place where he was and jumped over the fence. Then the warrior with red hair said that this fight was even more boring than he expected. Then Gong and the girl heard a very strange sound to which they turned their heads. It was Father Yang, and he was vomiting on the floor because he had eaten too many pills. Everyone was very scared when she saw this, and at that very second she realized that she needed help. She began to run towards Yang's apartment in order to help her father. Gong looked after her with quite interest and realized that he needed to follow her. When he entered Yang's apartment, he witnessed the father of the family vomiting on the floor. 
The warrior did not understand why drink so much if everything comes out anyway. The girl looked at the pills that were lying on the table and said that she was calling an ambulance. To the red-haired warrior, these pills seemed quite familiar. Moreover, it seemed to Gong that he had seen them quite recently. He tried to understand where he saw them last time, and the memory suddenly appeared. That evening when he asked Joe what he was doing, he told him to look at the computer. Joe was working on a toy and said that for people to become toys, they need to disappear from the face of the earth. At that moment, Gong drew attention to the screen, there was information about the pills. It was written that they should be used with caution, an overdose can lead to death. Gung came to you only when he heard that the girl turned to him. He turned his head towards her to find out what she wanted from him. The girl asked if the warrior was wounded, since I remember well how the duel had just taken place. Gong replied that of course he was not injured, because he was a very professional warrior. The girl said that she was glad and also thanked Gong for saving her. Then the guy said that it was just one burger, and added that she would write a verse when she gets her salary. The girl said that she was not talking about the burger, but about the fact that he saved her life by protecting her from that man. Well then the guy said that he just wanted to punch that man because he felt like it. The girl apologized and didn't know what to say after wording the words like that. Meanwhile, Gong took out a map and was thinking about why Yang doesn't appear in this apartment. After all, he was sure that the guy would be here, but only other people walk here. He looked intently at this card, and this could not help but attract the girl's attention. She recognized her friend in the illustration and immediately asked the man where he got it from. Gong immediately walked away and said that it was none of this girl's business, then she asked why he was looking for Yang. Then the guy realized that perhaps through the girl it would be possible to contact him and he asked if she had seen him. C snatched this card from the guy's hands to take a closer look. The warrior with red hair didn't really like this, but there was no other way to know. The girl offered to look for Yang together, for the reason that she, too, had been looking for him for a long time. For some time the gong was silent and just looked into her eyes, thinking about whether this was beneficial. The girl wasn't sure, now she couldn't stay away any longer. After all, she had many tasks ahead of her, first she needed to find out who that suspicious man was. After all, it became obvious to her that he was somehow involved in what happened to her father. Moreover, this man was somehow connected with Yang, which means he needs to be found. Perhaps in this situation she will be able to find her father, and this was practically the meaning of the girl's life. She was sure that there was no other explanation for this, and it seemed that her guesses were valid. All because the girl thought that her father could not kill her mother, he simply protected her. Then she concluded that the real killer was that suspicious man. June, who was in the cell at that time, said that it was he who killed his wife. Ian was very surprised when he heard this, because he already knew a similar story. Then June said that after his daughter's graduation they went home and he began to feel strange. In his opinion, then they used the same drugs that they inject before the battle, and in this state he killed his wife. Then the guy remembered what June had told about his daughter, and decided to ask how she was doing. June told him that he himself would like to know about it, because the last time he saw her was at graduation. And all he wanted to know about his daughter was whether she was alive. For some time, Ian was silent and tried to put together several sentences he heard from June into a puzzle. The guy said that his friend said that the same thing happened to her father. At that moment, June had a little hope in his head, and he believed it. Young said that her friend's father also disappeared after he killed his wife. But the girl also said that she never believed the official version that was voiced by the police. She said that her father, who never raised a hand against her, could not have done such a thing. She believes that her father will return someday. And she never moved and still lives in the same house. Everything is fine with her. She has many friends who communicate with her as if nothing had happened. He added that this girl has an almost ideal life, which she holds on to very well. Why did he look towards June's camera and say that his friend's name is Siyun? When the man heard this, he was very surprised and was silent for some time from shock. He could not believe that after such a time some stranger from the cell would tell him such important information. And the realization that this had finally happened gave him hope. He said that he was glad that all his prayers to God were finally answered. He prayed for so long that everything would be fine with his daughter and that she would live a normal life. Tears began to fall from the man's eyes, this happened for the first time in decades. When a drop of tears fell on the floor, the sound and the silence that was in these rooms was quite loud. June began to cry and laugh, pronouncing the name of his brave daughter. 
Yang, in turn, did not show any emotions, but only looked towards Jun's camera from time to time. He no longer knew how long they spent there. But when people shouted that they were hungry, the guy noticed that they were being given food. The office worker really didn't like that the food was given even without a plate or any napkin. But Ian understood that he needed to eat everything that was given to him in order to survive and gain strength. Once every few days the water was turned on, and this meant that I needed to wash myself. Ian, like everyone else, loved this day very much, because at this moment you could feel alive for several minutes. But this feeling quickly passed, although the guy was glad to feel it at least sometimes. The Yakuza member stood there and didn't like to wash himself, since the water from these pipes was simply icy. The mercenary kept thinking that this newcomer was doing a much better job than he initially expected. Yana also learned that when the red light comes on, it means that gas will flow. And this in turn means that in a few minutes the duel will take place. Yang had her own plan for how to behave when gas was released into the room. Approximately 30 minutes passed between the release of gas and the opening of the chambers. Until this time, he had held his breath and pretended to be unconscious. All he was thinking about at this time was where he was now. And of course, about whether he has a chance to get out of this impregnable prison. It was necessary to understand whether there was a way out here, and if there was, whether it was guarded. While they were carrying him, he tried to remember everything he saw, every passage. And in his head he built a plan for this complex in order to use it during his escape. He realized that the prison was located separately from the entire complex. Not far from there there is a room in which they were drugged, you can walk to it in just a few minutes. The closest thing to this room is the elevator that led to the arena, but to get there you need to walk along the corridor. Ian also realized that there were conditions under which he would be able to take advantage of all this. And when he went up to the arena, he always remembered this condition. Every time I saw an enemy in front of me, I realized that escape would not be so simple. After all, Ian, in order to get out, you need to survive the battle with zombies. When the Yakuza came on the ringtone he heard the man who brought him into street fighting. He told him that today Sandu would kill his first man. And he added that this time you can even give your life for the organization. The Yakuza understood his order, and in a distraught state began to run towards the enemy. In front of him, he did not see Yang, but saw only the grey image of a man who was hostile. He struck the first blow, but the guy managed to dodge it quite easily. After this, the Yakuza began to deliver even more blows, but Yang was able to dodge them too. After one of the blows, he clearly grabbed the bald Sandu by the head in order to carry out one attack. Holding his opponent's head, he struck him in the back of the head directly with his knee. Yang knew that under the influence of the drug, the enemy loses all reason and begins to fight like the possessed. Even after the guy kneed him with all his might, the guy was still conscious. In his eyes, he saw only the enemy, and understood that this was his only goal. Yang very quickly realized that compared to his previous opponent, this one was much stronger and faster. He struck much more violently, and moreover, their speed was greater. Having turned from one of the horizontal blows, Yang, being practically on the floor, struck with his heel on the chin. After that, he straightened out and straightened his head in order to look around. Why did he take a stance because he saw that the enemy was already approaching closer. Sandu came as close as possible and began to attack directly at Yang's block. The guy realized that all he needed was to personally go into the gap to attack when the enemy was rushing forward. When dozens of blows flew across the guy's body, his gaze remained the same indifferent. But this did not mean that the guy was not focused, because as soon as he found the moment, he took advantage of it. The second Sandu opened up for attack, Yang hit him with all his might. Because of this, the enemy, after just one blow, was already lying on the floor and not moving. Moreover, his mouth was open and a normal person would have passed out long ago. But Ian understood, looking at his immobilized body, that this was not all. The problem will come quite soon, and Yana concluded this after the previous fight. Ever since the fight with the office worker, he believed that the fight ends when the enemy loses consciousness. After all, then he was able to send his body straight into one of the surveillance cameras with a rather powerful blow. But after his body broke these cameras, Ian realized that everything was not so simple. It is after this moment that the real battle begins. The drug penetrates the body and awakens a monster who thirsts only for blood. At that moment, even the office worker looked like a real killing machine. There was a similar situation in the fight with the Yakuza, and the guy understood why the audience came. 
They want to see zombies who fight until the end until he or his opponent dies. Sandu's eyes were still maddened, only the enemy was visible in them. And the drugs made Sanda think that Ian killed all his friends and the entire Yakuza organization. Because of this, he saw his closest friend ordering him to sacrifice himself in order to avenge everyone. All that was in Sandu's head now was an order that he just needed to kill the enemy. He began to run with all his legs in order to break through the block in which Ian stood. When he ran close enough, I delivered a very strong blow with my left hand to Yang's elbow. At that moment, the guy analyzed the damage received and realized that the enemy had become much stronger. Even if he doesn't feel pain, he obviously can't let the opponent hit him like that again. Then the guy focused and realized that he needed to strike back. He also realized that the enemy would be in this state for only three minutes, but even that was already a lot. He struck Sandu in the face with his hand, but he hardly moved from his place. Instead, the Yakuza made a pass at the legs and grabbed his opponent. The guy stood point blank and tried to slow him down, but Sandu's effort was stronger. He looked like a crazed zombie, and moved towards the enemy with great force. For a while, Ian tried to block it, but after a few seconds it became impossible. The guy slipped and realized that Sandu was moving forward quite effectively. This uncertainty on Yang's face was noticeable, since he understood that nothing could be done in this situation. A moment later, Sandu raised the body of his opponent, and the guy realized what this would lead to. Yang fell to the floor and now the enemy had the opportunity for simple attacks on him. And so it happened, he himself would begin to deliver multiple strong blows to the guy's body. Ian understood that this situation was very dangerous and he needed to escape from capture immediately. He decided to take advantage of the fact that this entire battle took place on a substrate of sand. So he grabbed a small bunch of this sand and threw it right into the eyes of the garden. Even though the enemy was mad, he still felt something was wrong when a pile of sand got into his eyes. Then Ian realized that he could do a fairly simple grab by placing the opponent's head between his legs. He closed the lock at his neck with all his strength, thereby blocking the flow of air to Sandu's brain. His head immediately began to turn red and he tried to take in more air. He held it like that for literally 10 seconds, it was noticeable that Sandu lost consciousness. The only way is to induce fainting and wait until the effect of the drug wears off. During this time, the drug slowly dissipates and the body loses all the strength gained. Sandu then turned back into an ordinary person with ordinary abilities. You could hear the audience being indignant, saying that they felt deja vu, and this match was more like MMA. Someone even suggested that they forgot to drug Yang again. Even if Yang had no strength left after the battle, he still went to prison every time. When they carried him, he opened his eyes and looked around, pretending to be unconscious. And at that moment when they brought him to his cell, he closed his eyes and still pretended to be disconnected. Just like this time, the warden approached the cell and stopped near the entrance to it. After that, without thinking, he threw Yang's body straight inside. Then he very quickly closed the gate, although he understood that the guy was passed out. The same thing happened again, despite the fact that physical abilities were changing, Yang's mind remained untouched. He didn't understand how to awaken the monster in the guy, because he was not like everyone else, this guy curbed his instincts. Moreover, despite the fact that he fought only twice, he perfectly understood and adapted to this kind of fight. And this meant that the sponsor would not last long. Watching such battles, and it was necessary to field a much stronger opponent. This could put Yang's life in danger, but the overseer felt that soon he would fight as the customer wanted. Of course, at this moment, the warden was thinking about the ideal option for sparring with Yang. This option was the one who dealt with all his opponents very professionally. A real monster who killed 123 opponents in his 124 matches. This opponent was the strongest fighter, an unknown military mercenary. Meanwhile, Joe watched the battles take place through his computer screen. They looked very bloody, and all the opponents who were drugged were constantly killing someone. There were corpses everywhere, and Joe at first really enjoyed watching people kill. They all looked just crazy, and you could see at least one death every day. But very quickly Joe got tired of it all, and he said that he wanted to see something new. Then he received a call from the warden on his phone, and Joe was interested in talking to him. He looked towards the phone and extended his hand to take it. When he picked up the phone, he greeted the warden and said that he was listening. Rub said that he wanted to put Yang with an unknown mercenary and asked what he thought about it. 
Joe asked for what purpose the warden wants to pit him against the strongest fighter suddenly. Then Grandfather said that I was much more experienced than expected and his body did not respond to the drug properly. He also added that other sponsors are unhappy with his fights, so he needs a strong opponent to get involved. Then Joe told the warden not to forget that, first of all, zombie fights were intended only for his entertainment. He also added that it would be good to keep in mind who the overseer owes this work to. At the end of his call, he said that the zombie fights would be held as Joe wanted. Grandfather said that he understood and Joe continued by saying that until the drug finally takes effect, you need to continue to select doses. After that, he did not hear any response from the warden and immediately disconnected. He really didn't like the way things were done in this prison, but he didn't like something else even more. He asked someone how long he would stand there. Next to him stood the man who was dressed completely in black clothes. Well then Joe asked if this man wanted an antidote, or came for something else. This antidote was standing right on the table next to Joe, and it was obvious that the man was hinting at it. His face looked very tense and you could see all the veins. Then Joe said that only those who successfully complete tasks receive the antidote. And then he asked the man what he would tell Joe to do if he screwed up again. After all, not only did this man fail in his task to eliminate the target, he also left witnesses. And this witness was the daughter of one of the participants in the games, along with Joe's simple-minded brother, named Gong. He took the man by the neck and said that before the media began to act, he needed to deal with this girl and Yang's father. But at that second, the man in black felt unbearable pain in his body. Because of this, his body relaxed as much as possible, and he stopped feeling his muscles. The body completely fell to the floor and the man could not move at all. Opening the antidote, Joe said that he wanted to see Yang's animal instincts as soon as possible. And even if he gets an overdose, Joe will enjoy a great fight for the first time or another weakling in need of an antidote. But he wanted to look at him more constantly to satisfy his hunger. After Joe said this, he poured the contents of the bottle onto the floor. The color of this antidote was quite interesting and quite bright. The flow of this antidote created a small puddle near the mouth of the man who was lying on the floor. Move his tongue, he began to lick this medicine, and felt relief. Suddenly he began to feel that he was getting better and better and more pain was disappearing in his joints. The most recent one was muscle pain, and it also disappeared after a short time. Joe stood over this lifeless body and said that he was giving the omission one last chance. After that, he turned around and slammed the antidote bottle very loudly on the table. Walking away, he said that it was time to finish and go to rest. It was already evening, and brother Joe had also returned home. Gongo was sitting at the table and said that he had already been very hungry all day. Joe, being at the table, said that today they were having especially heather lamb for lunch. Guoying said that he doesn't really like tenderloin because it is small, and asked for chicken breast from the refrigerator. Joe said he could take it and bring it to the table. But suddenly he saw an incoming call that came to his brother's phone. He took a closer look to understand who was calling him. Joe was very surprised when he saw that his brother was receiving a call from a girl who was Jan's friend. Gong really didn't like that she was calling him and he said that he was tired of this girl. Joe said that he was surprised that he had found someone to talk to, and it wasn't even Joe himself. Moreover, he said that what surprised him most was that it was a woman's name. Then Gong started screaming and saying that this person was not a girl. Then he said that Si Yun is a girl's name, and it is obvious that this is a girl. Gonga thought for a while, meanwhile the phone was still ringing. After Gong thought, he said that this girl is not even his friend. The phone was still ringing, so Gong knew that some decision had to be made. He told his brother that he would come soon, meanwhile Joe asked to introduce him to her. The warrior with red hair left very quickly and closed the doors behind him. Joe continued to eat and think that something he had long feared had come true. He allows his brother, who wants to know everything about Joe, to get closer to the one who wants to figure it out. Joe apologized to himself and said that he couldn't let this happen to his brother. He also added that pursuing the truth would only bring pain and suffering to his brother. After all, when people begin to suspect, they never stop. From the moment the brother began his investigation, he took the wrong path, and it is sad to see. John didn't really want to admit it, but from that second his own brother became prey. Meanwhile, the red-haired warrior had already headed towards the local train station. There were a lot of people there, but among the crowd he was able to find a girl he knew. He said that she was already tired of him with her calls and asked what she needed from him. Then she said that they wanted to find Yang together, 
so we need to act together. She said that she found a phone in Yang's house where it was written about some kind of fight club. Ganga said that in this message they talk about street fights. Where did Yang go? The girl was surprised and asked the guy if he meant that Yang fought for money. Then the racer said that Yana fought very well and even managed to get into the big arena. Then the girl asked her this very arena is located, because this is the key to the solution. Gong replied that it was no longer located anywhere because Yang made a mess there and because of this he was kidnapped and a fight ensued. During this fight, it turned out that the founder of the big arena died and Ian ended up in the hospital and he saved him. He shouted that after that the guy simply disappeared, and added that the memories of this made him angry. Then the girl realized that the injuries and abrasions were due to street fighting, and the people the police were looking for were not moneylenders. Then she told Gong to forget about the arena, and asked him to hold those street fights. The guy said that he wouldn't do it because he didn't want to, and he skipped dinner altogether. Then Sis asked if he wanted to find Yang, he replied that this was true. Then she said that it is obvious that Gong does not know where to look for him, he replied that this is true. After that, she said that Gong needed to find people who were connected with Yang, he said that this was true. Then she started screaming and said that in this case Gong needs to help the girl, at this point the guy was not sure. The girl said that he didn't even say his name, but he comes here and says that he doesn't know anything. The girl said that she really wanted to find Yang, and asked Gong to take him there. The guy asked if what Si was saying now was true, and the girl shouted that of course it was true, they were a team. Gong thought for a while, but after a few seconds he made a decision. He started running up the stairs and ordered the girl to quickly run after him. Then Si thought that it was with street fighting that she should start searching for Yang. You can also find information about that strange man in the hood. After all, it has already become clear that he is connected with all these cases and he is a rather important character. You also need to find the place where he is hiding and ultimately find his father. After some time, the gong brought the girl to the closed terminal of this station. He pushed aside several people who were standing in a circle with his hands and approached the organizer. The organizer immediately asked what gong was doing here and how he knew about this place. The battle continued as before, but a small group stepped aside to talk. The organizer asked if they were both looking for Ian, and if they knew anyone who was connected with him except him. The girl said that it was true and the guy suddenly disappeared. And on top of that, some unknown man attacked him. She asked if the organizer knew anyone who was Yang's enemy or maybe someone threatened. Then he said that the people behind him were other fighters. They all lost to him so everyone can be suspected. But it could also be security guards and employees who lost their jobs because of him. Or perhaps he also had one enemy who is not so far away. At this moment, the organizer looked at Gong, who looked back at him. There was confusion in the eyes of the red-haired warrior, and suddenly he remembered something. He said that he forgot something and intended to correct this one. After that, he hit the organizer with great force directly in the face with his fist. The man's body was thrown a short distance, and blood immediately began to flow from the wear and tear. The girl asked what he was doing, and the gong replied that he remembered something, that he had to hit him when they met. When she asked what was the reason for this, Gong couldn't remember it, but he assumed that it was because he had made him angry. The organizer could not breathe for some time, but when the blood completely came out of his nose, he was able to take a few breaths. The girl bent down to help him, and the organizer said that since the girl was looking for Ian, she must be his friend. So he advised her to choose her friends better. Because the red-haired one wants to find Yang in order to kill him, because he has already come here before. He said that the gong is a killer, and not someone you can trust. After that, the girl turned her head to look at this same gong. She asked him if it was true and if gong had killed anyone before. Then the red-haired warrior said that he once killed someone in a street fight because the blows were very strong. Then the girl realized that this man needed me as a punching bag. By this time, the organizer had already recovered and was able to get back on his feet. He told the group to follow him because he knew a person who could help. The three of them began to walk in the direction of this organizer. At the very last, the gong began to sound, since he was still thinking for some time whether it was worth doing this. But as soon as he was about to take the first step, he realized that there was no need to do this. The wind organizer ordered him to stop and not take a step. The red-haired warrior was very surprised when he heard this and asked why. The organizer said that he doesn't want to talk to the killer, so only C goes, or they both leave. Gong didn't like this very much, 
but he understood that in this situation there was no other way out. The girl felt even more secure when the organizer voiced this. They continued their movement and the gong, in turn, began to stand still. He didn't wait too long and went to his home in the hope of finding Joe there. But when he came home he shouted Joe's name, but no one answered. He began to walk around different rooms and try to find him, but it was unsuccessful. Gong went into literally every room, but his brother was still not there. He called Joe names, but even after he did this, nothing happened. Then he concluded that his brother really seemed to have left and he himself was at home. But suddenly Gong noticed something very interesting on Joe's desk. It was his laptop, and it was turned on and with the password entered. He became interested in what was written there, because he remembered that Joe was working on a new toy. When he opened the very first page, he was very surprised to see a familiar face there. It was a directory of zombie fight participants, and on the first page was information about Yang. Gong didn't understand why information about who he was looking for appeared here. Very soon the realization came to him that all this time this guy was the toy. He began to remember the moment when he came home and noticed that Joe had come home early from work. Then his brother said that he saw an interesting guy. And when Gong came to the security guard of the organization, he asked what the guy's name was. He was told that his name was Yen, and this was well etched in the head of the red-haired warrior. He realized that this was the same arena, and he could have guessed this before. The brother also realized that Joe had seen in the stories that the seller of one of the players had died. The day the gong saved Yang's life was the same day the events he remembered happened. The owner of the arena was also one of the sellers with whom the deal was cancelled. Then Gong realized that all this time his brother had been lying to him and was hiding a lot. But he was very interested to find out who was the seller that Ian was able to sell. He moved his mouse a few centimeters to open a new tab. And when I noticed a very familiar face, to put it mildly, I was shocked. This seller was the organizer, and it was indicated that the transaction was completed successfully. At that moment, Yana, who woke up in his cell, said that he remembered something. June was very surprised that the newcomer had just returned from the fight, and a minute later he came to his senses. The guy said that when he was in the hospital, Joe visited him, but the kidnapper came separately. Then Joe came and congratulated Ian on his discharge, while holding something in his hand. He brought in a basket of flowers, and when Ian saw this he got a little angry. Joe said that he came to say goodbye and ask for forgiveness, adding that he was sorry for being so persistent. He also smiled and told Yang that he would no longer stutter about any fights and wished him good luck. After that, he left the room and did not say anything more to him. At that moment, Ian thought that this Joe was acting like a real eccentric. The guy was discharged from the hospital and when he came out he met his friend. He saw his car from afar, and was surprised that he came at all. It was the organizer, and he invited Yang to take him home in his car. At first the guy didn't understand what this proposal was for, but in the end he agreed to it. He got into the car and they set off on the path that Ian himself had appointed. The guy asked how the organizer knew that he was in the hospital, but he answered that he told everything even though he was still in prison. He also said that Chion showed up at Yang's house yesterday because the organizer told him that the guy was in danger. At that moment, Yang remembered the moment when Cole ordered him to run away from here. Yang asked the organizer how Chul knew his address because he didn't tell him anyone. The organizer said that during all this time he had found out a lot of information about Yang. This alarmed the guy a little. But the organizer said that in fact he is not one of those who makes money by betting. His main income is from selling fighters, and he was afraid that the booty would be taken away from him by the boss of the organization. After all, then the boss beat him and took a photograph in order to send it to all the betters. And when he told the organizer that next time he would go to Yang, the organizer realized that he needed to act immediately. He waited until they left and took the most correct actions. The man took out his phone and immediately called Chiyo. For a long time he couldn't get through to him, but when he got through, he immediately said hello. The organizer said that he had a small task for Cole. He said that he should find Yang to tell him to run away because the guy is in danger. Then after he said this, he turned off the phone and began to feel angry. The organizer could not believe that the boss would take such a valuable product from him. The man smiled very broadly and thanked Ian for surviving. The guy was very scared when he heard this wording. He turned his head because he heard that there was some noise in the back seat. The same man in a black robe appeared who was holding a syringe with drugs in one of his hands. Grabbing Yang with one hand and injecting the drugs with the other hand, he instantly put him to sleep. 
All that the guy managed to see for the last time was how the organizer called someone. He told Joe that now he could transfer money to him, because the task was completed. Yang's eyes immediately began to darken and he saw only memories in front of him. Especially the moment and the organizer told Cho that she and Yang would come separately later. And when they sat down, they sat down in the seats that were right next to Joe. It was at that moment that Joe began to closely observe the man who was sitting next to him. The organizer glanced at him so that he could understand who the product was. But even without these gestures, Joe already realized that he was quite interested. When they went out to talk, Joe told the organizer that he was interested in seeing Yana in battle. Meanwhile, the girl walked with the organizer who told her that the man knew Yang very closely and also valued him very much. He opened the doors and said that she meant a meeting with this man and he was already here. Joe sat at the table and said that he was very glad that Si Yun came here. Then the girl asked who he was, since she didn't understand yet. Brother Joe, meanwhile, went crazy. He ran down the street and shouted his name constantly. In addition, he ran along the roadway and ordered him not to dare take what belonged to him. The organizer brought a couple of cups of warming drink while Joe and the girl sat down at the table. Joe said that he heard that the girl was looking for Ian. He introduced himself, after which the girl did so and they shook hands. Then she remembered that Joe was the person who supported her to the university to see Jan. She began to bombard him with questions, asking about what happened to Ian and where he went. She also wondered if Joe knew that he fought in street fights, and what the relationship was between them. After that, she asked when he last saw Yang, and why his discharge from the hospital coincided with the day of his disappearance. Then Joe smiled and said that this was quite a lot of questions. The girl began to apologize for putting so much pressure on a stranger. Well then Joe said that everything was all right for a man whose heart was pounding so wildly. He also added that the girl had already learned so much, even about secret street fights. Joe himself found it strange, and he said that there was no warmth between the two of them. But nevertheless, she was very desperately looking for Yang. He asked why this was happening. The girl became quiet for a while, as she needed to think a little. She just said that they are friends, so this is a motive for helping each other. Joe didn't really believe these words, and asked if this was the only reason for searching for his friend. He took a sip of his drink and said that perhaps the reason was not only to find Yang, but also to find his father. The girl was surprised when she heard Joe say this, because this information is quite secret. But then Joe added that the girl was investigating these related cases because she wanted to get her father acquitted of murder. After that, the girl got up from the table because after such an exact phrase it was already difficult to listen to this. And now she asked us what Joe just said. Joe said that he was just thinking out loud and throwing out different options. He evoked on his face a rather absurd emotion that should have brought surprise. The girl didn't understand how this guy knew everything about her plans. She came to the realization that he was somehow connected with that man in black. Looking at the organizer, she thought that this guy was also somehow tied up. The organizers were a little nervous, as they realized that it looked like the girl was beginning to understand everything. Joe added that C's father killed her mother and that must be hard to comprehend. Especially seeing everything with your own eyes. He also said that it would be even worse if someone else died trying to find her father. Then the girl told Joe to shut up, and she said it in a rather quiet voice. But Joe followed this order and said nothing for a few seconds. She, in turn, said that all these articles are lies, as her father once did not dare to do this. But then Joe said that such confidence was unnecessary, because only her father left fingerprints on her mother's body. And moreover, the knife with which her mother defended herself was the blood of only her father. And in fact, she is a reality witness that no one broke into the house. After all, she herself personally opened the apartment door. The girl started screaming, asking Joe how he knew all this. She said that the man himself understands that this whole story is made up, and that psychopath killed her mother. Just like Ian tried to fake his father's suicide. Then Joe said that it looked like he would have to spend more time, because that day he was near the university and his attention was focused only on Yang. He was surprised to learn that they lived in the same house, but I couldn't think that the two of them were friends. Moreover, he could not even imagine in his head that she would ever talk to his father. If Joe had paid a little more attention, the girl wouldn't have become the psychopath's next target. I still didn't understand what Joe was talking about now, but she tried very hard to understand. 
Joe raised his eyes and looked straight into C's soul and said that when the girl began the investigation, she signed the death warrant. Next, he said that he called the girl here to say that the pointless investigation needed to be completed. This must be done for the reason that if she continues, the psychopath will follow her too. Coming closer, he said that he sincerely wants to save her, so the girl should listen carefully. After all, there are dozens of serious people behind the scenes, but the girl is all alone and doesn't even smell like victory. She thought very hard for a while, and then she was able to think of one question. She asked Joe why he needed all this, including Ian. Joe immediately replied that he needed all this for only one purpose, entertainment. After all, in fact, all this began for this guy since childhood. His first toys were insects, and he quickly found a use for them. He first collected them, and then caught special boxes. He released them into a larger box and made them fight, rewarding them with food. But after just a few months, the insect battles seemed boring to him and he forgot about them. But the baby wanted more entertainment, and he had to try hard to find it. So, as he grew and became wiser, he discovered that the toys needed to provide satisfaction needed to be stronger. And he continued to look for more and more new toys until he found an excellent toy, a man. Joe said that that's all and he wants to see people as toys, and that's why he takes them. The girl quietly said the word toys several times. She couldn't believe that for Joe they were just for games, and even her father. Then the man said that the girl had nothing to hope for, much less demand, because the people she was trying to save had long been dead. In any case, he said that the girl should thank him for still being alive and run away quickly. He said that this was his last advice and he and the organizer began to leave this balcony. Before leaving, the organizer glanced at the girl. But then he turned his head to Joe and began to leave with him. The organizer asked if he was going to leave after telling the girl all this, hinting at the danger. But Joe replied that all people are the same in the face of death and do everything to survive. He also added that the only thing he has to worry about is his little brother. After that, Joe asked the organizer how he removed him, and he said that he simply didn't want to talk to the killer and that's all. Joe said it was a pretty good job and added that it was quite surprising that he left without making a fuss. He also made the assumption that perhaps he showed weakness because he was not indifferent to this girl. And he concluded that he found something in her since he had to despise someone so scared. At that moment, the girl was left on her own and didn't know at all how to move on and what to do. She was left alone with herself and no one was even going to help her. Because of this, she simply stood still and tried to sort out the thoughts that came into her head. These thoughts were very different, but then it was time to visualize. She imagined that a huge flame was creeping up on her from a short distance. This flame becomes wider and larger until it covers the girl with a wall. C said that her dad always told her one very important thing. No matter how huge and fierce the flame is, saving people from it is the true meaning of life. And he said this not only about his work as a fireman. When they first met with Gong, he told her that since the girl was scared, it was better for her to give up. He also said to give her the card, because he saw that her hands were also shaking. Well, then the girl did not give up this card and grabbed it with her hand. She said that even if she is scared, this is not a reason to retreat, and Gong has no idea what she is capable of. At that moment the guy started thinking, he looked at this little girl and saw strength in her. She was not going to run away. And even if she dies without achieving anything, if there are people who need help, then she is ready. The girl told herself that she would save everyone no matter what. Meanwhile, Joe's younger brother had just run up to him. He looked quite angry and began to run towards his older brother at great speed. He ran fast enough, with one blow of his foot he was able to close the doors that Joe just wanted to open. Then he stopped and began to hold the doors with his hand. Joe was very surprised when he saw this and expected his brother to somehow explain himself. But instead, Gung was silent, he was just trying to catch his breath and collect his thoughts in his head. With a very loud gong voice he ordered his elder brother to return Yang to him. Then Joe said that he had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. Then Gong got even angrier and said that on the day his brother came to watch the game, Yang also performed. And moreover, the date of death of his seller coincides with the date of death of the owner of the arena, and the organizer is his second seller. Then he asked how he knew all this, since he hardly guessed it himself. Gong said that he learned all this from the laptop that his older brother forgot to lock. Joe remembered the laptop, and then a small smile appeared on his face. He said that Gong was right and he locked Yang in his toy box. 
Gong said that he would break his box of toys and get Yang out of there, then Zhou asked if he knew and where she was. The warrior with red hair said that he knows that Zhou's company has an underground arena. At the same time, he pointed his finger directly at Zhou, and he stopped smiling. After that, he turned his gaze to the side to see who was there. But on that side there was only an empty road on which there was not a single car. He turned his gaze to the other side to see if anyone was there. And there was no one on that side either, just empty buildings near the building. It looks like the organizer Joe and the gong were completely surrounded by no one and you could say whatever you want. Joe asked his brother how he knew this because he had never told him about it. Then Gong said that Joe had been telling him about this for a very long time, and asked if he thought he was so stupid. Joe realized that his brother's memory was starting to return and he needed to give him the pills as soon as possible. He said that he understood everything and offered the gong to take him to that place, inviting him into his car. But suddenly his younger brother began to run away and said that he no longer respected Joe and now he would find Jan himself. For the first time in a long time, Joe became nervous and asked his brother to stay put. By that time, things were going rather strangely at the headquarters of one of Joe's organizations. One of the guards said that the boss called and said that an uninvited guest would come in a while. Moreover, he also mentioned that this is some kind of crazy person, you need to be careful with him. The second guard said that there is nothing to worry about, even if the boss reported him, it is unlikely that he is an ordinary person. Plus there are quite a lot of them, so it looks like the boss doubts them. They wondered what kind of immortal was there, but suddenly one of the guards heard a knock near the front door. It was just the warrior with the red voices and he ordered the guards inside to open the doors. Then this guard did not understand that it would come at all and what he needed. But the security guard who was called said that it was the one who went who was supposed to come. Then he took a huge cobblestone that was nearby and said Sesame, open up. He threw the stone through the glass with all his might and climbed inside the building. The guards were given orders to destroy this intruder immediately. A rather fierce battle began, which the red-haired warrior fought unquestioningly. He dealt with opponents left and right, striking them with multiple blows. It was very easy for him and he dealt with all of them with a smile on his face. He used glass to disperse it with blows and drive enemies away. Despite the fact that the speed of this glass was not particularly high, it still immobilized all the guards. And in combination with the fact that there were feet walking after this entrance glass, it was generally fatal. Then the guard ordered everyone to step back and said that they would simply surround him and finish him off. The guards did just that, everyone who had remained conscious until that moment retreated. Then Gong said that the guards are working like a group of ants, and it seems that where they are standing is the entrance to the arena. They were very angry, and at the same time some huge thug was approaching them from behind. He asked why they still haven't dealt with this guy, and said that he would knock him out with one blow. After he pushed them aside, he stood up and expected a blow from the red-voiced guy. But then he made a dash to launch an attack on his own. But at that moment the gong had several glasses in its hands and he decided to use them. Turning around a little, he threw these fragments directly at his opponent. But the thug managed to dodge them quite quickly, and he continued his movement straight. Gong was very surprised that the enemy was able to move so quickly. And when this thug got close enough, the red-haired warrior decided to kick. But when the leg was already near the enemy's head, he caught it with one hand. After that, he loudly said that the red-haired man was finished, since now he could not move. However, instead of trying to break free, Yi Gong, on the contrary, relaxed the only leg that was holding him. And he strained the leg that was behind the back of the bull's head very strongly. He then pushed off the ground with his hand and pulled his body up using the support on his enemy's neck. Thanks to this, he was able to climb directly onto the enemy. And now he had a very good opportunity for an elbow strike right in his face. And so he did, delivered a very strong blow directly to the nose. Because of this, several arteries broke at once and blood began to flow in different directions. At this moment, Gong was laughing, he looked like a real mad fighter. The organizer who stood next to Joe said that no matter how cool his brother was, it was obvious that the security would stop him. He also added that Gong was just an ordinary person, but Joe said that this was not entirely true. Since childhood, his brother achieved everything on his own and was generally an independent child. In the eyes of everyone, he was not a man, but a real prodigy and genius. If some people needed years to reach and achieve their goal, then it would take him only a few days. But after undergoing brain surgery, his talent suddenly disappeared. 
His parents abandoned him, and ten years later, one day, while sorting out toys, Joe noticed him. He saw his younger brother throwing opponents left and right with just one hand. When he saw this, he was very surprised, because when he was little, he did not have such talents. Reuniting with my brother whom Joe hasn't seen in ten years. He felt something. When he saw him, he realized that it was the devil in front of him. Without a coach, he was able to reveal his other talent without much effort. It was the devil's talent, and Joe was very scared when he saw it live. Meanwhile, the gong that was located at the organization's headquarters was very frightening to all the guards that were there. Being on the neck of the strongest of them, he invited them to attack all together. When the guards looked at the face of their leader, they realized that this was a lost cause. Then Gong fell along with the body of this big guy, and was not going to sit still. He pushed away from the place where he was standing and rushed straight into the crowd of guards. Throwing them in different directions, he ran up to the very last one in this line. When he got close enough to him, he asked him for a stone or scissors. Without waiting for any answer, he hit him with all his strength with his fist right in the nose. Then he moved to another enemy who did not even understand what had happened. He took him by the hand and pulled him closer to him. This red-haired warrior easily dealt with all opponents and often threw them at others. During all this, he smiled, because by injuring others he brought himself pleasure. Why did he start running down the corridor right past all these guards? They did not understand what kind of devil this was and how he could be so fast. But suddenly he stopped down the corridor, and all the guards tensed. When he turned his head he said that now it was everyone else's turn. This phrase greatly confused all the guards who were behind him. The red-haired warrior said that now he will solve everything with just one preset. He began to move so quickly that in half a second he was already near the very last guard. He quite easily managed to strike him with a very strong blow with his heel, right in the forehead. Such a blow sent the man flying a couple of meters away. And while he was in flight, Gong even managed to swear at him. Within a few seconds, the red-haired warrior dealt with all the guards who were on the first floor. He raised one of those who was conscious and said that he was confused in this labyrinth and ordered him to show him where the elevator was. Then this man pointed his hand at one of the elevators and said that it was the third one that needed to be used. Gong became very interested when he realized that he finally knew where the entrance was. The Yakuza at that moment was tied to a chair and did not understand why he was still sitting here consciously. He suddenly vomited blood and realized that the warden was standing in front of him. Then this grandfather suddenly stuffed more pills into him and stopped his vomiting with his hand. He added that the third round was lost, and now Sandu's game is over. Meanwhile, people were already waiting for the battle to finally begin in the arena. The two guests talked to each other about the fact that one of the rivals would already have an overdose during the trip. Well, they also understood that there would be a mercenary against him, and he had never lost. Therefore, one of the guests said that there is no need to rush to conclusions, because it is not clear who will be torn apart. Meanwhile, the warden had already placed Sandu's body on the elevator and was preparing to lift it. He pressed the lever, and the elevator slowly began to rise upward. The grandfather also added that he no longer needs to pray for the Yakuza. The elevator began to rise higher and higher, approaching the arena. Meanwhile, the red-haired warrior was also riding in the elevator, and did not understand which button he needed to press, which is why he was angry. Meanwhile, the mercenary had already entered the arena and was looking around. And his opponent also climbed the elevator, and gradually he became worse and worse. A few seconds later he stood up, and everyone saw that today one of the rivals would be drugged. The audience greeted him with applause, as they understood that something very interesting was about to happen. One of the guests asked what was wrong with this fighter. After all, he didn't look like a human, and his friend said that it was clear that it was his first time. He explained to him that this fighter had been injected with the maximum dose of the drug and now his physical abilities had reached their maximum. But he did not have long to live, and at the same time he received incredible power. Meanwhile, the mercenary had already begun to run towards his enemy to deliver the first strike. And he did it quite successfully because he delivered a direct blow directly to the Yakuza's face. But then he realized that the enemy did not care at all about this blow. Instead, he smiled and grabbed the mercenary directly by the face. By taking it in this way, he could easily lift his opponent to a small height. Then he swung very hard and threw the mercenary in the opposite direction. And because of this, this mercenary flew into the protective glass in the arena at great speed. 
Then the Yakut found him running in his direction in order to finish him off quickly. The mercenary tried to get up, but he had absolutely no strength to do so. Then Sandu struck him with his hand directly in the face. There was an ovation in the arena again, everyone really liked how the drugged Yakuza dealt with the mercenary. One of the bones asked whether the mercenary would be able to answer or the match could already be considered over. Well, then his friend said that the most interesting things were just beginning, all due to the fact that at that moment the mercenary began to experience a second wind. His skin began to glow red from the blood that was trying to leave his body. And then he realized that his enemy had one very vulnerable spot that was open. He took his index finger and stabbed his opponent right in the eye. Because of this, the Yakut screamed because despite everything he felt such severe pain. Then the mercenary moved behind him because he understood that Sandu could very quickly switch to himself. He climbed up from behind, climbed onto his shoulders and swung his hand. After that, he hit him with all his strength on the left side of his head with his palm. At first this brought very severe pain to Sand, and he could not throw the enemy off his shoulders. But then this pain became stronger and stronger until a bloody and thick scar appeared on his face. Sandu tried to strike several times blindly, but it was all to no avail. After he struck the second blow and the mercenary blocked it, the mercenary understood how to act. He deflected his opponent's blow to the side and prepared himself. The mercenary stood with his foot very firmly and took the support with it. But a second later the leg was not there due to the fact that he had prepared a rather strong blow. With all the strength he had then, he delivered this blow right between the Yakuza's legs. And after that he swung his hand to deliver another powerful blow. This blow flew straight into the enemy's throat, and because of this he stopped breathing for several seconds. In addition, he felt incredible pain, but was still in fighting condition. Despite the fact that he could hardly see, was breathing difficultly and could barely stand, he was still able to deliver a blow to the mercenary. He stood still and tried to bring himself to his senses while the mercenary lay on the floor. But even lying on the floor, the mercenary was thinking about how to make his next attack. He ran up to his opponent very quickly and swung his left hand no less quickly. By landing a horizontal strike right next to Sandu's neck, he hoped to win quickly. And in fact, the damage from this blow was quite large as the blood scattered in different directions. Sandu felt that he had a real cut under his throat and put his hand to his neck. By that time, the red-haired warrior was already standing behind this Sandu, watching everything. The mercenary stopped the fight and looked at Gong, who was looking into his eyes. Little brother Joe said that this arena is just a real treasure. Joe had never shown him such tough guys, and he asked the mercenary if everyone here was so strong. He started shouting, repeating the name Yang and asking where he is now, he wants to fight right here. Then he grabbed one of the guests in a very rude manner and ordered him to show him where the entrance to the arena was. The guest apologized and said that fights between spectators are strictly prohibited. Gong said that he did not look like a spectator and asked the guest if he thought that he was a weakling like everyone else. Why did he hit this guest several times against the barriers of the arena and ordered him to tell him the password? No one understood who brought this psychopath and they began to scatter in different directions. Although Gong understood that in front of him was ordinary glass, he still did not understand how to get to the mercenary. But suddenly, in the reflection of this glass, he saw that some grandfather was approaching him very close. Literally a moment passed and the warden struck the glass with a very strong blow, but was not far from Gong's body. Looking at his younger brother Joe, the warden asked how he even got here. But the red-haired warrior who had just jumped back could not answer. His gaze was insane, and all he was interested in now was this overseer. He looked at the place where this grandfather hit, and saw that there was literally smoke coming out from under it. It came to him that if he had not dodged, it would have led to irreparable consequences. This action would simply crush Gong's head and turn him into a bloody pulp. From the fact that he began to imagine this, his younger brother Joe began to have a fit and began to scratch himself. The warden came closer and did not understand what was happening with this stranger. The mercenary, meanwhile, felt that something was happening to his body. It was like feeling his mind come back into his head and he now understood what was happening. His mind became more and more clear, and very quickly the mercenary realized that the effects of the drugs were wearing off. It happened so quickly that in just a few seconds he was able to come to his senses. But despite this, he felt exhaustion in his body, causing him to fall dead on the floor. Near him was the immobilized body of his opponent, who was leaning against the transparent wall of the ring. Their fight stopped, and it looks like the end of this fight was quite significant. Suddenly, 
someone hit the glass near which the soldier's body lay with his hand. This arm was pumped up, and it looked like it was one of the fighters. In fact, it was Gong, and he said that he would not hold back and would kill the old man with one blow, and then move on to the rest. His leg tensed up very much and he prepared to launch a very strong attack on his opponent. His speed was quite impressive, and within a few seconds he found himself right next to his grandfather's body. Having launched a kick, he expected that with just one blow he would be able to deal with this opponent. But his grandfather blocked him, and even had time to think that he was not a simple upstart, because his blows almost broke through his defense. However, Gong will then have to use his other arm or leg in order to continue the attack. But despite all these guesses, Gong still stood in the same position on the floor, and hardly moved. Moreover, the rest of his limbs also did not move at all. Only one hand moved a little in the air, preparing for the next blow. The grandfather could not understand why he did nothing, and why he did not move. But suddenly the grandfather's felt a kick right on his face, which was quite sudden. His opponents used the same leg, and it looks like he was still standing on the same leg. This meant that his lower body was as solid as if nailed to the ground, allowing him to stand on one leg. But still, grandfather was also a fairly powerful fighter, so he prepared to carry out a counterattack. Race was definitely not prepared for such an attack, and looked in surprise at his grandfather's hand flying towards him. This blow must have been quite strong, but most of all it caused damage because of its surprise. A second later, the hand reached Gong's face, causing him to become confused for a few seconds. But after a few seconds, just as my grandfather thought that he would throw the enemy far away, Gong was already on his feet. This surprised this grandfather very much, because the movement of this guy was like a spring. He bounced a few meters, and quickly managed to land on the ground without taking damage. Ganga said that his opponent is quite good, since he has such endurance at such an age. But he didn't wait very long, and pushed off from the place where he landed in order to attack again. He bounced away from where she stood after landing, and prepared to strike again. As soon as he landed, he immediately jumped up to hit his grandfather right in the chin with his knee. But the grandfather did not lose consciousness, but, on the contrary, prepared to strike the enemy's unprepared side. A moment, and the grandfather threw the enemy away from him a meter. Gong started screaming about why grandfather was spanking him with his palm, as if he were some kind of midge. He said that his grandfather was disappointing him, and he began to ask if he even wanted to fight. The red-haired warrior realized that his grandfather's first blow could have been crazy. And now he is slower, but at the same time does not evade attacks. It's like hitting a wall. Moreover, given the height and weight of this grandfather, the attacks were too fast. It was boring to tinker with my grandfather for too long for the sake of some kind of victory. While he was thinking about this, this grandfather already noticed that his marriage was a short distance away, and realized that he needed to act. He pushed away from the place where he had been standing all this time, and at high speed prepared to strike. Gong could not understand that this could really happen now, and a second later the enemy's hand was already near his face. Another blow, but the gong didn't even fall to the floor, after all, he managed to slow down quite quickly. Moreover, blood began to flow from his nose, which fell in small droplets onto the floor. It was that attack again, just not showing true strength to his opponent. The guy began to itch again, and the grandfather, meanwhile, did not understand how, after such an attack, he even managed to get up. But he also realized that he needed to end this, since he would have already come to his senses when going to the ring. He prepared to push off from the ground again, and prepared to develop greater speed. Pushing off from the ground, he transferred enormous acceleration to his body and flew towards the enemy. Hitting him again with his hand, he said that Gong seemed to deliberately jump up to distribute the momentum throughout his body. But it looks like this time the guy won't be able to do it, but Gong hasn't yet figured out how. He tried to find the reason why grandfather said this so confidently, and very quickly felt it. To do this, all he had to do was look into his eyes and see what was happening under his feet. Dida deliberately stepped on his foot so that Gong could not jump away. The grandfather dealt a very strong blow, simultaneously stabbing the enemy into the floor. Smoke was coming from the limbs of this red-haired warrior, and the grandfather of course noticed it. Well, he also didn't understand how he defended himself and was able to make a decision so quickly. After all, his attack cannot be dispelled by any defensive stance, and now it seems that this is exactly what happened. Through the enemy's hand, Gong began to shout something, 
but the grandfather did not hear what exactly it was. He loosened his grip a little and tried to hear what this upstart was screaming there. Ganga grabbed the enemy by the fingers and ordered him not to touch his head, because he did not want to have another operation. He managed to free himself from grandfather's grip and jumped some distance away from him. Now he was at a safe distance, and had the strength to carry out a counterattack. Inflicting blows one after another, the grandfather slowly retreated, standing parallel to the defensive stance. During one of the attacks, Dudu suddenly grabbed his opponent's arm in order to twist it and deliver more blows. He twisted Gong's limb, but this time he forgot to step on his foot, thereby immobilizing him. And this was quite a significant mistake, the video guy easily spun around his axis. Moreover, the movement was so fast that he didn't even have time to see how quickly the guy was moving. In his final pose, he took the support with his hand, and his grandfather held him by the other hand. And now he had a direct path to delivering another powerful blow straight to the face. This he did, and the grandfather moved a few steps away from the battlefield, due to the fact that he almost lost consciousness. But more than that, Gong was afraid that after such a powerful attack he did not even fall to the ground, but was still standing on his feet. Having made a sweep, he tried to disturb the enemy's center of gravity, but it seemed that this did not produce results. Even so, he managed to quickly change his stance and stabilize his center of gravity. His legs were incredibly powerful, his upper body had a sense of balance. Grandfather did not understand whether he was born this way or had a wealth of experience. But all he saw in front of him was an insanely fast and very professional warrior. And then the idea was born in his head that both options were possible at once. Blood began to drip from the grandfather, and he understood that he would not be able to fight for so long, he was obviously losing. Blood dripped directly onto the floor, as if reminding him that he didn't have to hold on like this for very long. In his thoughts, he asked Song Ji Won for forgiveness, he was introduced and would not be able to fulfill his promise. After all, not long ago this rich man called him and notified him that a guest was coming. The grandfather listened carefully to the information about this guest, and at the same time looked at his monitor. In this monitor, he saw the culprit, and realized that now they were talking about this person. After all, he ran out to everyone who was in the hall, grabbed one of them and began to hit his head against the wall. Then Song Jo ordered him not to kill him, but to contact him and wait for his arrival. And very quickly the grandfather answered him that he understood the task, and would not harm his life in any way. Grandfather apologized to his master, and the gong heard it, standing at a short distance. He didn't quite understand the meaning of this phrase, but he saw that his grandfather had taken off his outer clothing. After that, he said that in order to end this fight, he must kill this opponent right now. In just a second, he managed to move to the enemy's body and swing his hand. Race was not ready for this and within a second the video showed a palm flying towards his head at the speed of sound. Yang, meanwhile, was tied to a chair, and was wondering why today everything was not going as usual. He should have already been drugged and sent to the arena. And he could not understand why his turn did not come. Suddenly he noticed that someone came closer to the room, and very quickly realized that it was not his grandfather. It was a child in a green blouse, and he silently looked into this room. Yang also didn't know what to say to him. The two of them faced the unknown. 